All right, folks, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the stream. And uh, just getting this tournament started here, let me send a link to all the players, letting them know that it is go time. And uh, yeah, let's have some fun. First matchup, going to be Empire. I think we're playing off against uh, old Subutai here, so we'll see what he's going to be playing. And uh, let me get this set up. Looks good. And welcome. Yeah, I usually play shooting factions, yeah. So I do like range factions quite a bit. It's always been kind of my jam. All right, so it looks like he's got a lobby up. So let me go ahead and join his lobby. He's already got one. And we will join with code. There we go. And there we are. How you guys doing? Do you guys find that the maps on ladder are just horrible? Yeah, definitely. They're terrible. Um, what is he playing in the first match? Ron Imperial Road. I know I'm the Empire. He's probably playing Chaos Dwarfs. It's actually kind of a fun one. So we'll see how this goes. Got a scheme of build here. Based on the thumbnail. Uh, Kislev? No Kislev for me tonight. I thought about it. I'm sure there'll be some other players. You know, I just kind of felt the inspiration for a Kissel thumbnail. Yes, we are Sigmar's heirs. It's Aaron. I've been considering Age of Wonders 4. Do you think it's... Yeah, I think it's really good. I mean, again, you have to take your budget into account, but I really, really enjoy the game quite a bit. I really enjoy it. So let me go ahead and get the uh, blocker up here. Yes, the Chaos Gods will make sure that no shenanigans are afoot. And uh, by the way, guys, for all of you uh, folks who are channel members... There's new uh, new emojis. My wife drew them. They're awesome. So you guys will have a whole set of emojis. I think we need a few more channel members before we can get the full range because I'm limited to like 20 emojis and I think there's 24. But um, yeah, for any of you guys who are channel members, we have new uh, new badges and new emojis and everything. So should be seeing that in action. Yes, yes. All right. So I think we're playing Chaos Dwarfs. Uh, let me check with him. Yeah, it looks like he's Chaos Dwarfs, which is a, it's not an easy matchup for sure. It's definitely not easy, but we'll see what we can do against them here. So, all right, let's grab you. And, uh, yes, begin to party. Let the hate flow. I'm trying to remember what I've done in the past to have decent success against them. And there's a couple options. Bull centaurs are just a righteous a righteous problem. They are a, a big, big nuisance to deal with 100%. I feel like this is a weird matchup in which, like, double witch hunter could work. Yeah, you can see the new Nurgle emoji there. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> So if you guys are channel members, you'll have those. Indeed. Age of Wonders 4 is super fun. It's very, very addictive. I've been having such a good time playing it. Such a good time. Yeah, the old Warhammer's still going strong, man. You know, it's, it's a great game. It's got its flaws. One of them being Chaos Dwarfs <laughs> and their balance. But, uh, you know, it's all good. Let's 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 play with uh, Vizalent here. That'll be pretty fun. Okay. So I haven't played this matchup in a hot minute. I'm trying to think about, like... How to efficiently do this. War wagons are obviously good. A little bit susceptible to being shot by, um, shot by, uh, yeah, I guess like it would be what, Death Street Rockets? That would be kind of giving you the biz there. Potentially shooting you from downtown. Yeah, that's a little bit of a problem, isn't it? Could bring Gotrek. Oh, we could bring Gotrek Gernison. That would be really fun too. Yes, Gotrek. Let it flow through you. Okay, so let's get this. When was the last time I played this matchup? It's been a while. Love the new army blocker. Yeah, and I drew that as well. It's awesome. It's 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 awesome. It really is. Okay, looks like he's already. He's 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 good to go. So we got this, um, which we could start off in reserve with that. Maybe not necessarily a bad idea. Cannons do trade okay, but the problem is magma cannons have crazy good range. Like they can um, they can definitely do some very annoying work against you. Uh, as far as combat characters go. Hmm. Yeah, we got some stuff here. Let me make sure that uh, everybody's going in the tournament. All right, started. Good luck, have fun. Just making sure everybody can find their opponent as we get in. It's kind of a short notice tournament tonight, but uh, nonetheless, should be a great time. I wish Warrior Priests were a little bit better. Yeah, I do wish Warrior Priests were slightly better. Like they, sh I feel like they should have armor piercing since they're literally wielding like a giant warhammer. I always felt like it was like, kind of strange that Warrior Priests didn't quite um, have that have that going for them, but yeah. So interesting stuff. Okay, so we got a couple of you guys in the back. We got ye old goon squad here. And maybe a couple of bees. Although, yeah, that's a little bit precarious. It's a little bit shady. But at the end of the day, I think it'll work out just fine. Let's get a couple of you. And then in reserve, we want you guys. And for the Lord choice, yeah, we got options. I mean, Marcus is okay on a smaller map like Itza, but on a bigger map, you're probably not going to be able to kind of close the distance that you want. Um, you know, the big combat characters against Chaos Dwarves are a little bit precarious, I think. I think you got to be careful with that. So I think we will opt away from those guys. Maybe this one is fine. I'm not sure. 
Like the Empire doesn't really have like I'm trying to think of like a super strong foot based character, kind of like a Sigval type character, because that's something that Chaos Dwarfs kind of have struggled against in the past. Okay, let's get you. Um, we could probably just go real cheap here on the character. Foghorn Leghorns, he's a uh, he's a big problem too. Foghorn's going to be an issue. He's he's really really obnoxious. All right, so let's get this. Actually, I think this is going to be a better choice than our uh, previous one that we had. All right, so let's do that. Let's do that. And all right, I, I like that actually a lot better. That feels like it's a little bit stronger there. Outstanding. Okay. So we got you. Is this where the great swords can finally make their glorious appearance? Probably not. It's probably not the day of great swords quite yet. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are enjoying all the stuff. I'm glad you're enjoying all the stuff. Okay, so where are we at? Hmm. Handgunners are a little bit... Silver bullet type units aren't terrible. Like, one of those. Definitely, like, State Trooper Tide. You know, the Chaos Dwarves can struggle to deal with just with the numbers, for sure, when it comes to, like, capture weight and all that. Um, as far as cavalry choices go, yeah, there's going to be, like, Hobo Goblin Riders, which will be kind of trying to terrorize our battle lines, for sure. So, probably you need some, like, cheap guys here. Get you and you. Okay, I don't hate that. So just making some final uh, final tweaks to the old army here. I think you guys are probably honestly the way to go. And uh, we have a little bit more money to spend, so let's upgrade these units. Do we have those? Yeah, these are 375. We get two of those, and I think we're about ready to party. All right, good luck, have fun. Let's see how this unfolds. Um, what is What are my weaknesses here? I gotta look at this build and just like evaluate its weaknesses. I, I think it's pretty reasonable against most things. Is there any way we could squeeze a little bit of money out of this so I could get that insurance spell just as a safety net? Um, yes, looks good. All right, we got you. Yeah, I got you as like a bit of a sweeper piece. It's very expensive, but I think it's necessary. Could cut these guys and cut one of you to get another bird. The bird is the word. All right, yeah, I think this will do. I think this will do. So get you just as a precaution. You and you, and then let's go ahead and get you another empire something or other. Yeah, it's a little bit heavy duty in that department, isn't it? But I think, is that really necessary? I don't think it is, okay. Last minute, you know, doubting yourself is always a recipe for success, 100%. You know, just always like, okay, well, yeah, let's get you guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're about ready to get this party started. Go look have fun to my opponent. Should be a fun one. Let's see if we can take down the OP Chaos Dwarves, who I think are currently uh, one of the strongest. Yeah, I think they are I think they are the strongest faction right now. Let's see. All their weird buggy units and shit. Yeah, they took over number one from the Ogre Kingdoms. Definitely getting played a lot. I'm playing them tonight as well. So we're. I want to try a Draz Hoeth build, though. Something with like one of those characters that isn't Foghorn Leghorn. Because, you know, eventually he's going to get nerfed. So it'd be good to start practicing with some of those, um, you know, lesser used characters. All right. Go time. How you guys all doing? Hope you're doing well. Let's get the blocker off here. And uh, we're on the Imperial Road. So shots from downtown. Imperial Road is a pretty good shooting map. It's got like lanes of fire that I would say are pretty open. So you can definitely get some barrages with cannons and Sunmaker type effects and all that. My wife drew that. Yeah, so Anna drew it. It's awesome. And she did all the, um, she did all, did all the emojis and new badges and everything as well. Yes, yes. We're also going to be playing Vampire Coast tonight, too, which is pretty exciting, so. All right, so for our army here, what do we got? So we got some basic spearmen. Shielded spearmen just going to move up in the front. Obviously, bull centaurs are the most common thing, and elite Chaos Dwarf infantry are probably, he might use some Iron Sworn. I know he likes those, but um, wagons are obviously going to be a real, real menace. They just get up, they shoot, a little bit vulnerable to being counterfired, but they're like my best answer against the, the bull centaurs, right? Let's get cannons and cannons, and we want to get some spearmen to go grab this objective here. You're going here, so this, this, and where are our extra spearmen? I know we have another one over here, so they can kind of just chill out and chill out. There's a little bit of a screening piece. We have a death wizard with Spirit Leech and Buna. So Spirit Leech is there to take down, like, you know, stronger uh, stronger SEs. And the cannons are there just because if I don't bring cannons, then magma cannons will just kill me. So I, I need to have something to kind of deal with them. So, yeah, it's a really fun tournament style for sure. It's always a good time. Always a good time. Okay, let me check here. Yep, looks like my opponent's probably ready, I would wager. Everything's locked up here. You're in you. All right, looking fine. So these guys can just be in five back here defending. And uh, let's get this party started. Uh, probably going to be very wide Chaos Dwarf. 
which um, would basically just be like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to summon the Sunmaker. So let's move up. Let's get our wagons going and uh, get our Deathcaster going. Move you up. And the cannons are at the ready. What do we got? Um, Chaos Throw Warriors, and he's got Hashed Stark Ravagers, Bull Centaurs back here. Let's move these cannons like over this way a little bit, like away from the forest, so we can get a little bit better of an arc of fire. And go start harassing with the wagons, basically. He might start spirit leeching the wagons, which is fine. But yeah, we're gonna try and get the old, uh, the old, uh, what's it called? Sunmaker online here in a minute. All right, so we'll do this, move up. Hopefully be able to get some uh, clutches on the middle there. And the cannons can just start shooting at, you know, whatever, just chaos for four years, it's fine. Spirit Leash going down on my uh, my caster here. Interesting, okay. I'm happy for that, we could just sit back then. If he wants to do that, then uh, we can always unsummon it if need be. Okay, so the cannons should be in range in a second. So they're scooting up, scooting up, and we'll have the Sunmaker online. And you see, he actually took some damage, which is pretty funny from that as well. So let's just get the wagons here. And uh, yeah, he's coming with what, orc laborers and stuff? All right, that's fine. So it's gonna be labor in time. Let's see if we can like hammer this objective a little bit. So the cannons are shooting here, we'll keep you back. And uh, we can also start sending like some Sigmar Suns up to the point, some good quality units, just to hold and fight. So yeah, we're blasting the Chaos Dwarf units. And now he, it looks like in the back, he's got a Magma Cannon, so we can try and scoot up and hit that. All right, so these units, let's get you back. We don't need you here. We can use the wagons to claim that objective and hopefully get out of range of the Magmas. And uh, cool, just start shooting here against these guys. And the big dreaded bull rush is going to be coming on the flank here in a minute. So could send an Empire Captain over there, or a Lord of the Empire. Whoa, I don't know what's happening with this movement, but let's not ask questions. Sometimes when you give orders, they like do like a weird crossover type thing. It's very strange. Well, some of those short infantry are getting beat up here. He's going to have Hobo Goblins, um, most likely. And the Magma Cannon is still going to do some work. We'll leave some spears on the edges of the point and get ready to deal with this Bull Centaur Rush, which is inevitably going to come. So we need the wagons here, and we need our Deathcaster back here, and um, probably like a Demogriff Knight with Halberds as well. Now, they lose head up to the Bull Centaurs pretty pretty handedly, but even still, they can... Uh, yeah, we're killing a Dwarf Warrior there, which isn't terrible. All right, so let's get ready for this fight. It's going to be a hard one. Yeah, the double Bull Centaurs over here. So we need to just hide you behind this rock, get ready to go. Cannons are pretty well defended, I would say. Let's pull you down, pull you down. And uh, we can start shooting at the Bull Centaurs in just a second, just kind of blasting the Laborer units for now. Demogriff Knights are at the ready. And yeah, we got the two cap on them here, which is great. So let's get our cannons and start shooting at the ca uh, character here. Get the Bull Centaurs here, and we have some cheap state troopers we can call in. All right, so let's get the wagons to shoot. And uh, yeah, they're doing a little bit of work against the Laborer units as well. Okay. So we got the middle objective, which is great. Looks like he's running into the trees. And we want to be shooting the Hashed Stark Ravagers if we can. Get you guys in there, do a little bit of a demi charge, pull you in, and uh, you spearmen can go up and fight them. So they should have a pretty decisive little advantage against those guys. And the Lord, not taking too much damage. He might be able to flip the middle, we'll have to see. But nonetheless, we are getting good work against the Hashed Stark Ravagers. Let's get Sigmar Sons in there. All right, pull you back, and we can go ahead and drop a Spirit Leech on these guys in just a second. Perfect. And a uh, little bit of flanking action coming here on the side. So let's get an Empire Knight to come in and just basically ride some of these dudes down. All right, so we were able to break the front. Let's pull the Demis back. Demis can charge into these guys. Let's get the laborers going here. Sigmar Suns move in, and we got the Spirit Leech, which is good. Let's drop it here, and outstanding. So Demogriff Knights are just kind of helping clear the shaft while we shoot the really expensive pieces. And I believe his Lord is taking some damage from the cannons. Yeah, it looks like he is. Okay, Bull Centaur Renders moving in in the front. How are we looking here on the side? It's getting a little bit crazy, so let's pull the Demogriffs and... Have them counter charge here while we shoot them and uh, hopefully get a little bit of flanking action on them too. So let's get these guys going here, looking good. And uh, unfortunately, there are some Chorps heading towards our cannon here. Uh, all right, it's a little bit scary. All right, go here, go here, go there. And uh, cool, so we got Demis, we got all the goodies coming. Let's pull these Demogriffs back like so. Get the wagon shooting in and let the Free Company Militia fight and have you guys move in and fight here. Okay, so the cannon crew, we might be able to salvage it. We'll have to see. We did get some okay fights here, and uh, more in the backfield to come. Another Empire Knight probably is going to be warranted here in a second. So let's get this going, and drop another Spirit Leech on these guys. Let's do this, and have the Demis kind of turn around and fight. Spearmen move in. If we can, like, stabilize this backfield fight, I think we'll be in much, much better shape here. So, all right, let's do this. Pull the camera uh, camera crews back, back. And if we could just, like, pull, peel this Bull Centaur thing here, I think we're going to be in okay shape. Let's move you guys up, too. All right, so sh shot's going down. It looks like that's going to do a little bit of work, but it's all right. We can just kind of chill out. And his Lord is a little bit vulnerable here, so let's see if he can wagon his Lord, actually. That might actually be very strong. And we can use the Blasting Scroll on him, too. All right, let's pop that. Um, backfield's looking a little bit messy, but we do have a lot of Spearmen here, which is nice. And let's get some free company militia to start shooting at the Bull Centaurs. 
Value trading is, is decent. Um, we almost have his Lord popped, and it looks like Foghorn Leghorn's coming out now. Demogriffs are doing an okay job back here, and yeah, we might be able to just kill his Lord straight up with the wagons, which it's not his actual Lord. Um, it looks like it's a Demon Smith, so it doesn't have the good item. Yeah, and it looks like his Lord is getting popped. Granted, both of our cannons are in a very precarious situation. Let's go ahead and drop the crew and run away. Um, we need to chase you down. Let's go finish you. And now we can just drag Foghorn Leghorn around and uh, hopefully stabilize these points. All right, so that's pretty good. Let's get those spheres moving. And uh, in the back, it's it's messy, but the Empire Knights are doing a good job. They're definitely not doing a terrible job. Wagons can keep kiting a little bit. Let's get these Empire Knights down, have them ride to go steal that back objective, and we just kind of keep kiting against Foghorn. Let's shoot here. And it looks like we did get the Lord down, which is great. So let's have you guys pile in. And we have a Buna effect. Um, I think we just focus down the Dark Ravagers if possible. Yeah, the cannons being offline sucks, but we are up in value a little bit, and we're holding on to a couple points. Let's get the Empire Knights moving over there to kind of press that a little bit. Um, can honestly just go maybe get those labors. All right, so you guys keep moving. Spirit Leech going down right here on the Hashets, man, and uh, we just kind of keep trying to stabilize this backfield. We do have a lot of spears, which is great. And it uh, looks like, yeah, it's mostly just Chaos Warrior Warriors back here. All right, so let's get these guys down here. Demogriffs are doing a good job. Keep kiting these Bull Central Renders back. Free Company Militia. Have them shoot at these guys and uh, just keep finishing off the half and star Hashed Stark Ravagers here. Let's go after that Magma Cannon and uh, we can even get some Free Company Militia like heading up the map to go uh, maybe try and pressure his backfield here. The cannons were a bit of a weird tech. You know, I always feel like they're a bit of a mistake when I when I bring them. Foghorn's getting beat up though. He's getting he's getting pretty smashed. Um, do we want to send Demis to go stabilize this objective here against the Laborers? M might not be a bad idea. Might not be a terrible idea. All right, so we got Empire Knight still going strong. Magma Cannon basically just using all of its ammo here. Um, as much as I don't want to, yeah. I was about to Buna those guys, but I don't know if that would have been good. All right, let's blast here. Get these Spearmen, unsummon them, and get these guys and uh, unsummon them as well, because we're going to need some fresh units here soon. We are dragging the Bull Centaurs through the mud a little bit, and these Demis will uh, help stabilize that point. It's a good thing we actually sent them over there. All right, so yeah, let's chase these Bull Centaurs, get you. We could go after the Magma Cannon. doesn't really feel like it's terribly worth it, to be honest. Um, we could get a Grenade Launcher, too. Not a bad idea. It can start working on those guys. All right, so we're dragging these Bull Centaurs through the mud a little bit. Empire Knights, some of them are routing. Um, looking at the objectives, we are ahead right now, which is good. So let's get in on the Bull Centaur Renders here. Unfortunately, my dummies are probably going to pay the Iron Price here. Yeah, because they're going to be pretty heavily surrounded. So hopefully they'll be able to do some work. Um, yeah, let's run this Cannon Crew back. Get these Free Company coming up. And these free company need to move here. Whoa, why do these grenade, la grenade launchers move into melee? That's so bad. All right, let's go to the middle and grab that objective. I honestly think we can just take it. The wagons are really giving Foghorn the business. So let's go Spirit Leech him here. Let's do this. And uh, we got more Spearmen moving up onto the point. Magma Cannon going to hurt. We probably just flip the middle here, to be completely fair. Um, we have the Empire Captain. We got grenade launchers. They're doing okay, I guess. Yeah, let's go. just go grenade launch these random Chorf infantry down here. And uh, cool. So this middle objective is looking like we might be able to grab it. It's hard to say. We did get a Spirit Leash on Old Foghorn, and he's in some danger. Um, Empire Knights, we need to unsummon you guys, do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, he pulled the value back, so he's probably ahead at this point. You know, the cannons, I think, might have lost us the game, because they just didn't do much for us. We'll have to see, though. All right, so we got some Chaos Dwarf Warriors down there. Let's do this. Shoot those Bull Centaurs, keep those wagons going. Those guys are doing great, man. Keep those wagons going for Sigmar. They're certainly trying. They're certainly trying their best. Um, okay, so we got some uh, wolf riders here. So let's get these guys into melee, pull back behind them, and get a spearman pulling out. All right, should be able to intercept them here. Wagons are just dragging a lot of these guys through the mud. And uh, cool, so we broke those bull centaurs. Let's move into those hobo goblins here. We might be able to start just like snaking objectives with a big mobile goon squad. We might be able to. The grenade launchers have gotten back, looking okay. So he's got the points on us now, but... Our wagons are still causing quite a bit of havoc. All right, so let's Spirit Leech these, um, I don't know, what do we Spirit Leech here? The wagons are like the one thing that's kind of keeping us in this game. Let's run them this way. And uh, we got some Empire Knights moving out. Let's go ahead and get some, uh, yeah, it's expensive. All right, Free Company, move up. Let's do this. Keep kind of accruing value where we can. We pulled the value back a little bit, like ever so slightly. But even still, it's going to be hard to get these points back. Um, we need some Empire, like, and just straight up Empire Knights now. All right, so keep dragging these Bull Centaurs around. That's that's certainly letting us farm a little bit of value. You guys here, you guys here, and uh, let's get another Empire Knight. I don't think I can afford to wait, so let's do this. Let's go get those Hobo Goblins and keep dragging these guys around. And if you keep spamming out Bull Centaurs, there's a chance we might be able to just come back by spamming out Spearmen and stuff. All right, so let's do that. Keep dragging these Bull Centaurs around. Um, let's move you guys up to the middle here. Yeah, Free Company. Let's get hustling. You guys get those guys. Grenade launchers pull back. 
and uh, there's not too much space to work with here. There's not too much. All right, so let's see if we can like get the grenades like down and around there on the side. Okay, so Bull Center Render is getting pretty smashed up. Let's go here and get these spearmen going to fight these ones. Yeah, we pulled the value, but the question is, do we have the time? Let's get the Empire General out as well. Like, he's up on points, and I believe he's had a triple cap for a decent amount of time. All right, so let's get you guys to go nuke here. And these Chaos Dwarf Infantry, we need to move up and, like, grab objectives now. So we're going to loop around. It looks like Astrogoth is back, but Astrogoth does give up a little bit of Battlefield Agency. Is the one thing that he's got going for him. Um, all right, so let's grab this. Let's get these cannons to go, or wagons to go see if we can just go jack this point. And, uh, unfortunately, yeah, these, these Bull Centaur renders just kill everything. They're so crazy good. Okay, so we could summon out another free company, but keep the wagons going. We definitely need them for cap weight here. Spirit Leech, and uh, this objective should be ours soon. Let's move up, let's move up, let's move up. And these grenade launchers have cleared off some of the chaff here. Ah, oh, the question is, yeah, we pulled ahead in value, but yeah, I don't know if we can deal with those like characters that he has. All right, let's move you guys up to the middle too. All right, wagons, keep it going, man, keep it going. We move to the middle. Let's get these guys to head off these uh, these these little wolves. We got our Empire Captain fighting here, and the Magma Cannon, unfortunately, is back online. Now, Demis are an option. We, we need to recapture this point, though, soon. We can't mess around with this one for too long. And it looks like we should have the capture weight on this. We got a lot of state troopers moving up to it. So we need to just maintain that for now. State troopers and uh, the General of the Empire is doing okay. Get some more of these free company here to start blasting these guys. And then, um, do we have any more Vanguard options? We have some Empire Knights. Let's get them up here. All right, so this objective is going to flip to us like 100%. Um, Foghorn's there. We could just tar pit him with wagons or whatever. Get the Empire Knights. And uh, we have another Spirit Leech. We want to be using that on Bull Centaurs like pretty much every chance we get. So we need to double cap him like pretty soon, which is, it's not outside of the realm of possibility here. All right, let's get the wagons going. He's still chasing the wagons pretty aggressively, so... Let's get you guys fighting there, you guys fighting here, and then we just kind of rotate to the middle. Another thing that kind of sucks is that um, the orc laborers have bugged capture weight, so they, they have full capture weight. So it's another reason why Chaos Orbs are just kind of OP right now. It's because they uh, they have just have a lot of those kind of broken units, unfortunately. Okay, let's go Vanguard, free company militia up to the middle. Yeah, we might need a triple cap on them, which is going to be really, really hard. All right, let's pull back, and let's do this, and let's go that, okay, fine. Spearmen back here should be able to hold off those Chaos Dwarf Infantry, and we do get a couple of uh, Spears intercepting those Bull Centaurs. Could do a little bit of cheekiness on the back objective. It's definitely not impossible here. Okay, so those guys broke. We're going to go like start threatening the back point a little bit to try and pull some of the Bull Centaurs away. Ah, up here. This is actually a little bit precarious, isn't it? We need more uh, State Troopers here. We're going to lose this point because of the Laborers' capture weight. All right, so we're heading to the back point. Going to try and pull the Bull Centaurs away. It looks like it's Hash and Stark Ravagers. Hmm. Okay, so Empire Cavalry move up. Foghorn is threatening the back point. We're up in value, but not by enough to really like just have a considerable advantage, right? Okay, so let's go here. Try and pull some of the labor force around. General of the Empire can go after the Hashid Stark Ravagers. And are we going to be able to hold on to this one? I think so. I think so. Any sort of artillery play? You know, the Sunmaker is cool and all, but he doesn't have like any good quality infantry. So you know, let's just run into the trees and try and distract them for now. Okay, let's go run these guys down. We got the spears on the way up. This objective should be pretty well under our control here once another state trooper arrives. Let's move you to the middle, and uh, we can just start resummoning wagons, I guess. A demi halberd might not be a bad idea, but they do lose straight up to a lot of those kind of guys. Okay, let's move you guys away, move you guys away. Grenade launcher's back online. Hmm, how are we looking? All right, so the orc laborers are getting smashed a little bit. We have state troopers coming. Let's get more state troopers moving up because they obviously will trade pretty well into most of those units here. And then you guys can come to the middle. Grenade launch them. Capture weight. Yeah, I don't think we have enough time. It was a good game. The cannons would be cut. And if the uh, Chaos Dwarfs didn't have bugged capture weight, I think we can definitely just outcap them easy and, you know, would have stolen those objectives. All right, so let's move up to the middle. Um, what do we got there? Hash the Stark Ravagers. Let's grab them. And what is it going to be? Yeah, okay, so some laborers up on the top objective, which I simply think we don't have enough time to really get back against. It's it's going to be tough. Um, free company, yeah, might as well have you guys start hustling up. I think we can wrestle the middle objective here, but yeah, with the bugs capture weight, those goblins can cap as well as my state troopers. Damn, man, yeah. Not going to be able to get them. Okay, state troopers, move up. You guys chilling. You grenades over here. It's a good game, though. Good game for sure. All right, so we got a big cab charge with those Empire Knights. He's holding on to the side well. He can keep trying to hammer them down. The middle, I don't know if we'd even be able to flip the middle, to be completely honest. Not with these uh, this, these numbers here. Okay, Foghorn Lakehorn is actually back too. Or is that El Gordo? Okay, it's El Gordo, so it's not quite as bad. Okay, so move up, move up. 
Come on, state troopers. Let's go ahead and drop a spirit leech on you guys, on the bull center renders. Uh, you guys sit on the edge of the objective, and yeah, we simply don't have enough time. We're pressuring on a couple fronts, but the uh, we can't outcap his labors with our uh, with our units there, unfortunately. Yeah, middle either. GG, well played, good game. He played a played a clean game. We managed to get the value back, which was nice, but the cannons were kind of dead weight. They're such a hard tech against magma cannons, but they just they can't reach the magma cannons because of the range. Man, they they just can't get them because you just sit deep set and cover the middle objective. GG, well played. Wagons carried that game for me. They're really good. Deathcaster was also very sweet. Um, the rest of the troopers did fine. Cannons were just worthless. Pretty much lost me the game. I think if you just cut the cannons and get some other utility pieces, you're in good shape here. And for his build, yeah, it's the classic stuff. Wow, did Astrogoth really get zero value in his first life? Holy shit. I think Astro might have gotten zero value. Oh my god. He, he, so we did kill Astrogoth. He was chasing us. Or was that El Gordo? I don't know. I have to actually ask Subutai. GG, well played. Fun game. All right. So let's message him. Uh, let's find him. Uh, GG. Was that Astro or uh, or Gordo? The first one who died. I'm asking him. I'm curious. Because if we held Astro to zero value, that's going to be pretty funny. Yeah, man. That was good. Hey, Mick. Thank you for the donation. A small thanks for all you do for the community. I wanted to ask, do you plan on playing games? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. At some point, yes. At some point, yeah. Once we figure out where we're going to be living and how everything's going to be anchored... Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it going there. So this is going to be something, too, that I don't know if it would have mattered, but um, at some point, CAA is going to fix this, where you can't bring a goblin as your lord and just, like, unsummon it. That'll be nice, too. But um, overall, yeah, it was the cannons that were inefficient. He, he played well, you know, didn't give us any good cannon targets. Bull centaurs have um, a weird hitbox, so you can't really shoot them with cannons. And uh, the magma cannon just sits out of range, right? And so we can't really range it, unfortunately. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was some good stuff. Ah, got it. Was wondering about the zero value. So he was saying it was Gordo. He never bothered summoning Astrogoth, which is pretty funny. Okay. So it wasn't El Gordo. It was not him. Astrogoth is who I call Foghorn Leghorn. It's just a name that somebody said once and it just forever stuck. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, let me tell Subutai to report scores. Report score, brother. GG. Okay, so he's going to report that. And next up, we have, I think, Dwarfs on Itza, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it's Dwarfs on Itza. We have a couple games still wrapping up, and then we'll be moving over to the second round for tonight. And we will go from there. Yes, yes. So, so far, yep, many of the usual suspects are in here. Professor Pone with the W in his first game. I saw he was playing some cool factions tonight. I'm excited to play a little bit of Vampire Coast, too. I never, uh, never get to really give him too much action these days. Yeah, no, Astrogoth, he's, uh, he's he's really good. He didn't get summoned, though, that game. I thought it was him. I didn't zoom in, but I, I was wondering. I was like, man, he's really fast. Astrogoth has gotten some new new wheels. I mean, he's normally very quick, but, you know, he's not as fast as a 90-speed 90, 90 wolf rider. Yeah, I saw, dude, I saw the new Dune trailer. That looked awesome. Holy shit, I'm excited. Like, Dune was probably, the first Dune movie was honestly probably one of my favorite um, modern movies. It, it, it's just, it was so good, and... Um, yeah, it, it, I'm I'm just so excited for the next one. The, the trailer looked really good too. I, I've just been getting into the books as well when the first one came out. So, yeah, I'm I'm super super excited for it. Okay, so let's see what it's gonna be. Let's go ahead and refresh here. And what do we have? Okay, a couple people still playing. We started at about six o'clock, so the players have another twelve minutes to finish. You're playing three undead in the chaos dwarfs. I have chaos dwarfs at one point tonight. They're pretty. Pretty strong. Um, the only matchup you don't want to run into with Chaos Dwarfs is probably going to be the um, the Skaven. Skaven, I think, are like one of the only counters against them with their current like state of units. Yeah, man, the Dune movie looks super, super exciting. I'm really, really hyped for that. Okay, so that looks like it's reported. So one game left. Um, it says the next map. We don't know what we're going to be playing, obviously, but the, the Dwarfs stand at the ready. The Dowie are ready. Uh, Slanesh is way better in Domination than Land Battle, probably. I actually wanted to play some Slanesh tonight. I felt like that would have been fun. But, um, yeah, the thing is, in Land Battle, people can just sit in a box. And, like, Slanesh, can, like, kind of gets punished by that. Because they have to attack your box. Whereas in Domination, like, you have to spread out to get objectives a little bit. So Slanesh can pick you apart. Do membership milestones uh, just not show up weird? Um, they should be. Yeah, you have you have one, Evan. If I mouse over your thing, it should say how long it is. I don't, I don't know. I'll have to double check that. I'll have to double check that. 
All right, so about ready to start our next game. So we're going to be on the dwarfs and then maybe a little bit of coast to coast action. No, they're still not done yet. Somebody's taking their sweet time or lagging. Some villains. The actor who played Baron Harkonnen did a fantastic job. Yeah, that's the, the father of the Skarsgård brothers. Um, Skellen, I think is his name. Skellen Skarsgård, I think. He's amazing. He is amazing. Yeah, he really, really captures the um, he really captures the uh, the the Baron quite well. And they got and what's crazy is yeah, you have Bautista in that movie as well, the WWE guy. It's like yeah, it's wild, man. The cast is pretty eclectic. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. The trailer was super good. It was super good. Oh my god, I love that like kind of gritty sci-fi. You know, it's it's uh, it's 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 hard to come by these days. It certainly is. Stellan, yeah, Stellan. Did I say Skellen? Stellan Skarsgård? <laughs> Stellar skateboard. <laughs> he rules, yeah. Oh, yeah, you guys know. You guys know who it is. Okay, one sec, guys. Let me turn on the lights so I'm not playing here in the Forbidden Shadows. Okay, we got the lights on now. It's all business. So in order to get to the top four, we'd have to win our next three games, and Subutai would have to do well, essentially. So if Subutai wins his next couple and I do win the rest of mine, our chances of getting to the top four are pretty good. So, man. But I, part of me would honestly rather cast, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm still going to give it my all here. Dark Elves, Dwarfs. No, it's somebody else's factions. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other, like, what are some other really good sci-fi shows that have been coming out recently? I'm watching this one on Netflix called um, Night Agent. It's not bad. It's just like your classic kind of like political intrigue, like, you know, conspiracy thriller. It's fun. It's fun. But yeah, I feel like, oh man, I'd love to have like a, a really good sci-fi show in the vein of like the expanse expanse was so good man it was so good yeah bautista was great yeah he was good in blade runner he's good in a handful of movies he does have i seen any of the stuff about 10th edition yeah i'm, I'm actually really excited for 10th edition warhammer like i'm i'm not playing any warhammer tabletop now because it's kind of like the game's going to completely change right um so i'm just like i'm just waiting for 10th edition and old world at this point and playing a little bit of magic, made a uh, Zozu the Punisher deck, an Atraxa Infect, and then uh, we also have a old Stick Fingers deck, which is like a green-black reanimator deck. So I made a couple of those recently. Uh, no, slightly different. I added Vampire Coast. I added Vampire Coast. So the Coast is on the way in. Yeah, they're 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 coming. I hear a Coast to come in. I haven't seen The Wire though. I know I haven't. Blade Runner 2049 was made by the same director as Dune. That explains a lot why I really like both those movies. Yeah, he's amazing. I love that grim, dark, like like dystopian sci-fi aesthetic. It's like the original Blade Runner with Harrison Ford is a masterpiece too. Like that whole sequence at the end with the tears and the rain when he's like talking. You know, God, that's just like such a such an iconic sequence. You know, it's so iconic. Um, all right, so just checking here. They have another eight minutes left in their round, and then we would move on to the next one. And get that party started. Yes, yes. Let it begin. I didn't read the Expanse books. Actually, I didn't. No, I just I discovered the show first. Um, it's something I might go back and do. But if the books are similar to the movies or the the show, then I I, I don't know because I already if I know the outcome of something, my motivation would be far less to actually get through it. That's why I made sure to finish Game of Thrones before you know. Well, I guess I finished the entire Game of Thrones before the show came out, so it didn't really matter there, but. Yeah, Another Life. I don't know that one, no. I don't know that one. Like Tears in the Rain. Dude, that sequence is so good. Yeah, speaking of soundtracks, Hans Zimmer is definitely the Dark Lord of soundtracks. His, his like, he's just, uh... God, what was the first time I really recognized his work? I think, like, the first time I, like, actively looked it up was after the... I, I'm pretty sure he did the Gladiator movie with Russell Crowe. And I just felt like the soundtrack was so epic. Um... Yeah, and he's done, he's done a lot of stuff. He did like the whole Pirates of the Caribbean and all that. Speaking of Dune, we might have to go back soon and play a little bit of a Dune Spice Wars. When, when the movie comes out, maybe we'll get the crew back together and we'll do a Dune Spice Wars stream. The Expanse books are pretty similar to the show, but the books have a lot more about the aliens. Be okay, got it. So it's, it's more focused on that storyline. The show's been great though, man. I, I really like it. I really like it. Okay, so they have another six minutes left until their round is finished. They must be having the most epic back and forth duel of fates. One sec here, I'm just gonna tag them. Let them know they have five minutes left before we advance the round. And if they don't finish in time, they just both get a loss basically. Um, 
Unless they have some extenuating circumstance they tell me about. Because, like, you know, if you're going to take, like, 45 minutes to pick your armies, you know, that's not, not fair to everyone else. Six minutes left to finish your game. All right. So they've been given their heads up there. Great to catch you live. Thanks for the... Hey, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Glad you're enjoying it. So tonight's going to be some hot Total War action. We got four rounds of competition, followed up by a semifinal and a grand final, the winner of which will be getting a nice tournament win on our old leaderboard. Will this be the day the dreaded Professor Pwn claims his first tournament spot? The first uh, big victory. I think I can feel it in my bones. Play as the Emperor. Yeah, you can play as the Emperor now in the new Dune game, can't you? All right. So it looks like they just reported it. So let's go ahead and advance the round. And here we go. So it's going to be the Dawe. So perfect. All right, so let's do this. Next round is live. Where are we at? Okay, looking for you here. We got our opponent. Let's find out what they're playing. Next round is live. Next round is live. Go look, have fun. All right, outstanding. So we're about set. And uh, why are we on the Southern Chaos Waste? We should be on Domination here, and the map is going to be Itza, if I'm not mistaken. So round two is Itza, which is a pretty good dwarf map. It, it, with this format, I usually pick the factions based on the map we're on. That, that's been one of the big things for sure. We'll be lucky to get a dwarf rework. Yeah, dwarves and camp multiplayer are fine. In, in, um, in campaign, though, yeah, I can see them being overshadowed a little bit by some of the other um, other factions, especially like the newer ones. I don't really play a whole lot of campaign myself, though, so for me, it's not as big of a deal. Okay, so we got Dark Elves on this one. Interesting. I, I haven't played the Dark Elf matchup versus Dwarves in a long, long time. Okay. This is going to be kind of cool. So he played Chaos Dwarfs in the first round, so we certainly dodged a bullet. Because um, Chaos Dwarfs basically hard counter regular Dwarfs. It's uh, it's really not a fair matchup. Chaos Dwarfs are kind of just really OP anyways. Um, all right, let's get that. Do this. And let us see. So Dark Elves, huh? We got the Druki, the darkest, most villainous of elves coming in. We get a little bit of that action. Dwarves on are so fun to play on Itza because it's just like such a close quarters map. You could just kind of like cackle on those two objectives and just, uh, yeah, you can really enjoy it. Hmm. Uh, I didn't see what you were talking about, Bill. Did not see. Okay, so dwarves against dark elves. Man, this is a matchup I haven't played. This is like a, a long forbidden matchup from ye old days of, of land battle. I used to play this matchup so much with Hadries when we used to we used to practice. I have a fun idea for it though, I do. I definitely do. All right, let's get you, let's do this. Get you and cut that down. All right. So looking like a decent little starting army for us. Um, what are we gonna be dealing with really? I mean, Dark Elf Infantry, Cavalry is obviously a variable as well. Um, I, I just wish, I wish flame cannons were not terrible, you know? Like, I wish flame cannons could be a little bit more impactful. That'd be nice. Terran, you're the man. Love the content. Wish you play. I, I do need to play more of the green skins. Um, somebody tonight is playing them quite heavily. Um, Kark, who's one of our top players, he is playing the green skins twice tonight. It's one of his main round factions. So if he makes it to the semifinals, you guys are guaranteed a, a green skin matchup. So the odds of that are pretty darn high too. So, you know. I think it could I think it could definitely happen. Okay, so that looks pretty awesome. I like the build so far. Let's get a couple more of you guys. Longbeards in this matchup are kind of cool. A little bit vulnerable to being shot by the um by the what's it called? Repeater crossbows. Repeater crossbows are a bit of a pain. They can they can definitely put some hurt on you. Granted, you can usually range them with many of your dwarven tools, but Iron Drakes. Satisfy the grudge. Harpies coming in. Do we have to worry about harpies a little bit, perhaps? Yeah. What do Dark Elves even do against Dwarfs these days? I have no idea. I'm going to move in. Hammerers here. Yeah, usually Dark Elves are really good at focusing down elite units, so you want to kind of pump your brakes on the elite stuff, in my experience. Basic Dwarf Warriors, not bad against, like, just kind of, you know, long or Dread Spears and Bleak Swords and Corsairs and things like that. They'll probably do fine for you. Let's pull you out. And, um... I don't want to bring any of these. Yeah, that could actually be a pretty cool choice. Could be a pretty cool choice. Okay, so let's mix in our last couple units here. Rangers. Rangers can definitely be okay. Just having a Vanguard, you know, missile unit that you can summon up, I would say, is never uh, never terrible. Okay, so Rangers and Rangers. 
but going to be pretty weak against like Dark Riders is the only thing. It almost makes me think like Corlers might just be the better choice. Corlers with Great Up is kind of an interesting uh, application in this matchup too. Are Dark Riders even really that big of a threat? Like I feel like most of the stuff we have can certainly answer them pretty adequately. Yeah, Dark Shards are okay. Dark Shards are definitely not the worst. Um, yeah, but like the Dwarven Bows trade relatively well into them in my experience. Yeah, they definitely can. Okay, so you're good. We got the big man here. Um, we can get a Quarreler. Of course, they're shielded and have really good range at 160. And we can just throw in another Chaff unit. All right, I think we're about ready. Good luck. Have fun to my opponent. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, sometimes people who play a lot uh, tinker, you know, will take breaks. And, you know, they'll appear when the... There's also a big thing with... Um, High-level RTS players who won't necessarily play actively in tournaments to keep their build secret. I don't know if he's being that sweaty, but but yeah, that that is something in other RTS games where you won't see people playing in like you know outside of too many things other than like huge tournaments with big money involved. It's it's not uncommon. All right, I think this build's pretty cool. Um, it's got some teeth, got a little bit of stopping power. You know, all the things that we uh, we love about the dwarves. Dude, 40k is definitely going to happen in this game, guys. It's only a matter of time. Like, CA would be foolish not to do 40k with Games Workshop. It's a win-win. Like, I, myself and many people I know are going to be playing Old World and um, Warhammer Tabletop because of Total War Warhammer, right? Like, tons of people. Um, and the same, you know, 40k would have an even bigger... It would be even bigger than this game. If they did Total War Warhammer 40k and did it justice, it would, it would be bigger than this game, probably. Like, way bigger. It would be massive. Yes. So Battle for Itza. Dark Elves versus the um, Dwarves. What is he going to bring? Is he going to come in with like a dreaded Hydra or something? Oh, that'd be cool. Hydras are pretty bad against Dwarves though, I think. Slayers in conjunction with all the shooting, you can really, really do some nasty work. Thoric Ironbrow is the go-to in this matchup, probably. But I didn't bring him because I wanted to try something a little bit fun. Which could send us into the pits of 0-2 tonight. We'll see. But we went double Master Engineer, which is like one of my favorite things. It's so cool. Um, so let's get these dwarves chilling in the front. Yes, yes. Outstanding. And now we have a big gun line in the secondary. <laughs> Satisfy the grudge. The one thing that sucks about guns on this map is there's a lot of like weird hills and shit. God, I, that's probably my biggest gripe with T Total War Warhammer is just like the, the janky like line of sight. Oh God, it's so awful. Like, sometimes you just can't straight up, like, can't hit things. It's so frustrating. Um, all right, so let's get you back here. It's kind of why maybe there's, like, a bit more of a prevalence of, like, bow units. Maybe that's, like, why you would see them more as opposed to the gun units. Because the gun units, in theory, should be very good. But they just, um, they kind of just struggle, to be fair. Screen blocker. Oh, my God. You guys didn't want the, uh, you didn't want the, the podcast? Is that what you're telling me? You didn't want the, the, the turn podcast? You've unsubscribed? Okay. So let's get you like so. You guys know you love it. This is going in the book. It would be, especially especially if we missed the dwarf game because of that. Okay, and three. Uh, good luck, have fun to my opponent. Yeah, we got a bigger army. No surprises. It's going to be pretty normal. <laughs> in a coy moment. You, <laughs> you must be a little bit newer here. We've been doing that since the dawn of time. Yes. Speaking of line of sight issues. You know. A little bit here. So we just have a basic dwarf lord. We got some cool units. What I actually fear the most would be like a um, would be like a Sigvald type character because my army doesn't really have much to kill like a foot based character. Likes the like the streamer. He keeps the screen blocker. Yeah, that's so why I'm gonna hold you guys hold everyone hostage here. Okay, he's taking his his sweet time setting up the. You better not be stream sniping here. Take waiting to see my build before you deploy. I would be very disappointed. All right, so what do we got? Um, we got Dark Shards, which... Oh, the Bolt Fiends. I'm very, very grateful I brought um, <laughs> I brought some artillery to kind of blast them. Malachis shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, I think we can just blast him with the guns. Master Engineers can flash bomb when he tries to move in. And uh, yeah, now we can start immediately hitting the Bolt Fiends, which he's probably going to run to the back of the map, which is okay. And we can just, you know, win the fight against the other units here. Okay, so let's do this. Yeah, Bolt Fiends trying to run, but we're getting some nice bombardments on them. So let's get you guys up, you guys up. And uh, he's clearly got some shades lurking somewhere, I would wager. We're going to discover him, but yeah, that's that's some good damage. It's very cost effective there. All right, so let's get the Master Engineers to move up. Start just poking at Malekith, trying to wear down his HP. And uh, first things first, we probably want to get some Slayers out. So let's get some Slayers and just have them kind of pull up here. And yeah, he's hiding as far back as he possibly can, but 
for the most part, we should be okay. So Malekith is getting poked by the Master Engineers, which is outstanding. So let's do this. Let's do this. And get you guns moving up here. Blasting charges there as well. And uh, we can... We don't want to throw blasting charges on just like harpies and stuff, right? So we can uh, we can go ahead and start shooting at Malekith here. Outstanding. All right. So let's get Malekith and Malekith. Got to get attacked a little bit here. Let's go ahead and force fire the blasting charges here. Pull you guys back. And uh, now the fighting is on. All right. So move you guys there. Get the Slayers coming across and running. Malekith's getting blasted by Thunders, which is really good. And uh, yeah, there's some shades. I, I figured he'd be throwing a little bit of shade. So let's pull back. Let's pull back. Move you guys up. Move you guys up. Turn face. And uh, the Master Engineers need to just kind of keep popping at Malekith. He's actually getting very, very low here. So, All right, so Bull Fiends are getting hammered. In the back, we probably need another uh, Grudge Thrower. The Grudge Thrower is one of our few tools we have here against these guys. All right, so let's get the guns. Get you guys set up. And how's it looking here? Yeah, the, the Daka is doing quite a bit. It's doing quite a bit of damage. All right, let's get you guys up. Pull you guys back. My mouse is freaking out, man. I need to get a new mouse. This thing is just so bad. All right, so we could do a, a little flash bomb on these guys to try and slow them down. Get the intercept right there. All right, so the objective should be opening up soon. Guns, and uh, let's hit you guys up. Malika took quite a bit of HP damage, and it looks like he's going to be diving our artillery back here, which is uh, very unfortunate. I think I still have some slayers nearby, so let's get our guns and shoot those harpies off if possible and summon some of these guys to come. I was like, wait a second, they have flying units. This is this is what treachery is this. All right, so keep giving Malika the business. Let's move you up, and the harpies might just get shot off here. We'll have to see. So we could chase here and get you guys there. You guys going right here. And the Master Engineers are still putting a little bit of work into those guys. Let's get the Blasting Charges. And the Harpies are almost shot off. Let's move you up and uh, pull back. Get you guys going here. Let's get the guns. And back. And Blasting Charges and go here. Harpies are almost offline. Oh, he's got some dreaded Dark Riders. Okay, I probably just threw this game. I don't even know where those Dark Riders came from. Jesus. This is going so bad. All right, Master Engineers. Come on. Get Malekith. That shit's getting out of control here. It's getting out of control. Okay, Dowie. Are we going to be able to stabilize our uh, our expensive artillery piece? Maybe so. Let's get in there. If I manage to win this, I'm going to be so shocked. I feel like I'm just playing so sloppy tonight. All right. So those are just Dark Riders. These are Cold One Dread Knights. And uh, the backfield's looking a little bit messy. Let's go ahead and splash bomb them down if we can. We do have Slayers here, but we've gotten on top of his two units, which could be a pretty colossal blunder from him. The fact that we've legitimately close the distance and our guns are still actively shooting a lot of his guys here are actually being ground down pretty well yeah slayers yeah okay we actually might still be in this game so as far as this goes let's kind of keep playing the middle objectives let's get some dragonback slayers moving up to come and support this yeah i didn't see the dreaded dark rider ambush i really didn't malekith's uh, fighting a bunch of slayers which is really not good and getting shot by master engineers and uh he does get some bleak swords into the backfield here harpies have come back online blasting charges on the way our Dwarf Warriors are still holding on to the point, and uh, we need to just keep hammering whatever we can. So Malekith's on the run. We do manage to hold on to this objective. Let's keep chasing him with Slayers, and Master Engineers can keep killing him. If we kill Malekith, we might just get it. 100%. All right, so the guns. Looks like they held on. These Bleak Swords are getting worn down. Let's just move up and get these guys into the Dreaded Dread Knights. Um, we're up on value pretty heavily. I think it's largely due to the fact that Malekith is so heavily damaged. And let's move some of these Rangers up, or these uh, Quarlers, excuse me. And, uh, yeah, we need to finish off those Dread Knights. Move you guys up here. Slayers move in and pull these guns back and get you guys in. And how are we looking over here? It's a little bit messy, but, you know, I've, I've, I've had worse battles. Let's pull the Slayers back to avoid some of that fire. Uh, guns, let's move you guys this way. We still have the grudge action. It's a grudgeon. All right. Certainly is. Master Engineers putting some hurt on Malekith. He's just sitting there taking it like a champ. And we can start preemptively just kind of moving to the points here to, you know, start pressuring. And, uh, yeah, Quarrelers, let's shoot here. Do we have anything to deal with these guys? Not quite, unfortunately. So he's just going to be getting some, some good units in the backfield here. We need the Blasting Charges on these guys, actually. That would be really good. Let's go Blasting Charge them down. Um, as far as this goes, yeah, we're eating a lot of shots here. Slayers are definitely getting the dirty, but Malekith is also getting smashed pretty good by our, uh, our Focus Fire here. So let's Flash Bomb him. And, uh, all right, so those guys are getting worked by Blasting Charges, which is good. It's going to take a hot minute. Let's go ahead and unsummon some of you guys. And the artillery is wearing him down. Malekith, let's shoot him with some lasers, although we have lost raptors on their way back in. Slayers are peeling. Yeah, these are Dragonback Slayers. Let's go get them on the shades. That would be very strong. And I think we're going to get this objective here in a minute, um, especially if we send some dreaded uh, great weapons up there. All right, so let's go get those great weapons up. Guns, shoot at the Bleak Swords here. Uh, we've almost got those guys offline. Let's get the uh, Slayers moving in. Malekith is almost dead. 
which is going to be a big, big leadership penalty for him for sure. Um, yeah, these dwarves are getting kited by those guys. We might have gone a little bit ham on the, um, like, pushing it on a couple fronts. Might have gotten a little bit too crazy, but I think overall we should be able to get that side objective in time. Malekith getting taken out by the Master Engineers feels pretty good. These are Blackheart Corsairs, which are a little bit problematic, so let's kind of kite back a little bit if we can. Um, probably just get some basic Dwarf Warriors to move up, so get those guys hustling. And Malekith is running to the edge of the map. We're going to chase him a little bit, so let's get the guns about face. Looks good, and get these Slayers moving in. They can go try and peel some of these units. And how are we looking at the backfield? Getting some nice damage. And we should flip that objective, which is going to be a big win for us. All right. Unsummon you. Uh, shades are definitely getting worn down. We got some more Dark Riders moving into the backfield. So let's get some Dwarf Warriors up. And unfortunately, our damn Corlers getting caught in combat there. That sucks pretty bad and definitely is not fun. But we do manage to hold on to this point, which is great. Um, let's move over to the middle. He probably just unsummoned Malekith, maybe. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, you guys, let's do the big unsummons to refresh our pool of units. To our warriors move up, and uh, this point looks like it could flip here, especially since we have some longbeards moving in. Going to be a little bit hard to say, but uh, we're behind on points. All right, let's go ahead and flash bomb these guys, which will certainly disrupt them. Let's get some dwarfs coming up to fight. Malekith getting popped by some guns, but our backfield is very, very much in shambles right now. It's uh, very ugly, but eh, it could it could be a boon for us actually. So let's summon some guns here and just see if we could pop, get a, a cheeky little snipe on Malekith there. Slayer is unfortunately getting shot. What can you do? They're, they're just kind of in a bit of a tough position. And we do have some warriors who are about to reach that side point. Yeah, we're getting to that like dangerous point where we're getting kind of pushed in, which is really, really not what you want. And if this objective flips, we're, we're in big danger. So we need to get our master engineers and a couple slayers over there. We need to not flip this, uh, let this one flip. Let's come back here. Summoning the, the guns in could be just a perpetual mistake I'm making. Because it's giving giving him a lot of pushing agency. Although we have time, and we are up on value, so... You know, the pressure is certainly on him. Alright, so let's move you guys back. Um, it looks like we do stabilize this point. So let's move up on the point here. Do this. And how are we looking up on the high ground? We do have some uh, longbeards with great weapons who should be able to start flipping that point. Malachus on his way over there. Oh, that's a little bit scary, isn't it? Alright, great weapons. Do your thing. Let's get the guns up on the hill here. Oh, those are Harkoneth Executioners. Holy shit. Okay, that's, that's cool. That's some badass unit comp. Get you guys in combat, go beat down these shades, and uh, hopefully these dwarf warriors are going to be able to win this fight. Let's get these guns a little bit offset. We need to get a double cap like real, real soon. Um, yeah, Malachis going to come and make a big difference here, and I don't really have much I can do about it. Um, other than just swamping it with things. Other than just straight up swamping it with things here. All right, so let's get you guys to start shooting at these Harganeth Executioners. Just shoot these guys in the back. He's pretty down on value for sure. Um, this objective is flipping back and forth. Um, we can shoot these Corsairs. It's probably a little bit safer, to be honest. Okay, so the capture point. Malekith got a sweet breath attack. Thankfully, Longbeards have good leadership, but he might just get us on the points. I'm not sure, because he's not that far behind, and he has been healing, right? So that's that's something we need to take into account. Okay, let's take the shades down, get the guns shooting here. Um, is there any way we can push out of the middle? Yeah, we're very much stuffed back here, which is, which is not good. Um... Malekith's just giving the business to all of our units that move up this direction. We could get another Blasting Charge. I think we're just like Desperation Mode. Where we gotta just swarm the points where we can. Man, I'm just playing so sloppy tonight. Sorry guys, can't, you know, can't, can't play clean all the time. Okay. So let's just fight here. Get this. Blasting Charges. Is there anything we're gonna be able to do? Maybe. Yeah, we did get a nice little salvo of Blasting Charges on those guys. We need to just move up and uh, rip that last salvo there if we can. Um, maybe I can summon in some Trollhammer Torpedoes here, although they're pretty expensive. All right, so how are we doing here? Are we even holding on to this point? See, we're even losing this point now too, which is bad. I feel like I'm not ahead on value, even though like it says I am, I just feel like I'm not, that's for sure. Uh, Slayers, yeah, Slayers. We just need Slayers up here. Slayers all day, every day. And uh, the Master Engineers, they're gonna be able to maybe flip this one in time, but it's not gonna be enough time. The, the gun spam, I, I keep using gun units, and every time I'm doing that, I'm like losing games. Maybe I just gotta switch off the, the gun units these days. I don't know. Let's get the blasting charges, get you guys back up on the point here. Um, we have some random slayers chasing down the bolt fiends, which is pretty funny. He's got a lot of units here. Blackheart Corsair transition was quite good, and let's unsummon you. Yeah, maybe just more frontliners, man. Maybe we're just a little bit light on the frontline department, I feel. All right. Get you guys up. I think we might be able to flip this point. Um, maybe we need Slayers or something, but he's got Harganeth Executioners out here, man. Those guys are mean. All right, so move you guys up. We're, we're going to need a triple cap. This game's probably over. Damn, dude. We're playing so bad tonight. We're going to flip this one. Um, he's got more Dread Knights. Dreaded Dread Knights coming in, dude. What do I do against the Dreaded Dread Knights? 
All right, so at least this objective is going to flip to us. We have Slayers coming, which can address that. Malekith living was really nice. He did a great job with that. Um, we can go ahead and get some Vanguards out. Let's move them up. Are these dreaded Dread Knights? They are. Oof. Oh, it's going to be tough. All right, let's Blasting Charge these Hargoneth Executioners before the Dread Knights can hopefully just absolutely karate chop us. Slayers in there. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hmm. Yeah, we need more more Dwarven chopping weapons. Indeed. I think that's that's going to be pretty big. Do we get the Blasting Charges off onto those units? I think we do. Let's move into them. And uh, we could summon, I don't know, Dwarf Warrior Great Weapons at this point, which seems so pitiful. Uh, I guess it would have to be Slayers, maybe. Let's see if he slips up with Malekith. Okay, we got that objective, so that's one. He's only down by 1,000 value, which means he's actually ahead. Probably with Malekith's healing being taken into account, he's probably ahead of me now. We needed to kill the Witch King. 100%. He's laughing at us all the way to the bank. All right, let's move you guys up. Master Engineers fight here. We got the Haggard Guns in position. And now let's move down to the middle with a couple different units. Let's see this and this. You guys can head down this way, and uh, we probably actually leave the Slayers and take the infantry down. Maybe we can cheese some sort of a cap here. Maybe we can. Okay, so what is this going to be? Some Dark Riders moving in. All right, let's move on up. Move it in a groove it. Dude, this feasting unit he has in the middle is just brutal here. Like this this Dread Knight and Hargoneth Executioner that he managed to slip in here is just so nasty. Especially since I don't have like my gun positions online anymore. Yeah, that's just that's just so so not good for us. All right, uh, let's move you guys up. See if we can maybe grab this. Okay, Dwarf Warriors are chilling. Let's go get the Slayers on these uh, Dread Knights here. Move you guys down here. Great weapons. Let's go. Okay, so we've got a couple of these. What do we want to do here? The dreaded Dwarf Warrior Great Weapon Spam. It is inevitable. It is the Thanos build of this game. How do you guys go this way? Do we have any chances of wrestling this one? It's looking pretty bleak, especially since our master, master engineers are pretty much down for the count. They did good, though. You know, I liked the master engineers. I thought they were pretty cool, man. They uh, they were respectable. Like, they gave you they gave me good shooting on Malekith and some other tools. I think that tech was good. I just think maybe we don't need the other guns. Probably mass Quarreler spam. I just feel like the Quarrelers are going to be better in every regard, except for sniping big Armored Lords, but even still, the Quarrelers just seem, seem better. Dude, the dreaded Dread Knights are just out of control tonight. They are. Okay, where are we at? We got a Master Engineer. Let's get him back on the point. Drop a little uh, Flash Bomb over there. Okay. Coming up. Blasting Charge these guys. Yeah, we're up on value, but it, there's... Yeah, if the game was another 10 years, maybe we could get our way back in. Shades shades are good, but they're totally... You can counter them with Corlers and, and Rangers. Easy. I just didn't bring the appropriate units. But, you know, lesson learned. GG well played. He played a really good game, man. He played really good, and I played sloppy. He, he, he capitalized. Well played. GG well played. Fun game. Type in him there. Let's see how the rounds are looking. Uh, please report score. So he will report it. We'll see how we're looking in the round. That was a pretty quick one. I would imagine most of the rounds are going to be wrapping up here in just a minute. God, we were so sloppy. We lost so much. So... In, re in retrospect, changing up the build, if we wanted to keep the double master engineer, the gun units just feel like shit. Line of sight and just, you know, other problems, right? It's like, why bother with that? Probably just rangers. Yeah, rangers are just going to be like ranger spam and just like mass infantry spam is just going to be the way, I think. Um, do we go great weapons or longbeards? Like maybe just four warriors. Like something like this. Um, yeah, Malekith will definitely run rampant though. But like, yeah, he's like good players aren't going to like let, let you get Malekith, right? Rune of Slowness and um, Rune of Speed is okay. Rune of Wrath and Rune isn't bad. Then we just probably bring like a full stack and just try and push him down. Something like this feels way better. Hey, you got the Dark Elf emojis in chat. Nice. Let them feast. Yeah, something like that with a little bit of gun support maybe coming in reserve just a little bit. I did like the Grudge Thrower though. The Goblobber felt like a nice piece if I wasn't like sloppy in defending it. Rangers with great weapons are okay, but if they're in melee, you're already kind of having a bad time. I think the, the Rangers with the bows are probably preferential. Probably, probably um, would be. Although the thing about Thoric is he's a little bit vulnerable to being sniped. Like, the double Master Engineer character did feel useful for the um, pressure on Malekith and some of the um, some of the Flash Bomb play. Like, Flash Bombs are just really good against, like, Cav and Chariots and all that. But, you know, people don't... I don't think people really use Chariots too much in this matchup. So something like that. So you have your anti malekith tech. You have your anti-everything-else tech. Um, you obviously, you're going to need a lot of Slayers. I think we would need a couple of those bad boys, which would probably be nice. 
yeah, it doesn't seem like a like a bad direction to go. And then the rest of the build could just be you could get some long beard great weapons to effectively deal with the um and then blasting charges out of reserve. So we definitely you always want blasting charges. They're just really good for dwarves. I don't think you need more artillery than this though, really. I think it's just about winning the engagements on the field. Yeah, no, Malekith wasn't like that bad. We we got him low and he was running for a lot of the battle, right? If we had finished him, I think we could win the game for sure. But we didn't quite get the finish on him. My opponent had good micro and was able to kind of slip away. Okay, let's refresh it, see how we're looking. We're down to the pits, guys. So we don't have a chance of making the top four this time. But regardless, we will um, we'll try and get some dubs here to close it out. And uh, next up we have Vampire Coast, who I haven't played in a long time. I'm very excited to kind of jump into their meta. I feel like you guys remember the... No, gyros are too easy for them to shut down. Because they use harpies. Um, harpies just chase gyros, and it's a lot of micro effort for you to get the harpies off. Whereas for them, it's very easy. So you typically don't want to go that route, in my opinion. I'm bringing like a hammer unit. I feel like hammers will get out traded by his his good armor piercing infantry. I think one thunder unit is probably a good idea, just to like have an, an instant hard hitting unit to maybe like finish something off. And then rangers with great weapons are also kind of a cool choice, like maybe like two of them. Just for the Vanguard summons, I don't really know. You go like two Slayer, go this, and then you could get some just basic chaff units. Like, I kind of like this build. This feels way better. It feels way, way better. Yeah, the Brimstone guns will just get chased by Harpies. You're going to get chased by Harpies. I've, I've had it happen to me a million times in land battle, so it's, it's, a, it's a rough one. It's a rough one. All right, so refreshing. So 645. So there's still plenty of time in the round. Granted, almost everybody's done. We just have two games wrapping up here. Um, so yeah, should be finished in a second. I'm going to go grab some water, guys. I'll be right back, and we will prepare for our next duel. <clears throat> All right, I'm back. I did lose that game, yes. I lost both my games tonight, actually. They've both been pretty close. The first one was a very close game, and we played two top-tier players, so it could be worse. But even still, they were both winnable. Just small build misplays and little execution things. Cost us. Harpies are better than Chaos Furies. They're a little bit different, yeah. Harpies are good, though, but they're not unbreakable. But, you know, Furies do crumble very quickly. They're easier to peel off than Harpies are. So they kind of have their interchangeable stuff. <laughs> Tell Slanesh jokes while I'm gone. I have returned. We're back, baby. All right, let's refresh this. Let's see how we're looking. And uh, all right, two games. So taking a look at the stats. Got a little bit of downtime, ladies and gentlemen. We can take a look at the stats together over on Yield Total Tavern. Currently, Chaos Dwarves have taken over the number one spot. Um, wow. Oh, they're actually favored against Empire. Okay, that's good to know. 12 and 6. That's a pretty considerable lead. Um, yeah, so you can see Chaos Dwarfs actually don't have any bad matchups, really, except Skaven. Um, like, this is not accurate either, because now Chaos Dwarf players know how to beat Kislev now. They've learned. So yeah, these are all favored matchup for Chaos Dwarfs. And um, down here, you know, Wood Elves, they're definitely favored against Wood Elves. They're definitely favored against Kislev now that people know what they're doing. And on the bottom, um, Ogre Kingdoms and Skaven can fight them. But yeah, you can definitely see how they're pretty strong if you really just play them super meta. I mean, if you play them without their, like, overpowered or broken stuff, it definitely becomes a more fair faction. But, yeah, they're very strong. Somebody was saying that in land battle they have, like, a super high win rate as well. Something like, I don't know, 70-80% in a lot of the tournaments they've been in. Maybe even more. I think in I think in land battle, Chaos Dwarves are probably even worse. Ogre Kingdom's doing pretty well, I think. Uh, but Ogres, like, you know, they have their matchups in which they can lose, right? Like, they have a, ha a handful of matchups that aren't amazing for them. Whereas Chaos Dwarves don't. Skaven are just kind of... Kind of in a weird spot because of their um, their power grab thing. I'm really interested to see what Skaven players end up doing once that eventually gets fixed. It's because it's going too soon. Uh, dark mode? I have no idea what that is, VOD. I have no idea. Dark mode? Are you talking about in, like Discord? Or? I have no idea what that is. You see Slanesh making its way back up. They started off pretty pretty weak. Even Zinch working its way up to 50%, which is pretty cool. Pit factions, Nurgle. Dwarves are actually having a really bad time this patch. Holy shit. Look at that. Dwarves sitting at 34%. I've, that's weird. Really? Dwarves are a pit faction now? Oh, man. How things have changed. 
Chaos Demons and Warriors of Chaos. I don't know why Warriors of Chaos are so bad. I, I think a lot of like really good players have just kind of stopped playing them ever since they stopped being OP. So I, I think that's part of it. It's like the the Toy Story meme where he throws away his old toys when he's like when he outgrows them. For the website, oh okay. For the for the lens flare, I do not know how to do that, but I have something I'll, uh, I'll I'll look into for you. You change the white background to the black. Okay, okay, yeah, something to consider. One game going here, guys. We'll get our Vampire Coast coming up soon. Should be fun. I think we're coast on Borderlow Landing. Is this the dreaded Queen Bess time? Is it Queen Besson? Yeah, I could talk to my developer about that. It probably would be a pretty easy thing to change. It's much easier on the eyes. All right, sounds good. I don't know how Warriors of Chaos are so low. I think I think like good players abandon them when they weren't overpowered anymore because... You know, most of the people, if you look at the top of the leaderboard, are going to be folks who really chase the meta, right? And last last season, they were playing Warriors of Chaos because it was OP. And now that they're not, they're more of a balanced faction. Um, you know, they're kind of in the pits a little bit. So the stats will be getting reset as soon as we get a bounce patch, um, which I would wager will be soon. I think we're going to get one uh, some I would uh, sometime this month or next month, most likely, because there's a lot of bugs. There's a lot of bugs. Yeah. Google Calendar still won't implement dark mode. I think we can give Turn's website a break. No, it's, it's a good thing, and I don't think it'd be that hard to change, honestly. I do not think it would be that hard to change. So I'll talk to my developer about that, because it is a little bit jarring on the eyes, for sure. Yeah, Warriors of Chaos are good, though. I think they're fine. I, I don't think they belong down there in the pits. I really don't. <laughs> somehow they have, they have returned in the pits, though, somehow. All right, so refreshing here. So we just have one match. Let's see what it's going to be. I kind of want to use some Luther Harkin. I, he's such a cool character. Yeah, so the next map we're on is Borderload Landing. And um, we can probably go Vampire Co Vampire Coast. I'm just ruining Subitized Tiebreaker right now. I'm just tanking in the pits for him. Yeah, I feel like Warriors of Chaos is fine. By the way, guys, got some fun news. Um, sometime soon, I don't know when, but we are going to be starting a uh, land battle leaderboard. So... My dev is working on a couple updates for the website, but as soon as he finishes those in the next week or two, we're going to be starting a land battle leaderboard um, and stats as well. So for any of you guys who might not enjoy domination as much, uh, we will be hosting land battle events on the website and have a land battle season and all that going as well. So we're going to be picking that up just so, uh, you know, we can bring everyone together, one big happy family. That's kind of the game plan. So it should be a lot of fun, man. I'm excited for it. I've been playing a couple. Um, there's a, a cool mod that adds a capture point to land battle. Uh, and, and kind of, you don't really need to worry about the attacking rules as much, which is a big selling point for me because the attacking rules are kind of a tough thing to enforce when you get to like a higher stakes tournament and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I wanted to do, I wanted to do some chaos tonight too. I, I did feel like that would have been fun. I was trying to get my empire win. I only need one more to unlock Carl Franz avatar. Okay. So there's, there's always one, one team that takes their time. There's always one. So, so far, House Cat of War, we have a handful of undefeated players. It looks like Kark did lose his game. I wonder what he lost with. Huh. That is great news. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. We'll be having more land battle events on the uh, on the website. So, I'll host some with the mod. Uh, I'll definitely do some with the mod, uh, the capture point mod. I think that'd be cool. It's only a couple ways off, a few weeks. By the way, what do you guys think we're going to be getting next for DLC? What is the? What do you suspect? I, I think that uh, my conspiracy theory is that we definitely need Cathay and Kislev. They they need some new units, man. They definitely need some new units. The thing is, most of the races I've included launched haven't launched. Yeah, so Tomb Kings and Ogres. What else? Beastmen. Yeah, they were all pretty recent. Uh, Beastmen. I don't know if you remember. This is ancient history, but Beastmen did launch relatively overpowered. They um they were they were pretty gross. Because Marker the Shadow Gave was like the most broken character ever. He could, had the ability to summon 4,000 gold worth of Chaos Spawn onto the table. So he would just... Because the Spawn Summons were twice over and they had unlimited lifetimes. Because that was back before Summon Units uh, died. So basically you would bring Morker into battle and your opponent had to grind through 4,000 extra gold worth of resources. So he was probably one of the most broken lords at launch of all time. Morker, I think. Yeah, I, I'm trying to... Th Astrogoth is definitely a contender, but I think Morker might be, actually just be worse. Norska versus Kislev. That would actually be a really, really cool DLC. I, I would be su super down for that. Yeah, Cathay is an interesting one. They are. 
All right, so let's advance the round. Let's see how this is going. And where are we at? Okay, so we got our opponent here. Let's do this. Let's grab him. And continue our streak of haggardness for tonight. Game's up. Go like have fun. And uh, all set, man. The olden days, yeah, man. Vampire count players on ladder bringing like just a million zombie summons that just never disappeared. Oh god. Warhammer One PvP was so awful. I mean, now looking back, it was so awful. God, it was bad. I mean, CA had. I don't think Creative Assembly at that point had like any intent to make this game like and have any multiplayer focus. You know, but we as a community over the years like worked at it together. And uh, oh god, do I have to play Chaos Dwarfs? Oh god, really? I actually have an idea against him. Oh, it's going to be Kislev. Okay. Kislev versus Vampire Coast is actually kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. All right. Good luck. Have fun. So let's uh, build up these armies. And who do I want to bring? All right. We're going to we're gonna have a little bit of fun. Since we're already in the pits of hell tonight, let's, let's play some weird builds. We don't need to be super sweaty. All right. So Kislev. Hmm. Kislev is coming. Kislev is coming to get ya. Vampire Coast. What what song do you want? Give us... Which song do you want? I see you want something. Am I missing something here? I don't know. Lore of the Deeps here is kind of a funky one. Lore of Vampire is always quite good, obviously. You know, being able to summon things and, uh, you know, cause havoc is never bad. Rotting Promethean. All right. Some animated boys could be good against Kislev, although it's probably going to be a lot of archers, I would wager. I feel like deck chopper bombers are really good at clearing out like light anti like light stuff. Deck gunners against Kislev also doesn't feel like a terrible choice. Maybe a little bit hard to protect them, I suppose. But um, yeah, all those like dervishes flying around your backfield and shit. Yeah, Kislev's got some good dive, man. Luminar. Oh yeah, the triple net combo is fun in a couple matchups. It is with Empire. It can definitely be very viable. Okay, so let's get you guys. You guys. Everybody loves Felbats. <laughs> Sir the Eck. Sir the Eck as a DLC would be sweet, dude. And I think everybody would like that. There's a, That would just be so much fun. All right, so this is kind of like a, a weird, weird build. Yeah, Kislev certainly cannot fly. This is true. They cannot. Okay, let's grab you guys. I think that's going to be good. Deck Gunners. Also a fun choice if we want. Animated Hulkos. We could get them with the bloat, the big thick bloats coming in like a wrecking ball. Oh man, it's going to be fun. I, I like this build already. It's pretty great. It's Queen Bessie would be cool, but I think like Little Grom just kills it too easily. So we probably don't mess with the best. <laughs> we don't mess with the best. All right. So a couple of you. Lamprey's Revenge also feels pretty good here. Lamprey's Revenge does feel pretty decent, doesn't it? Huh. Like the big Crabbo Stabbo is moving on up and just uh, being tanky and tough to kill. Solid Scuttlers, Bomber Bats, they feel pretty disruptive. What about a Colossus against Kislev? Colossus used to be good against like Bretonia back in the old land battle days. I don't know about now though. Slostra on the Crab is a very strong pick here actually. She's very strong. Yeah. Something to consider. All right, so let's grab you. Let's do this. Grab you. Making some final uh, tweaks to the build here. Cut this and go cut that. So just kind of a bit of a combat piece here. And then we probably bring this character. Just bare bones. Yeah, Coast I think is one of the honestly one of the most flavorful factions in the game. They, they definitely are just so so cool. If there was one faction that I would really really want to be see see get added to the old world tabletop, it would definitely be uh, definitely be Vampire Coast. They've already confirmed that Kislev and Grand Cathay are going to be coming after a period of time. Um, they're not going to be launching with the game, uh, but yeah, they will they will be making an appearance at some point, which is pretty exciting. All right, so bloats are kind of uh, good here for sending a message. Although I don't know if they fixed the bug where bloats. Um, where bloats blow up as soon as they come out of the spawn. That That's kind of an unfortunate thing. <laughs> the old bloaty boys. All right. Let's get you and get some zombies. Get two of you guys. 
Really, just one of those? Is that is that all we're getting here? All right, guys. I think we're I think we're ready to hail the mighty a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a cool. Uh, let's play Sartosa. That'll be a fun banner. So you get to be expecting the dreaded Aranessa salt spite. I don't know. Aranessa actually against Kislev could be okay. Like on foot, just like this anti-large duelist type character. I could see that being uh, being feasible. Definitely could. All right, we're ready, man. Let's get the W with Coast. Let's try and get it. Hellstorm shipwrecked. Oh, if I could, if I could play songs on stream, I would. Yeah, no. YouTube is really strict with copyright stuff. Like, uh, like it, I think you're allowed to play a clip of a song for like like two or three seconds, and then if it's more than that, like YouTube just sends like the T900 to come and like crush your stream under its its boot. <laughs> Drunky drunk man. Jaddle your intensity, crack open a can of uh, yeah, there you, a can of beans and chug a bag of milk. What does he do that? Does he do that? That's crazy. I feel like I feel like I don't know. Would would he do that? I don't. I can't see that. No, I can't see him being someone who would like eat on stream either. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the dreaded sixty nine dollar donation. I really do appreciate it. Whereas, like you see, you see like fairly sizable pe like people streaming on Twitch, right? Like. uh and they they are um they're like just straight up listening to music that is you know straight off the radio. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, we got the Luther Harkin emoji, yes. We went with Solostra though on her giant doom crab. So she's here and uh she's pissed. Alright, guys. Anticity is a chaos worshipper. Uh I don't know. Uh he, Anticity is like the type of player who just plays whatever the strongest thing is. He's very much like a meta player, which is, you know, if you're trying to be the best, it makes sense. That's how you would want to play. If you're trying to win big tournaments and things like that. He does, I've seen him meme a couple times, but it's very rare. It's very rare. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he's like actively competing in tournaments, but he's such a good player that, you know, he could come back and compete and have a good chance of, um, of winning events and things like that. So bomber bats are there to just like swarm the um, the Kislev of archers basically, and uh, we're just gonna sit a couple zombies on the side, and they're gonna hold the side objective, and the bomber bats are just gonna be disruptive basically. Twitch will mute audio uh, after a stream if it has claimed music. That's true, but YouTube will crush your live stream as it's going if you listen to music. Like one time I accidentally started a live stream and I had some music playing on YouTube that I, I had my sound turned down, but it was still being picked up and YouTube just like crushed my stream within like 10 seconds. It was like, nope. It was pretty insane actually. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, we brought the Kraken's Pull, um, which is, you know, pretty good against like any sort of good good quality infantry. So we're going to see how it goes. Oh, you can still cheese with those summons. Yeah, but we're, we're not doing that. So it's not as good because they, um, they did nerf it. So what does he got? War sleds? Heavy war sleds and Cossars. Oh, okay. That's kind of a cool build. All right. Things are getting a little crazy over here. The old bloat won't be very good. I brought Queen Bessie too. Oh, is it Queen Bess in time? I think it might be Queen Bess in time, ladies and gentlemen. So these bats are going to hunt the Cossars. Solastra is just going to summon uh, the damned Knights Errant, like on top of the range units here. And we're going to send, um, probably need to send like one of the Hulks over with group three and have it like defend. Cause if we don't have any mass here, what's gonna happen is those chariots will just basically rampage through us. Um, and that's not gonna be good. So we could do a Morngul ambush on the back, which could be kind of a cool thing. Yeah, they do have stock. Let's actually do that. That sounds like it's super fun. So we're gonna send some Morngulls around for like a, a threatening back cap. And it looks like he's maybe maneuvering over to the side a little bit. I see what the Patriarch, heavy war sleds, Ice Witch and Solastra is just going to be chilling out until until the time is the time is now. Okay, so the Hulks are heading over to that side point to protect it. Um, Hulk should be able to fend off chariots, and it looks like there's going to be two units of Cossars moving there. Are they just basic Cossars? No, armored Cossars and basic ones. Okay, and uh, we could pull some doggos, but it looks like most of the fighting is going to be taking place in the middle. All right, so you guys head up here. This is definitely like kind of a queen best sort of game, I think. So let's get Sloster away. We do have healing though, and yeah, the sled shooting at zombies is fine. Let's move those hulks over. We're gonna grab this objective here. And uh, we just need to make sure that the sleds can't just run into my lines for free, basically, is, is what needs to go down here. So let's attack the bear. Get these hulks moving in to attack and uh, pull you guys here. And the bats are just sitting and just, you know, kind of taking it easy. We have Kossars with spears. Okay, so he's moving some basic uh, spear infantry in. All right, a little bit of poke and stroke going down here. Is it Queen Bess in time? Almost. Queen Bess is expensive as hell, so we're going to need a, a moment for that. All right, let's move up on the point. 
and get Sloster back. And the bat folk can now come in. And uh, we, yeah, I think we're going to need him here. We're going to need him here for the alpha strike. So we hide behind the pillar until all the zombies move up. Okay. We move you guys in on the side. And then what we do is we summon the damn knights errant from, from uh, the dreaded ambush position here. Okay, let's get you guys back. And you guys come in and just start nuking these. Those are armored Kossars, so we don't want to mess with that. Let's get these Knights Errant into the uh, Archers back here. So they're just going to swarm. And Slostra can get in and start rampaging. Let's get you guys up here. Pull you back. And perfect. So now we can get real crazy. And these bats are just going to maneuver this way. Pull these hulks in like so. And great. So we got in there. Let's do a fat Kraken's pull right there and get Slostra in. And uh, the bom Bomber Bats are going to just start causing fat disruption here too. All right, it's Queen Bess in time. Let's go, baby. Oh, yeah. Let's summon the Queen Bess. Oh, yeah. Look at Slostra going ham back here. She's causing a lot of havoc. All right. So we need to get on the, the Kossars, uh, the Archer variants, and just nuke them down, basically. All right. Now that he's leaving that point, we can um, we can go ahead and summon a Doggo for the capture weight and go for the Bat Cap here. Okay. We don't want to lose these Bats. They're getting wrecked pretty horribly. Um, so let's retreat the Bats away and just get an Invo on them. And uh, yeah, we have a little bit of pinning on the sleds, but... For the most part, Slostra is the one causing like all this havoc back here. You can see a lot of these bow units are in trouble. And now we got Warbear Riders coming in, so that's uh, a little bit scary for sure. All right, let's move up. Move you into combat, move you into combat. And the bats, yes. Let's go here, let's go here. And Queen Bessie can keep shooting at the Kossars with spears. Pull these bats back, and uh, looks like he's gonna be coming back here. But we have, I think, enough to summon some doggos if need be. Yeah, I think we do. All right, Hulk smash. Slostra is just going bananas, but the Oath Brothers of Tor have just been called in, who are very scary, so we don't want to be messing with them. So let's uh, do this, and the back point has been ninja, so our little ambush has succeeded, I would say. All right, so we got these guys moving back. The bats, where do we want to go? Let's go around the side, and Queen Bessie. We don't want to be losing Queen Bessie. I think saving up for a halberd is probably going to be smarter than summoning out a doggo, like a bit of a panic doggo. And let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, give it to me, precious. And perfect. All right, so these Death Guard pole arms should easily handle those. All right, so let's start getting the Bomber Bats onto the Kossars here. And now we have a little bit of support going in. Sleds, uh, any pressure on the back, doesn't look like it. And we do manage to wrestle that back point. All right, great. So the Bombers are doing work. Yeah, you can see how they're melting all those units. It's very, very good. Um, one way we could lose this is if we just obviously throw Solastra. So we don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and get Invocation on Solastra. Healer up, and uh, looks like a little bit of back pressure coming in. Depth Guard pull arms able to do their job. And is there anything I want to be shooting here? Uh, yes, we want to shoot those healthy Kossars. That would be the way. All right, so we'll keep these Depth Guard pull arms back here um, just to kind of keep guarding this. The side objective is looking pretty good, so we managed to ninja that. Sloster is back in business, and we have another Kraken's pull, which we can use on these guys. And Caster, let's go ahead and move here. Use the Power Stone. And what now? Do we want to summon the Bloat? Is the Bloat how we send the message here? I think it is. Uh, let's get some pull arms moving up. Great, so yeah, we're able to wrestle that point, which is really, really good. Let's move in. Queen Bessie is still shooting and uh, dropping fat, hot, steaming payloads on the faces of this army. Sloster is just being a crab lady, doing what angry crab ladies do. Let's pull you guys around the side. And uh, our vampire caster is a little bit trapped up here, actually. Yeah, we need you guys to come in and help against these chariots. Yeah, don't want to lose the bats. Let's get the Morngulls back. Bats can keep retreating. Come and try and peel some of these units. I think we need the Death Guard pull arms, honestly, up here. So we can just defend with um, something else. All right, pull back. Yeah, we're running out of steam a little bit in the middle in terms of our, like, actual units. So let's just get a little bit of Queen Bessie value and use our bats to stabilize the side point. Vampire Caster is still very much alive and Solastra, so let's get you guys here. Move you back a little bit. And, uh, yeah, now we just defend this point with the doggos is going to be the game plan. All right, Queen Bessie. Keep dropping it like it's hot. Let's go here. He's going to wrestle that side point from us, but I think we can use the scurvy dogs to kind of protect. Yeah, those those Oath, Oath Brothers of Tor could be a little bit of a problem. Let's start heading that way. And uh, what do we want to summon? Yeah, we need the Death Guard pull arms up here. I'm just waiting for the, the pressure to come in. Okay, so let's move those bats away. And he thinks it's free, but ain't nothing in this life for free, that is for sure. Lamprey's Revenge, surprise! All right, so Lamprey's Revenge are going to come out. Should be able to deal with those dervishes. Let's pull back, and uh, we can just start hitting these winged lancers. Moving Sloster over that way, and the Lamprey's Revenge do intercept those, so now we got a little bit of pressure coming up to the middle. Queen Bessie is, is doing okay. It's not, not that devastating, but I'm actually pretty behind. I might just lose like every game tonight straight up. Okay. So Queen Bess is doing some work. We do have some healing. Uh, let's drop a fat invo on those bats there and try and top them off, because they're still a very good unit. 
Queen Bess, how are we looking? We got Depth Guard pull arms moving up. My opponent going to be happily just sniping them with his, his heavy war sleds, though. And the Oath Brothers of Tor. So let's head over to this point. Um, we did manage to hold on to it, which is pretty cool. So let's uh, get our characters and see what we can do. Um, Lampreys, let's get back. Let's pull these Depth Guard pull arms back. Um, we can send the basic ones up to the middle. These guys need to get a doggo. And now we can get some scurvy dogs to just attack them. And it should take them out. All right. So we got some pressure coming in. Let's get back. Slostra and the Vampire Caster here. Is Queen Bess actually doing any damage is the question. I don't really know. It's hard to tell. Okay, so the doggo's got the ambush there. We got these heavy heavy bear monster things. And, uh, yeah, let's get Slostra into those archers. We need to pull the crabs back a little bit. Slostra will disrupt them, and then the bats can come in and just crush them. And what do we have here? This is mostly just Gossars. All right. So now we should be able to get them. And how are the dogs doing? The dogs are feasting like the heathen kings of old. Queen Bessie is still, still doing a little bit of damage, I suppose. Nothing too crazy. Maybe we're not as far behind as I thought. I don't know. We are holding on to this objective. Um, that Vampire Caster will hopefully blob some stuff up. And we got the Patriarch moving in here, so let's go for the Patriarch if we can. Costify Dervishes are broken, which is outstanding. And uh, looks like we did break through these guys. All right, so Solastra, you need to drop a little bit of sweet action there. Pull these bats back, and as far as this goes, let's get some dogs to go like help against those like archers up there. That's going to be really nice. All right, so this is a good fight for us. We actually have, um, yeah, let's get the dogs back. Who let the dogs out? Yeah, it, it did a little bit of work, but I think we're okay. Because we have halberds and um, elite units like right on top of these these bears, right? So we can just kind of keep nibbling them down as they try and retreat. All right, so Slostra, keep doing it. Bats, keep, uh, keep grinding. We got two doggo units coming in, and Queen Bess is out of ammo, so let's unsummon it. You know, that's, that's kind of cool. You know, it's, it's pretty rare you get Queen Bessie to use all of its ammo. You know, that's, uh, that's a nice one there. Did we manage to hold on to the side point? I don't think so. Yeah, Bomber Bat's doing pretty good, but the dogs are here. Who let the dogs out? We did. All right, so let's go there, go there. If we could flip that back point again, that's going to be pretty big for us. We did pull the value back, so maybe we're not going to lose this game after all. I don't know. Um, let's go get some uh, polearm boys. Just move them over to the side. Try and stabilize that. And the Oath Brothers of Tor are definitely getting ground down. And uh, do we want to move anything up to the middle? Yeah, Hulks, it's Hulkin time. I think the Hulks can head up to the middle here. So Solastra and the dogs managed to just go apeshit here. Oh my god, look at that. So yeah, we just like cleaned up that whole Kislev army. So now we, we just need to hold on to our back point, which isn't going to be easy. He's got a lot of good mobility coming in there. Um, but I think we can just push for the middle, actually, with our big Death Star that we have here. I think that's very, very doable. All right, so let's grab the dogs. So who let the dogs out? We did, so let's move up. Um, this is going to be some uh, Kossars. So let's grab all of you guys, head to the middle, and capture that. Slostra can just chill here and maintain that for now. Yeah, this was a big win for us, though. We got his Patriarch, and we also got those Oath Brothers of Tor. But we need to um, we need to get that middle objective back. So let's just move up with all that stuff and move out. Avoid that Vortex there. Go after these Kossars. And uh, what do we have? Yeah, we can, we can go feast on these ones real quick. All right, so we get the Capture Weight there. We did partially dodge that. And it looks like there is going to be a Snow Leopard Summon. All right, so let's move up, move up. And uh, then we need to just start playing pretty much all the objectives and just trying to swarm out now that we've kind of pulled a little bit of a value lead here. But yeah, it looks like we might be able to just straight up get this point too. You can see the doggos actually crumbling against the Kossars. Must have been a little bit of friendly fire damage. Slosser is just going to hang there. Yeah, she's just going to hang out there. Vampire caster. See your thing. Attack here. Move up on the points. We have Lamprey's Revenge hustling. And these are Death Guard pull arms, which I'm more than happy to fight cavalry and or any sort of mass with. And we need, do we want to send a message? I think we want to send a message, although I'm afraid of the bloated corpse being bugged and blowing up on me when I uh, when I try and bring it out. Oh, nice little cast right there. That was pretty good. That was nice. All right, so we broke the Kossars over here. The Haggard Bats have done it. And it looks like they're going to break in a minute. Let's get Sloster over there to go help. And probably not a bad idea. And the middle objective has been flipped. So that's quite nice. So Death Guard pull arms into the War Bear Riders. Stacked with animated Hulks. Let's get a Hulk on his Lord here. And uh, hopefully that'll do the job. So those Depth Guard pull arms are going to be pretty money. If you ever want, yeah, if you've ever listened to the Baja Boys and just been like, who let the dogs out? The answer, it was me. It was me all along. Um, all right, so let's get some Fell Bats just for disruption, like pinning and charging and things like that. This objective has been flipped. And over here, yeah, we totally just got those guys. Yeah, all right. Slosser can move to the middle now. And these bats can just basically run interference. And uh, yeah, we got some good capture weight coming up. We also got his Lord surrounded. The Ice Witch is going to die here. Um, bats, what are these? These are Armored Kossars. So let's grab a couple of you, one and one, and head over this direction. And uh, rear charge into these Winged Lancers and get the Lampreys Revenge moving in as well. 
Yeah, I think we got this game in the bag. We're starting to pull ahead in value. This was a really dicey one, though, guys. This is real shady, McGrady. All right, let's get the dogs over there. The dog flank over on the side objective is definitely what won it for us. All right, so the Lord is dead. Kislev is basically on their back foot now. We got it. We got to use Queen Bess. That was pretty cool. That was definitely cool. My opponent played very well, though. It, just a couple late game blunders cost them, but they definitely were out playing me early. No, Kislev has Kislev against Coast actually isn't bad. It's it's a uh, Coast Kislev can totally win it. Um, I played this matchup a lot actually from the Kislev perspective. All right, so let's get you. Let's get you. Let's grab this point. Um, looks like there's a little bit of funny business coming here. So let's just get these bats back. Rotate there, and now this is where we send the message. Do Bodies have Vanguard? No, for some reason I was like, they should have Vanguard. Come on, don't blow up. Okay, he didn't. So that bloat's going to go to the high ground point. Ladies and gentlemen, we bloated him. All right, so yeah, big blob fight going here, which again is going to heavily favor the undead. Uh, that back point's going to flip back to us, as we have plenty of units there. Slostra is still alive, being a pain. And let's get our vampire caster, see if we can goon that. And... Uh, what is this? So we got Kossars and we got Kossars. Okay, so Kossars they do have a bad time versus dog units typically is how you kind of deal with them. But yeah, we got depth guard pole arms against bear riders. Man, that's going to be good. Yeah, one bloat to send a message. But the problem is if I if you try and hold an objective with a the bloat, they're just going to send uh, like a chariot to kill it and you'll get like no damage. Yeah, it feels pretty bad. Um, these are armored Kossars. Okay. So we need the Felbats over there actually. Let's go get Sloster over there and um, we can now attack them to try and keep them from getting to the point. And Slostro can make her way over and try and stabilize that. I think we we got enough on this point that we got that one on lock. I, dude, I, I straight up thought I was going to lose this game. Like, I I, uh, I just thought it was over. Like, uh, that was definitely the feeling I was getting. No more magic. Slostro can go here. Um, yeah, let's take the character over there, too. The bloat's coming, but he's he's kind of slow. He's, he's going to have to just hustle. Yeah, let's get some doggos to come just... The the dogs are just such underrated units. Like, having them be able to just bounce between points and everything is just insanely, insanely cost-effective. So, yeah, you can see even the deck dropper bats, which aren't necessarily designed for this, do pretty well for themselves. Slostra is, you know, a good fighter. Bloaty McBloat is heading over that direction. Maybe he'll be able to do something. And we got the two doggos. Got a lot of capture weight here. These are mostly winged lancers. Lampreys Revenge need to get over there and help. Pull arms, bloats. It's secret agent bloat, yeah. Huh. Oh man, the Slostra voice acting is hilarious. All right, so let's do another uh, Vanguard Morngul. I think the middle's fine, although oh, I do. Right as I look, the capture weight does start to flip. I mean, it is mostly haggard undead characters, right? So, am I am I throwing the game by not just playing the middle? Probably, but the fancy plays are, are very fun. All right, so let's get you up here and you up here. And the back objective is, is, I would say, pretty well defended. We can get a Felbat, too, to run some interference. And, yeah, he does start to flip this one. We still have a lot of zombies and good quality units here, so the value trading will favor us, most likely. And this point's going to flip pretty fast once we start to munch down a lot of these units here. So, um, secret agent bloat, bloat. You believe in the bloat? You think he's going to get some value? What's the over-under on the bloat this game? Is he going to get there and, and get some kills? Find out on today's episode. If my opponent leaves the game early, then he's definitely not going to, but... Come on, baby. Come on. We have to act like we're scared. Like, oh no. No, we actually, we, we don't want to throw the game. We need to keep killing those units. Because <laughs> we just we just lost the middle. So we need to uh, we need to make sure we're holding it down there. All right, let's get a Hulk over there. We took the side point here. Oh, he sees it. No. The bloat's not going to be able to find anyone, dude. No, oh, what a shame. All right, so we got the point. Um, he would have to wrestle this one from us, which isn't going to be easy. We still have Lamprey's Revenge and Halberds fighting here, which are actually grinding down a lot of the chariot units. All right, so Doggos and you guys. Solastra is going to hang out. No. No, he sees it. He sees the bloat. No. No. Saving Private Bloat. Come on. Come on. Go, bloat. That's all we care about. This is what happens when you lose games in the tournaments and you just care, care for nothing. Hey, at least you're getting a bloat mini game, right? Oh, give me those armored cowsers. Come on. Give it to me. All right. So this objective looking okay. Um, Salt Lord Scuttlers coming out could be fine, but I think just sending more zombies up to the middle to, uh, you know, pressure everything is going to be the way. Man, well, at least the bloat was like a distraction, right? Like my opponent was so occupied with it that, you know, maybe maybe there was, there was play blunders made elsewhere. I'm not sure. Come on, baby. There he goes. There goes my bloat. He did it, man. He survived. The the bloat survived the entire game. Private bloat. Mission, mission accomplished. We saved him.
All right. That was worth it. That was worth the whole stream. <laughs> get, get down, Mr. Bloat. Get down, Mr. President. Yeah, we, we got him. All right. Support that. And then uh, let's get this. Uh, so who was at that time? Vampire Coast versus uh, what was he playing? He was uh, old Kiss LeVay. I wonder how Queen Bessie did. We'll take a look at that here in a second. Did I report the score correctly or am I potato? Let's see. Yeah, we got it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Oh, there's a chance I could play Professor Pwn, guys. I think there's a chance in the last game. Okay. A couple, couple things going down. Sloster was great. Um, I thought she was very disruptive. The Bomber Bats all did pretty okay. They paid for themselves. They're really good against light, light armored archers, actually, if you can like flank them. I think the scurvy dogs ended up saving us. The Oh my god. Guys, Queen Bess? Queen Bess used all of its ammo. Every last shot. And got 498 value. Oh my god. That's what almost threw the game. I was like, man, why am I losing momentum here? It was because I spent 2,000 gold on something that like did nothing, basically. Oh my god. What a disappointment. Oh, look at that. Man. Death Guard pole arms, though, and Lampreys. Those guys were beast mode. Uh, 2,900 and 2,700 on these guys. Kislev's, uh, definitely weak. They're on the weaker end of factions, but they, they try their best. They try their best. Dude, 498 value. Yeah, at least they did good. My opponent played well, though. It was a scrappy-ass game, man. A lot of winged lancers, bear riders coming out. I think if the bear riders hadn't gotten, like, caught in combat with my pole arms, I think he wins that game, maybe. It was, it was good. I don't even know. GG, well played. Close one. Yeah, Coast, a lot to explore with Coast. A lot to explore. I like Coast is definitely better in land battle, I feel, with all of the um like the artillery being a little bit better there. I don't know. Cosars once on accident. Dude, I don't even know. It shot every single shot. I was and you guys saw, I, I was targeting like the armored infantry, right? It wasn't like I was just shooting random shit. Yeah, no, it's it's it was weird. Yeah, let's refresh this. Dude, the bloat probably would have gotten more value than Queen Bess, honestly. Okay, Super Giant Karker battling it out. Currently, House Cat, Zabra Scowl, Shaper of Fate. A um, couple of players who are close to being undefeated. And, of course, we'll be going to our top four at some point, which should be good. The dreaded top four cometh. Super Giant looks like he lost his second game against Blood Penguin. He's going to join me in the pits. So, Chaos Dwarf's next. Um... Maybe I'll try and do a Chaos Dwarf build that doesn't abuse any of the broken stuff. Because I don't really care if I win this next one. I don't have a chance of making it to the top four anyways tonight. So we're, we're, we're going to do something like very off meta. Very off meta. I don't know. I like. I feel like Queen Bess isn't like terrible. You know, I've In land battle, Queen Bess used to win me games all the time. I remember taking wins off like Felcon and really top tier players with Queen Bess in, in certain matches. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know about old Queen Bessie. Hey, Fidel, you played really well. It's it's a weird matchup. Yeah, it is. It's And not a lot of people play Vampire Coast these days. So, so what would I do against Kislev? Honestly, I thought your choice of caster was really good. Um, yeah, the caster with uh, Ice Bane's Kiss is definitely nice for clearing out zombies. I think you had the right idea with that, my friend. So maybe just that. So let's make, um, let's make a fun build here. All right, so... Yeah, Ice Armor is okay. Probably cut that. Frost Shield is decently useful. I do like the Bear Mount, though. I think the Bear Mount is pretty good. Um, just, to, just to fight against, like, crabs and other quality units. Um, you know what I think would actually maybe be really good here, though, would be Armored Kossar Spam. Although Queen Best is a little bit scary, but you, I had Queen Best against you the entire game, Fidel, and it got 400 value, dude. I don't know if you're listening, but um, against Coast, like, I almost, like, feel as if something like this could be really good. Maybe cut one of these guys, get another one of those. So, like, the thing is, how how good were your sleds, Fidel? Like, how good did the sleds do for you? Were they were they actually, like, getting some good value? Like, what about something like this? This feels pretty badass, actually. Um, so, like, Armored Kossars got buffed to have 40 melee defense. They're actually quite a good unit now. And they have the pistol fire against Coast, which is good, because you have a ton of light armor. Um, here you would have Gotrek to just like chase Solastra. I don't know about the horse archers though. The thing is, Coast is really slow, so like you could have like you could have two horse archers, okay, harassing my flank. 
for sure, like sitting there and poking at my back objective. And then you could just call in dervishes to fend off my hounds. And there would be basically nothing I could do against the horse archers, right? Um, so winged lancers for sure. I love the warbear rider pick. Oath Brothers of Tor. Yeah, they're not a bad one. I think they're they're fine. You probably only need one warbear though. I don't know if you need two in this matchup. So what about the sleds? Do you really need the sleds? So what are the sleds there for? Killing zombies? I don't think you're going to have an issue killing zombies with like something like this. Like this build feels like it would be a pretty good counter against what I brought. Yeah, mostly I had Cav out there when he brought Queen Bess and a lot of my infantry was heading to the back point to secure it because of the bomber bat harass. Yeah. Hmm. I, I like. I feel like there's something f with for the horse archers here. Maybe one heavy war sled, just as like a utility piece. If if you see something, um, Zargard are also not bad here. Zargard can a single Zargard unit can take on like an animated Hulk plus even more. Um, I like the single snow leopard tech. I think that's cool. Like one snow leopard. Like if there's a crab or animated Hulk on its own. No, Kislev infantry got buffed in the last patch. It's quite a bit better. Like I I I feel as if when Kislev gets um. It's a DLC. They're going to be pretty menacing for sure. All right. Do we want a Zargard here? I think we have enough infantry. I don't think you need more infantry, actually. I think you can just go with mobility. Because Kislev Cavalry is, is actually very, very good. Um, any characters? You could bring out a Patriarch, but... Yeah, what is the Patriarch going to be there for? Because if you're going wide, you don't really need the healing. I really like the Horse Archer thing here. I don't know. It's like a conspiracy theory. They felt okay. Unfortunately, I didn't check the value. I certainly could have used them better. They did bait out a blob, which I punished with Heart of Winter. You see, that's pretty sweet, dude. Yeah. The Heart of Winter tech, huh? I don't know how much damage it did. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I was like busy microing elsewhere on the battlefield. Maybe another Winged Lance or something like this. The zombie pole arms could be annoying if they get spammed in numbers, but overall, yeah, fun stuff. Let's see how we're looking. We're ready for the next round. Let's get it grooving. Let's get it moving. All right. So somebody in chat saying Dom feels more fair, but it feels a little, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I use, I, I still use pretty standard formations in domination mode. It's just like you have a formation and then you send like units off to go grab things. It's, um, yeah, like there is something about the aesthetic of land battle, like and land battles can be very epic. Um, like the ending of a land battles, so they're very tense and like wild, right? Whereas in Dom, like there can be really epic climactic endings where the points are close and you're scrapping and fighting desperately, but then there's a lot of games where it's just kind of like, you know, it, it, it just, the ending isn't terribly exciting. I, I certainly see the appeal of both of those. Yeah, Gotrek is, is definitely not bad for in this matchup. Like he can fight animated hulks, lampreys, depth guard. He does magic damage, which isn't, isn't terrible. The heart felt impactful. Uh, not sure how it actually did. Was sweating and microing, yeah. I get you for sure. I get you. All right, cool. Yeah, the bomber bat harass is good. They're really good at killing Kossar spam. The thing about, yeah, land battle could be fun. I mean, I played four or five battles of land battle on, on quick battles the other night, and I had a good time, but I did get one, a couple of the games people did corner camp and just sit in the forest, and it was kind of like, yeah. But I like with amongst friends, it's very, very fun. It's very, very fun for sure. All right, so let me refresh this. See yeah, how we're looking. I think there's like one or two games going here. Need to fix some scores. Um, so let's see here. So how many games did he win? So he won his, okay, so his score should be two. So fixing that. So he's got his two there, no problem. So he got the buy round and then CI got two. So let me check that. All right, where are you at? So just doing a little bit of adminning. So he should have uh, two wins right now. One win. One win. Okay. Yes. So just got to do a little bit of adjustment on the old Swiss points here, guys. And we'll be getting started here soon. Yeah, land battles are they're fun. It's good fun, though. I think it's uh, I think it's a good format if you're playing with people who you know won't, you know, abuse the rules and things like that. Yeah. But, you know, you shouldn't have to have rules in an RTS game, like community-made rules. It's like, it's a silly thing. Dual barrel roll. Did they buff final transmutation on the last patch? Um, I don't know if they did. It's 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 always been okay. It, it, there's been other spells that have overshadowed it, but now that some of those spells have perhaps been nerfed, um, I don't know. One sec, guys. Got to check here. Checking the old leaderboard. Not leaderboard, but the tournaments. And our last round is Chaos Dwarf, so we'll do something fun. We'll we'll try we'll try something that isn't. I'm sure you guys don't want to see any just lame sweat, right? Whoa, what's going on here? 
What is going on with the Swiss points? Something's getting real crazy with the brackets. Okay. Okay, he actually looks fine. All right, so we had the drop. One match still going. Ghoul versus Sleepy Lion. Yeah, the like Dom the Dom quick battles though suck also because of the maps. Like the maps are just so god awful. Like I I refuse to do like I used to love doing like ladder streams in Warhammer One and Two, where I just get in on get on and queue ladder. It's super fun, but the problem is it's like here you run into uh, you you just run into like Galleon's Cove and these like piece of shit maps that just like it just makes me not want to play it. You know, I'm just like why would I waste my time with this? this is it's, it's not even fun. Speaking of not being able to have formations at all, Galleon's Cove, Crossing the Sea of Claws, like all these maps, like you just can't, you straight up can't have, you can't have anything fun on those. Yeah, I, I, I gotta, man, I've been trying to get CA to do something about it. Um, yes, waiting on last one. Okay, what's it gonna be? So refreshing. I think I reported my own score, didn't I? Okay, so Ghoul and Sleepy Lion are the last ones. And then we will play and we will duel. Okay, doing a little bit of admining work here. Hey Funk! Hardly ever you get to catch a live stream. Been watching you since the release of Warhammer 2. That is that is that's some that's like what 2017? Long time ago. Keep it up and have a great evening. Thank you so much, and I hope you're doing well. Hope you guys are enjoying the stream. Um we are approaching the final round of regular regulation time and then we go on to the uh grand finals which will be well semis and then grand finals which i'll be casting tonight so we are in caster mode tonight anyone else having a glitch where they put a at the end of their message and the only thing they could send is no no me i, I haven't had that granted i don't type in uh chat too much let's see here score here uh did you to report yet Okay, I'm just checking. You can um, tell him I will drop him next round. Okay, so just got a little bit of admin stuff I have to do for the for the next round, and then we're we're all set. Thank you, really appreciate it. I'd imagine if corner camping were a problem, if the maps were designed better, yeah, it's kind of like. If the corners were covered in trees downhill, then there would be obstacles to use defense. Yeah, it's it's still a tricky thing. Like every RTS game typically has some something you fight over, whether it be resources or um, a base that you have to protect like as a win condition. You know, there's gotta be something like that to make players fight or else what's the point? You know, like you could just you could just run in circles. Like I've run into players on quick battle ladder who just draw kite me in circles. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty funny. And like uh, it's, I remember back in the day, like even in Warhammer One and Two, playing some like well-known players who would like really engage in super degenerate tactics on, uh, <laughs> on like quick battles. Yeah, you know, because like when the competitive thing takes over, sometimes people just don't make rational decisions. You know, they just like they become they 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 you know, it's like the Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde thing. I've seen it many times. Like people who I know are good people just like go down the dark side when when they get overly competitive. You know. I'm sure you've all had a friend like that growing up. He's like, sorry, man, I don't know what came over me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, dry, 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 draw kiting is, is the worst. Yeah, Bone says evil. All right. We're all set. The Dow we never forget. Yeah, I, 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 there's, there's some good times. There's some good times I got back in the day. I have some, some fond memories of all that. All right, Subutai is adjusting his score. Looks like it's fine, and we are ready to go to the next round. All right, let's do it. Advance yield Swiss. Let's get some chaos, chaos Dawi time. All right, let's go ahead and get our opponent in here. Let's see who it's gonna be. Uh, here we go. All right. Good luck, have fun. All right, so it's Mighty Morphin Chorfin time, and the map is going to be uh, Glade of the Ever Queen. Okay. Glade of the Ever Queen. It's a very cool map. All right. So next round is up, ladies and gentlemen. We have begun. Let me message the players. All right, here we go. Maps up. 
Next round is live. Good luck, have fun. So this will be the last round of regulation here. It'll be the last one. And then, um, yeah, we're just chilling from there. We're just taking it easy. All right, so where are we at? Looking here. My opponent will be here. Let me see what faction they declared. So looking at their declaration, scrolling up. What is it gonna be? Somebody has pinged me. Oh no, what is this? I DM'd him the old code. So looking for their declared faction, what is it gonna be? Where art thou? Did they declare a faction? Oh, okay. So we got Bretonia. All right. It's Bretonia time. Okay. So against Bretonia on Glade of the Everqueen. We got some fun choices. We got some fun choices here. What would Thorgrim say? He would for sure be disappointed. But we're not going to play like super degenerate. We're going we're gonna to play like a more fun Chaos Dwarf style. I mean, we will have some good units because you kind of have to have some of them. Like you can't... Chaos Dwarfs have so many like broken ass units that you just legit can't avoid them. It sucks. But... um. Yeah, it's the it's the nature of the beast. Okay, so let's get you. Oh hell yeah, dude! This is this is what I'm here for. This is the good stuff. Okay, cut that. We can keep that. Oh man, oh man, this is this is just the pit lord build. <laughs> I I'm the dark lord of the pits right now, guys. Draz Hoth? You, you guys want Draz Hoth, the Ashen? Yeah, he's pretty cool. I, I, I definitely think he's good here. I definitely think he's good. All right, so as far as infantry goes, we could probably do some Chorf Great Weapons. They're usually fine. It's labor in time. It's going to be a very uh, labor-intensive build, if you know what I mean. Okay. Now, what else do we want to summon out here? I wish I could go double... Wait, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Is this is this possible? Are you ready for the worst build of all time? <laughs> oh god. Oh god. This build's so bad. I don't I don't know if I can win with this. Oh. All right. What do we got here? Um Sure, why not? What does that do? Give some Oh man, guys. I, I I legit don't know if we can win with this build. I know I say that I, I maybe have said that in the past, but this is this is taking it to a whole nother level. Oh man, okay. No, we're not we're not going sweat this game. We're we're just memeing. But like it, it might actually work is the thing. I think there's some like elements of it that could be strong if my opponent's not prepared. We'll have to see. But um, yeah, man, it's on, it's on. Let the good times roll. Okay, so we got you guys. Um, definitely want some hobo goblins. You think, so what do you guys think it is? Let's see if anybody can guess it. I'm not gonna like say when you get it right, but I'm curious how many of you folks are gonna get, be close. Dear God in heaven. I love that cover picture. Yeah, my wife drew that. Yeah, she's super talented. Mm, all right, can we get you? And was that 450? Give me no. This is this is deep. This is like deep, deep, deep memeage. This is this is like potentially just unwinnable. Uh, I don't know though. It depends on what he brings. Depends on what he brings. Hobgoblins? You think it's a mass hobgoblin army against Bretonia? That'd be pretty bad. They would definitely run you. I mean, you might be able to win if you if you brought some like monsters with them and stuff. Full could I dread trains. Uh, somebody says Francisco's right. Let's see what Francisco said. Okay, I'm scrolling up here. Give it, <laughs> give it to you guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Only one of those feels pretty bad. Can we like, can we cut you, get another hobo goblin, and then another laborer maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? That's fine. All right. I don't think he, there's no way he's gonna guess what this is. There's no way. All bulls is actually no. All bull centaurs is oh, oh, like he would not have a good time against that. Bull centaurs are like extremely broken. Yeah, they they have a bad time. All right, let's check here. All right, 
I could swear I thought I would try to eat. Ready? Go like have fun. <laughs> oh man. I didn't even know this build was possible, but you know, you learn something every day. Zane, thank you for the tenor. Hey, love the Warhammer content. Best caster for multiplayer for the lady. Thank you so much, Zane. I really appreciate that. Gabos? No. You guys, you guys are you guys are not ready for this. Draz hoeth the ashen cometh atop a mighty a mighty beast wreathed in fire and ash. He will descend from the skies with his double dreadquake mortar. Not one but two, ladies and gentlemen. Not one but two. We're we're going for the big the big plays. Oh man. If he if uh, I hope he has like good infantry and we could just blast them. <laughs> hey Zane, I really appreciate it. So yes, it is time. Walls, I see only piles of sand. Oh, look at that, man. Draz Hoa talking some smack about an Empire City. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. No, it's two mortars, not just one. It's two. It's time. <laughs> so our army is like literally three units. It's like we have two Dreadquake mortars and Draz Hoeth. And he's got Flames of Asgoro. Okay, so we got one Dreadquake here. My favorite part in Morbius is when they said <laughs> it's Dreadquake in time. All right, and this is our front line. You guys ready to see this? Okay, we got the laborers. I know you guys were sick of seeing Astrogoths, so I was like, all right, let's 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 give the people what they want. Oh yeah, dude, he's got a thirteen stack, which means there's definitely some infantry. I always feel like bringing like a big expensive artillery piece is like the same rush that people get when they're at like the casino. You know, it's like you see the big bombardment coming, and you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna hit! Am I gonna hit the hit 21 <laughs> as they come down?" You know? Yeah, it's hilarious. So the rest of our army is pretty good. I mean, we have we have you know the guns and the bull centaurs and all that. Um, this is only only in domination. You see this haggardness. Okay, his army looks like it's pretty good. Okay, he's got blessed traps. <laughs> The Blessed Trebs versus the Dreadquake duel. This is the time of heroes. And Draz Hoeth is a very scary fighter. Like, he can potentially goon any of these characters down. Um, Bull Centaurs are going to be our first choice because we need something to stop the two Paladins. Um, okay, so unfortunately I positioned them a little bit wrong. Draz Hoeth is so cool, dude. I mean, he, he, with this Scepter thing, he can go pretty bananas. Yeah, he can definitely go ham. So he's hiding a bunch of stuff in the trees, it looks like. Um, all right, so just move you up. Yeah, all right, let's go. Let's go. Um, do we want bull centaurs out first? Yeah, probably bull centaurs. And we just start dread quaking, man. We just start quaking the dread. Send some orc laborers up here to grab this. Draz Hoth's just gonna be chilling. Um, unfortunately, they're gonna start shooting at the characters. So what we probably do is have you turn around. The only way to make your dread quakes not waste ammo is to have them, um, face the wrong way so if you have it like turn around it's not going to shoot because otherwise it's going to waste ammo on the faint chantress and company which is going to feel pretty bad so let's let's do that yeah that should should turn us around here who needs an army when you have giant cannons of doom i know isn't that the truth well he's sitting back very cautiously very very cautiously which is probably a good idea for now all right let's get the bull centaurs up so they're going to come and support and the Dreadquakes, I don't want them to start shooting at like his characters and wasting ammo. That's how you lose. So you have to turn the Dreadquakes around. Um, it's just, you know, the nature of the beast. Uh, you know what? We can start shooting at these Haggard Peasants if they want to move up. Sure, why not? Oh, yeah, dude. Look at the first shot. Okay, now we turn it around. And we turn it around. Let's see if those either of those two shots are going to hit. Okay, he's blessing me. And one shot. <laughs> not quite. Not quite what we were looking for. Let's move this uh, Dreadquake over this way. To get a, a little bit of a better position to fight for this objective here. And uh, yeah, now what does he have coming out? Foot Squires? Oh, there's the good stuff. I, I knew you were holding out on me, buddy. I knew you were holding out on me here. Okay, so let's get... Oh, the Dreadquakes just shoot anyways. They don't care. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, well... It is what it is, man. Let's get another bull centaur here. Get up on this point, and uh, Draz Hoeth is just gonna go. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. Let's go. Let's get the bull centaurs in there. I don't think he has any cab to support him, so it's like, why not? Let's just go for the freebies here. Come on, Dreadquakes. 
Okay, he's trebucheting some units. Let's move you guys over this way. Oh, yeah. Look at the big beasts of Hashit. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, my brothers. All right, so let's get another um, another big one, Bull Centaur here. Yeah, he's got his cap coming out, so we need to we need to have our, our big boys ready. I'm not sure what he's doing. He's trying to awaken some wood on me here or something, maybe. I have no idea what's going down. I guess he's trying to awaken the wood. Knights of the Realm coming out. Let's get our guns coming, and uh, Draz Hoeth can certainly, certainly do something about them, actually. All right, so let's get the Flames of Asgoro. Pop that right here. Get you moving in. Yes. That's going to do some fat damage. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, Drazho, it's time. Yes. Yes. The Ashen One cackles as the flames of Asgoro engulf his, his prey. All right. Let's start blasting here. Just giant base, heavy base mortar shots coming down. What's not to love, man? What's not to love? All right. Let's get some Chorf Warriors up. Park you on the hill. Get you guys chilling. Start shooting these. These are these are Grail Knights, actually. Dude, Draz Hoth going ham here now. Looks like it. Okay. Let's get these other Bull Centaurs back as well. Um, start shooting them with the the guns. Oh yeah, come on. Oh, it missed. Okay, it's sending a message though. That's for damn sure. Okay, so we got the big shots. Okay, they're getting last samurai on the charge, which is exactly what we want. And now we can counter charge them with the other units. Pull you back. Draz Hoth can prepare. A little bit of sweet action here. We'll have to see. Let's get some more Claybers coming up. It's labor in time. Oh no! <laughs> Alright, Dreadquakes. If you could hit that, that would be lovely. Okay, we actually have some fresh fish to try and shoot at that are approaching us. So the Knights Errant are coming this way, so we need to go defend this. Let's do this, let's do this. And uh, the Bull Centaurs doing an awesome job, but we need to detach them over this way. And Drazhoeth, uh, yeah, we could probably go after them. Looks like the Grail Knights got popped in the face. Oh, come on! Oh, not today, okay. Let's just see if we can obliterate some of the infantry. That's probably our best bet here. All right. Good job, Bull Centaurs. Let's uh, get you guys in and just have you pile in on these characters, which is going to be great. We'll move you guys here. And these are... This is this is where Drazhoeth is going to feast like the heathen kings of old. Yes. Go forth, my minions. Go forth and prosper. Okay, so Bull Centaurs. Where is he going? I'm not sure. Hitting some of these units. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. And then Draz Hoeth can move in and use his uh, Flames of Asgore uh, right here. That's going to just basically karate chop those units. All right, Chaos Dwarf up on the point. Up on the point. Flames of Asgore there should melt those cavalry. Oh, no, my Dreadquake. It's in danger. Support your Dreadquake, brother. Come on, Draz Hoeth. It must not fall this day. All right, let's get some guns coming out. Ooh, nice chalice of potions there, but his characters are taking quite a bit of damage from those, uh, all those anti-large chaos dwarves. Okay, come on, give us the close range support. Big Daddy Draz Hoeth going for the W. Orc laborers, chaos dwarf warriors, obviously winning their fight, and uh, you can see the paladin goon squad is getting taken down. Oh yes, fire the close range shots. Fire everything! <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that. That's the stuff right there. That's that's what dreams are made of. You know that, that old um, Van Halen song where he's, like, talking about what dreams are made of? That's, that's what it is right there. Oh, yeah, dude. Just keep obliterating them. Just, just, just the fury of Hashit knows no bounds. Okay, so the Fane Chantress and company not having a great fight here. A little bit surrounded. I think it's Dreadquake in time on the Defenders of Flair de Lee. Move you guys up. Oh, that was a good shot right there. Okay, Draz Hoeth is going to go in and get a Breath Attack on the Fane Chantress. And then he's going to go in with the Graven Scepter. Oh! <laughs> Let's go, baby. Let's get the finish. Okay. He's going to definitely get the Fae here. You think your Knights will save you? Well, they will certainly die here, most likely. Okay, let's do that. Move you guys up. We got this point unlocked. The Flames of Asgore once again just ripping through those units. And uh, that's pretty much GG at this point. All right. Hmm. Let's go get that Grail Relic. Let's move you guys up here. 
The Dreadquake Mortars continue raining tyranny on the lands. Let's actually go after his artillery and see if we can shut them down. While also catching some units. Come on, Drazoeth. Let's unsummon these guys, get them back in the pool. And you guys can just hang here. We'll take the laborers, move them over. Need to chase the Enchantress down for sure. Dude, what a terror he's been this game. It's been a menace. All right, so what do we have in summon sets? Kind of cool. Yeah, probably just more gun halberds. Those are going to be the way. The blessed 69 models. Okay, so Dreadquakes have used all their ammo now, which means we could just try and unsummon them and get like a huge influx of money. And Drazhoeth is actually kind of losing this fight. Is there like some weird bug or something? He's uh, he was kind of having a little bit of a hard time there, wasn't he? All right, my opponent taps out. All right, guys. What do we think we got on the value on the Dreadquake Mortars? I can't believe we, we got that, but um, there were some things about his build that was good for us. Like the fact that he invested in artillery means he didn't really have like the width to pressure the Dreadquakes. Dude, Drashoth is gonna get picked. When they nerf how stupid Foghorn Leghorn is, you're gonna see Drashoth getting picked in games. He's really not bad. He's a great fighter. Um, yeah. GG, well played, brother. All right. So Drazhoth got 3,000 value. I mean, he was just crushing things with his magic and with his big bull. Um, 1,400 here. Dreadquake. All right, guys. So what do you guys think the Dreadquake got? Both of them. You can see the kills. Uh, guns did good. Bull Centaurs did good. They're obviously pretty OP. You know, so it is what it is. Okay, so let's put a poll up. Dreadquakes. Pay for themselves. Paid for, not paid for. All right. Overseers, uh, they're probably one of the weaker choices for Chaos Dwarves. Fidel, been a fan for a long time and it's fun to get more involved in multiplayer. Yeah, you're a great player too. That was a really good game we had. Dude, Drashoeth is so cool. All right, I'm seeing some, some good guesses in chat. Let's see what we got. It's Dreadquake in time. Def, you guys don't think it did? Okay. Okay. It seems like most of you guys think. I should have said both, but yeah, anyways. Okay. So the vote more or less is we get we get the general idea. So most of you guys think they didn't. All right. So the first Dreadquake, 1,000 value, and the second one, 1,600. So yeah, you guys were correct. The thing is, there was not enough good units here. It was mostly crap units that I was shooting at, right? So, But they sent a message for sure. Drazhoeth carried that game hard, and the gun halberds are also very, very good there. So um, Okay. So we ended up, you know, 50% tonight, which isn't bad, you know, could have been worse. We, we could have, we were in every game we played at least. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay. So my opponent reported the score and, uh, we'll get ready for the, for the grand finals here soon. Super shy with the, I don't know how his tiebreaker is so decent. Who did he play against? He played against Kark and, uh, yeah, Kark did get the buy around there, I suppose. All right. All right. It's not about the value, it's about sending a message. Well, the thing is, you can unsummon the Dreadquakes too. But like, if you wanted an actual build against Bretonia, like Dreadquakes are actually really good against them. Like, no joke. Um, magma Cannons are better, but if Magma Cannons get nerfed, there could be a situation where you're like, oh, I'm bringing the Dreadquake. Um, but yeah, Magmas, as of now, are, are the best choice, right? Like, a really sweaty build would be like Triple Gun Halberd, Magma Cannon, and like Astrogoth, right? But um, if you wanted to go like more elite, you could totally do something like this, like double, um, where is the other gun halberd boys? There they are. You could have like an opening like this and just summon in some laborers and you know, you, then you have like a decent build, like a decent build. The Dreadquake is really, I've, I've had it win me games. I can't wait for Chaos Dwarfs to get like balanced and fixed a little bit because they're such a cool faction, but they're just like, it feels bad playing them just because they're so busted, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a shame. Did they win the match? Drazhoeth is what won the match. He was he was just his flames of Asgore was just annihilating everything basically. It's a, it's an insane spell. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but let me show you guys what that looks like here. <clears throat> uh, whoa! Why am I back in that lobby? That was weird. I went skirmish versus AI and it pulled me back in that game. Okay, so let's do this. Let's get the Kadai Destroyer here, and the AI can just have um you know. I don't know, let's get some Ogre Kingdoms and they can send in like uh, Tyrant and some like Monsters Cavalry or something. Yeah, Sky Striders is fine. It's a pretty insane spell. Yeah, the, the Chaos Dwarfs definitely... 
I don't know how like someone like Astrogoth could slip through like testing. Even if the game, the argument being made is like, yeah, it's for a campaign. This is a campaign game. Like, I don't know how somebody could look at him and look at his stats and his mass and his strength and like his, his damage and just be like, yeah, he's like fair, you know, he's like, cause you know, campaign is still trying to be a balanced experience or somewhat in some regard, right? The units at least, maybe not the tech and whatnot, but. Sun Tzu once said, it's not about the value of a unit. It's about the explosions being rad as hell. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you know, karate chopping the peasants certainly carries some weight. You know, you get to uh, get all the objectives, <clears throat> which is cool. Yeah, I don't know, like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I've often had, like, power fantasies about being more involved with that stuff, like, reaching out to CA and being like, hey, like, could I help you guys on a more professional level with <clears throat> bouncing things for multiplayer? But then it's like, it's a time commitment. They probably wouldn't pay me for it. You know, it's like, <clears throat> yeah, maybe some conflict of interest. I don't know. It's just like, oh, hold on. So the old destroyer is going to flee the scene. Yeah, no, it's, it's ridiculous. Astrogoth is, like, <clears throat> so superior to other characters. Draz Hoeth is, is the coolest character on the Chaos Stores. And his tabletop model is also really cool. I don't know if I need to overcast this, actually. Let's actually try the non-overcasted variant. Sky Striders would normally dominate a Kadai Destroyer, right? It's like a pretty one-sided little fight. But we can pop this. So you can see Flames of Asgore. Yeah, look at that damage. That's so good. So that spell, it wasn't even overcasted, right? So you can see like the, um, the Sky Striders just got absolutely dunked on by that. And then Draz Hoeth comes in and... So this spell, Flames of Asgore, is just so crazy good. Like, it works against monstrous units. Um, it basically works against, like, everything. Draz Hoth, Graven Scepter. He has some weird attack animations. But 700 weapon strength, charge bonus of 80. You know, he's pretty jacked in the stat department for sure. Um, you can also do Ash Storm. This gives fire weakness. So, like, you could cast this in an area, area and um, it'll give Draz Hoth another 20% damage, which is, like, another 100 weapon strength. Astrogoth stomps Queek 1v1. Yeah, of course he does. Astrogoth stomps, like, can beat Carl Franz in a duel with, like, all of his items and shit. It's, like, it, it's just dumb. It's really dumb. So that spell is really good against cavalry. It's it's basically good against everything. Um, so I, I definitely, like, if you guys are looking to party a little bit multiplayer, I, I highly recommend that. What is your opinion on leadership and or armor? Yeah, could I need, like, 10 armor and 10 leadership, and then they'll be playable. And if bull centaurs were less OP... You would see Kadai Fireborn maybe being used more um, to fulfill that niche of like mass for Chaos Dwarves, but with the nature of the beast, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a it's too much. Two games finishing. Um, it looks like the finals. We got House Cat of War, Shaper of Fate, the Blood Penguin, and um, we have a match basically which will decide the fate here. Super Ties got how many points? Do we really not have anybody who's undefeated. Oh, there's a game being played played for the undefeated right now. Okay. And Subutai is playing his match as well. Bale Tauruses are really good monsters, though. I mean, they're 1,800 gold. They're not, like, cheap. Um, so you saw Flames of Asgoro, right? So if you get, like, a Bretonian Cav unit, for example. This is, like, what was going on in that game. Oh, and you guys want to see what's funny about Bull Centaurs? Watch this. I don't know if I've ever, like, showed this on stream, really. All right, so let's get you guys. Let's get the Empire, for example. All right. Let me get the Empire and just get a great cannon. So cannons are theoretically, like, should be an answer against, like, Bull Centaur type units, right? 100%. But, alas, they are not. All right, so let's get you. Let's get you here. And I'll show you guys how, like, their hitboxing works. It's, like, they're so buggy and stupid, man. I'm, like, borderline tempted to ban Chaos Dwarfs from these events. But, um, I don't know. It's, like, you can still beat them, but it's just they don't literally have any bad matchups except, except Skaven. Like, nothing, nothing else is bad. Like, you have to massively outplay your opponent. Yeah, so we'll see, man. We'll see. Hopefully it won't take too long. Yeah, they could They could do... They could, yeah, in campaign, StarCraft 2 does that. But, you know, Blizzard, in theory, is going to have a much more heavy focus on multiplayer compared to, like, Creative Assembly, right? Okay, here it comes. So the Crossroads. So this is the Bull Centaur hitbox. Uh oh a little bit of lag there. Yeah, renders have crazy good health, but it's not just that. It's their hitbox is bugged. So, like, if I could shoot them while they approach, I would definitely be much happier about that in a number of matchups. Like, with dwarves, if my cannons were hitting them and killing models, I'd be like, oh, this is great. But, um... All right, so, yeah, we should be in range of the cannon here. So, you're going to see the cannon is going to shoot at the bull centaurs. And uh, it's, it's basically... You see, it shoots over their head. 
See, so that shot went over. It went over their head, went over their head again. So that's three cannon shots and it hasn't even killed a single model yet. And they're standing perfectly still. Ready for some more cannon shots? So I sure am. Okay, they finally managed to kill a model after four cannon volleys against an immobile unit. So we need to kill this Lord again to just get the testing to be a little bit more appropriate. All right, let's just do all the buffs here. Sadly, I'm testing with the AI, so it's not going to be uh, not going to be the best. But look how look how quickly like Drazoth can kill shit. It's pretty savage. <laughs> he's like a he's a pretty powerful little duelist. All right, so let's run you back and do a little bit more testing. All right, so cannon's going to start shooting. So yeah, you scourge under chariots. Anything that isn't like a close range gun unit is just straight up going to miss. I don't know why the cannon's not shooting here. You have to literally run Drazoth to the back of the map. The AI is so dumb sometimes. Okay, let's pull back. Is the cannon like chasing Drazoth? Like, why is it not shooting? It's it's it has something in range. Come on, come on. Do I have to like literally just run Drazoth? I can't retreat him off. The, can I? Okay, there we go. All right, there you go, cannon. So let's run to the edge. There we go. Now we can resume our testing. All right, so the great cannon's still shooting. We're on fast forward, so we could just sit here for a minute. Oh yeah, Drazoth is very much like a combat character. He's he's very savage at fighting. And yeah, they, they wavered because of leadership, but like that was like eight cannon shots and it killed one. Their hitbox is bro is bugged, so it's it's really dumb. Um it's it among that other th things with Chaos Dwarfs. It's really them like if you fix Bull Centaurs, you fix Astrogoth, and then you fix the um the um what's it called? the Magma Cannons, then Chaos Orbs are probably going to be fine. They'll be a very fun faction that has their strengths, they have their weaknesses, and, you know. And we'll uh, we'll see what happens. All right. Checking here. So, looks like there's one game to go. House Cat of War is undefeated. Um, Subutai is most likely going to qualify, although there are several players with a pretty good little tiebreaker here. Zabber, I think, is in there, but he's only got two, so I don't think he's going to qualify. Who did he lose to? Yeah, he won that, 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 and then lost his last game there against the Shaper of Fate. All right, so we're very close. House Cat of War is number one. Subutai would be number two. Shaper of Fate, and then Blood Penguin. So we basically... Well, could Catholic, all, Catholic could still qualify, actually. Depends on the tiebreaker uh, he gets here. So we'll have to see when this updates, when the score gets reported and everything. And Sleepy Lion, I think, also has two wins. So Sleepy Lion actually could could get in there. Yeah, so we have to wait for this last match to finish. Check it out, guys. By the way, on Total Tavern, we have an auto calculator now. So it, it calculates the strength of schedule of your opponents, and um, and it also uh, it'll it'll do it for us. So then we click this button, advance the top four, and it takes us to the top four. So yeah, it's it's so much better now. It's so much better. Oh my god, it's it's a night and day. So the Overseer, um, let's look at him. So the Overseer has this like gemstone thing, which like a unit of yours loses all of its melee attack, but becomes invulnerable for 13 seconds. So like I can see like an Overseer, I don't know, maybe on like a Great Taurus, just like a cheap one with this. And you would use it on what? What would you use that on? An artillery duel is, is, the, is, the, is the answer. So you would have like, a range unit which is exchanging fire with somebody or like a cannon duel that you're trying to win. Um, even still, like, I don't know why you'd ever bring him because Zaytan is pretty good. He's basically an overseer with a net, right? And an AOE leadership debuff. So like, you'd probably always bring Zoltan because Zoltan's only 200 more than the overseer with his the same mount. He's got better stats and, um, and yeah, well, I think the, the stat line would be pretty similar on the grid. Yeah, he's got better stats and um, he has a net and a leadership debuff. <laughs> yeah, under golf rules, yes. Of course, Fidel, of course. Okay, so checking this. Still waiting on the score to be reported. We have a little bit of time. And uh, we'll be casting the semis, so we'll find a semi game to cast. And then the grand finals will be a standard best of three. So we'll see who's going to be trying to take the W tonight. Hmm. That's minus 100 melee attack, but it makes them invulnerable. So if you put it on a gun unit, they don't really care, right? They're immune to damage. Um, or if you're like, you have a magma cannon that's being shot by enemy cannons, you can drop that on them and then they won't have to worry about like the artillery duel, right? Yeah, so it's something. Lamasu could probably use, it's okay. The Lamasu is actually 
pretty decent um, in some matchups because it's it has really good defensive stats. So the Lamasu has 44 melee defense, whereas the Bale Taurus or the Great Taurus only has 28. Um, the spells also aren't bad. Like I've had matchups. The problem is like Chaos Dwarfs have a lot of units that could be viable, but um, there's so many so much broken OP shit on their roster that like you just never get to see them because there's no point in tournaments to playing suboptimally, right? Um, also, the demon trains are really bad. Like, what the hell is the point of a Skullcracker? The Skullcracker has the exact same stat line as the Iron Demon without a gun. And it basically costs, like, around the same. It's, like, the weirdest thing. It costs more, as a matter of fact. Which is just silly. Um, so, Skullcrackers need to be buffed. Like, all the de all the trains need, like, some serious love. Like, they're just so clunky and weird. And they don't shoot. And they're just like, oh, man. The gun units in this game just need some milk, man. They need some, it needs some serious milk. All right, what do we got here? Was it ready? Checking the scores and nope, they're still playing. Same old usual suspects. Our game was over pretty quick. So understandably, we have a little bit of downtime right now. So it doesn't, you're asking about how the Overseer buff would help in a ranged fight. It lowers your melee attack by 100%, okay? But it makes that unit invulnerable to damage. So you cast it on your ranged unit, which is taking enemy fire, being uh, you know shot at by cannons, catapults, whatever. And they're 100% immune to damage, but they can keep shooting because the melee attack has no relevance to their shooting. Now, you could use this as a debuff on an enemy unit to lower their melee attack so they can't really hit you. But then they become inv invulnerable for 13 seconds. So I think more the direction is this being used defensively. Yeah. Hey, Miller. Yeah, the, the algorithm knows what you want, huh? So I want artillery on a... Yeah, there's some there's some neat stuff. Yeah, the war machines... The demons are okay. Like, Kadai have some niche applications against, like, some of the demonic units, right? So, like, if you whip out, like, a, a Kadai Fireborn, let's get a demon smith in here, and uh, let's throw it on a Bale Taurus, whatever, right? And then you, you're up against, like, let's say... Slanesh comes in, and uh, they're going to be rocking a like super heavy elite demon infantry, right? Like this is where the Kadai can potentially shine. Let's uh, test this out. Let's do a little bit of messing around here while we wait for the last round. Yeah, fun tournament tonight, though. Played a little bit sloppy in the beginning, but you know it happens, man. It happens. It happens to the best of us. All right, so we're going to test this out. Kadai, like when I first got my hands on Chaos Dwarfs in the um, in the early build. I, I had some games where they were able to win against like demon factions. Like when I was playing against Korn and Slanesh and Nurgle. Nurgle especially, I found them to be very good because of the fire damage and the magic damage. And the fact that Nurgle doesn't do a lot of damage really allowed the Kadai to like grind you down in that matchup. Zartan waits for Cobra Commander to give orders. Zoltan has some pretty cool mustaches for sure. Got, they got some serious work going on. Yeah, Storfs definitely need some dental work. They've got They've got some issues. Yeah, they do take a lot of damage is, is the problem for sure. But I mean, the amount of like punch that they can pack, the, the problem is when they crumble, right? That's that's where it gets real ugly, so. All right, let's do this and get you guys moving up. Oh, did I bring, shit, did I bring the healing guy? Okay, I did. What does this item do? The scepter of uh, decreases cooldowns. That's kind of cool. So you could like decrease the cooldown on, uh, on Reforge, I suppose. But you'll see a lot of shock damage coming in when these fire, fire people jump on the exalted demonettes. We'll do this, and uh, yeah, and you'll see. Here it comes. So they get in, and look at that. Look, look at the damage the Fireborn did on the charge. Like that is super cost effective, and brutal. They've already gotten 700 value, one second into fighting a demon unit, or lightly armored infantry unit. The demon unit gives it an extra 20% damage, right? So this alone is like super good, right? And then you can you know reforge them. And uh, if you just follow it up with like a Spirit Leech, for example, that unit's probably gonna die pretty quick, right? But again, the Kadai are a little bit squishy, but you could see how they have their niche applications. Like, look at that. That's really, really cost-effective. Uh, I mean, they are a 1500 gold unit, but they basically just tore through a lot more than that. Um, 1400 plus 800, so 23. And you can see the Kadai are also pretty good at killing foot-based characters. Like they're able to wear down its Slanesh Lord, granted he doesn't have all of his buffs and different things like that. But like, could I have their applications? Um, but again, they're just so overshadowed by bull centaurs, which are just so much more durable. 
but yeah, they're they're that like that was really good. That was really good. I think there could be some like Kadai reforging type builds um, in the future when things get a little bit better for sure. So, all right, so refreshing here. Let's check it out and see if this is reported. They're still doing it, man. They're still going. All right, let me make sure they're not having any issues. I don't think they are. Okay, so we got just another minute here. We can hang out. For magma cannon, should they reduce the burn damage? They should reduce the range and maybe accuracy. Yeah, because magma cannon's range is too good. In tabletop, magma cannons have um, have half the range of a great cannon, which I don't know. Like normally, Creative Assembly tries to follow you know Games Workshop's template of units, right? But they're just like with magma cannons, they're like screw it, give it the same range as a cannon. In tabletop, magma cannons are like a short range shock artillery piece. They're not like a long range cross map artillery, just like Punisher, right? It, it, it just doesn't make sense. Like you look at the Dwarven Flame Cannon, which is just such a huge piece of shit. Where is that? This thing costs 1200 and it's just is so terrible. It has 230 range. Like, why would you like, you, it's like, it's just the weirdest thing ever. It's just so weird. Yeah. Understandably, the Chaos Dwarf should be better at things than other factions. Like maybe their artillery should be better than the Dowie since the Dwarves have, you know, better infantry quality and whatnot. But um, yeah, this is like a pretty glaring comparison. Yeah, it's 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 pretty wild. Okay, so checking here, are they about ready? Yeah, there's could I, I had some I had some success with them before. They're not they're not the worst. All right, so it looks like that is all done and the die is cast. So who is in our top four here? Gonna refresh it. So it looks like it's going to be. Yeah, it looks like the Poor Catholic al alcoholic didn't have the best tiebreakers, did he? Yeah, he had some. He had some tough ones there. Let me see. Check that. So I'm just like making sure the website's doing it right. So you got to buy around there. Yeah, which is only going to count for one there. All right. So we have our top four, ladies and gentlemen. So now we click the button, which is going to be advanced to the top four, which is so cool that we have that now. And uh, we should have another tournament in just a second. Uh oh. Did did something get a little bit funky? All right. I think one of the players messed with the brackets and um, one of my fellow admins, and I think it it screwed it up a little bit. So let me see if I can fix that. And it, regardless, I know who the top four is, so it should be uh, it should be fine. Okay. So checking this, I think I know what it was. So finding this, finding this, I think it was this match. So let me go fix that. And yeah, when it logs, it, it, sometimes it auto logs me out when I'm trying to do it, and it's usually how I know somebody messed with the brackets. Yeah, flame flame cannons like if flame cannons should definitely do more damage than magma cannons because they have less range and they they yeah but magma cannons are just so dirty. Probably gonna see some of that going on here. All right, so checking the match. Regardless, we have our top four and uh, we can we can at least the the strength of schedule calculator is working fine. The flame cannon is like why why would you want a flame cannon though when you could just take like an organ gun? I guess arc of fire is is something right. Yeah, the arc of fire is something to consider. Okay, so fixing that. Outstanding. Yeah, so he forgot to click on the bide thing, and I think that's what screwed it up. Let's see if this fixed it. And uh, I don't think it made the top four thing. Let me check. Nope, not yet. All right. Pone, yeah, Pone was trying to put himself in the top four. Yeah, the villain. Up to no good in the neighborhood. Okay. Yep, saved. So looks good. So let's try and see if it works this time now that I fixed that little error. And advance the top four. Come on, give it to me, Precious. Oh, log me out again. Okay. So I wonder what happened with that. Let's see. So yeah, he dropped, but I told him not to drop before both scores are reported. So I added him back to report the score and then adjust my Swiss points to only be two. So I think when people adjust, I think when... People adjust the stuff. It messes up the top four advance. Regardless, we have tiebreaker. All right, so let's go ahead and get this going. So taking a look at the current seeds. Let's do this. And assign the players their matches. And I'll, I'll talk to my dev tomorrow and I'll play around with it tonight and see if I could fix it. All right. So it is going to be... House Cat of War versus uh, Blood Penguin. And then we have Subutai versus uh, Shaper of Fate. 
Go ahead and play. Good luck, have fun. Spec slots, please. I will cast one of these. All right, so let's see what the matchups are. So Subutai, I think, is playing Chaos Dwarfs in his uh, business. Let's see. So he's playing Chaos Dwarfs against um, Shaper of Fate, who is playing... Let's see what Shaper of Fate's going to be playing. All right, where are you? Oh, Greenskins. Okay, I'd actually be interested in seeing a Greenskin versus Chaos Dwarf matchup. That sounds like a lot of fun. So I will tell Subutai. Hi, spec slot. It's no P. I got these scores. Anyways. All right. So we are good to party. Thoric is a great, he's a really good character. I mean, map-wide buffs for slow factions are very impactful, right? All right, so Subutai will send that. And uh, he'll open up a spec slot, and then we should be good to go in just a minute for the uh, for the top four here. Let me get the score scorecards all up to date. Get them up on the board. Thank you guys for joining tonight. Three, four. Yes, yes. This is from our recent grand finals. I got to the grand finals last time, but I did lose to the dreaded platypus. It was a good series. Um, so this is going to be Subutai versus the Shaper of Fate. Shaper of Fates. So Greenskins versus Chaos Dwarves. Pretty fun. Okay, there we go. So I read that turn is a website. On yeah, we were trying. We're trying, Carrot, you know. Like, it's pretty funny. Like, we still just don't have working leaderboards. Like, even this game has been out for, like, over a year, and the ranked leaderboards are still just broken. <laughs> it's just, like, these are all broken scores. 32,000, okay? It's just all, bro all this is broken. None of this works. There's a guy with one win who's ranked number, like, it's like, dude, come on. <laughs> At least pretend like you care a little bit. Give us, Give us some scraps, you know? Oh my god, it's so bad. Like, so we had to take it into our own hands, you know. All right. So Subutai has made the lobby. Let me see if I can find that. Um, I suspect it's this one. I suspect it is that one. All right. So, here we are in the top four, ladies and gentlemen. Shaper of Fate is definitely a Zinch Enjoyer, at least at least in, in name. I, I know they're playing Greenskins in this match, though, which is going to be fun. I, Greenskins versus Chaos Dwarfs is a matchup I've been wanting to see. This is best of one, though. So um, this is best of one, and then the Grand Finals are best of three. So yeah, so they, they'll do their thing there. All right, checking it out. Uh, where are we going here? Let's see here. He's messaging me. At 8.35. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are in for a treat. You're in for a treat right here. There's, there's going to be some funny, funny shenanigans going on here. I can assure you. Shaper's name is floating off the screen. Yeah, no, it's, it's very fitting. It's very lore, very lore friendly. <laughs> Suicide sent me a pretty funny message. Uh, so the Chaos Storms are like such a villainous faction. Like they're so villainous. The people who play them and the and the uh, and they themselves. Yeah. However, you how you spell that? Yeah, very zinchy. Yeah, spelling zinch. Spelling zinch itself is already a very tricky one. All right. So let me see if I can figure out what's going on with this. So Kark got a buy round here. So let's see if I can just, yeah, so he, he buy it and then then it was a drop. Okay, so that should be fixed. That should be fixed also. This, something's going on over here. Okay, so that's what happened. Somebody matched people up over there instead. All right, so somebody, another admin was trying to help me but messed with the brackets and then it, uh, it, it wasn't what I was talking about with Subutai. Hey, it's fine. We can give the tournament win regardless. Okay, cool. So checking it out. So this tournament will be finalized. So let's finalize this one. Yes and yes. Let's see if it logs me out of that. Hopefully it doesn't. Nope, that works. And maybe it'll let me advance to the top four now. Let's see. Now that it's been finalized. I don't know. Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay. Hey, DS, thank you. Love watching your Warhammer content. Glad to hear it. Um, tomorrow... I was going to stream tomorrow, but my landlords are 
storming the house tomorrow because they, we had a, one of our, our air conditioning like broke down and it's super hot. So they're coming to fix it. Um, I don't know if I'll be streaming. It might be some noise in the house, but, um, regardless, we will see. We will see. Thank you so much for the donation. I greatly appreciate it. And now it's time for Du Bois. Du Bois are back in town, ladies and gentlemen. We do have some bounties for the greenskins. I think there's a, a couple. That, I think there's, do I have a squig one? Like a full squig army? I know there's, there's something. We still haven't added the chaos dwarf bounties either. I need to, I need to get those rolling, man. The old chaos dowie. What would we bounty? It's probably just winning with their bad units. So winning with like the demon engines, like the skull crackers and those things would be the bounties. Probably wouldn't be too hard, honestly. The Chaos Dwarfs have such good... You could probably just go mass bull center renders with like the skull crackers and then suddenly you're just cackling all the way to the bank, right? Love seeing a green skin match. So much fun to watch. Yeah, they are really fun. That's that's why I chose the Cassus one is because we had the green skins here. Yeah, it's it's very fun. It's very fun indeed. What is that? What is that badge there? It's okay, just making sure. A little bit of lag on the website. It's all good. And perfect. And he's got the village icon. Somebody on the website unlocked village. That's a lot of Zinch reps. Although Zinch has been around for a while. They've been good for a long time. I mean, they're not so good now, but like Zinch in like Warhammer 3 launch was a very, very powerful faction. I can't remember when we added the avatars to the website though. I think it was a, a little ways after launch. We've certainly come a long way. So Road to Talibheim is the map. It's fairly open. Certainly going to be good for Chaos Storms. Granted, um, I think you could use... I always felt Doom Divers had the potential to be good in this matchup, but the fact that they get outranged by Magmas just makes them kind of bad because Magmas just like kill them in like two shots. Two could die destroy. I think the double Dreadquake should be a bounty. Like double Dreadquake Mortar and... Um, but it has to be a semi-final or final match. You can't just win like anywhere in the tournament, right? Yeah, I think it would have to be uh, later on. I think Greenskins are doing pretty good now in general. Let's uh, Let's go ahead and double check. Oh, well, I guess we're about to start, so. Showtime, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get this party started. Let's have some fun. All right, so I have been notified by the Greenskin player that he is going for the Savage Orc bounty. So uh, our Greenskin champion, Shaper of Fate, is going for the Savage Orc bounty. He has a full Savage Orc army. Um, I, did, I did say to him, he asked me, and I did say he could bring the big bosses. It's close enough. So his entire army is Savage Orcs and two Goblin big bosses. Everything is savage, baby. It's got to be great. Now, we do have the Immortals on the other side. Kind of a cool tech from uh, Super Chai. I wonder what... Yeah, honestly, Immortals are really good at killing mass amounts of infantry. Super, super meaty. They crush Black Orcs and uh, can honestly defeat all the Greenskin infantry. So uh, having those guys uh, makes sense. He's got Hashet Stark Ravagers, which obviously is there to deal with infantry as well. And uh, yeah, it is fun. It is going to be fun. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the battle. Looking at the Orc army, he is going. Yes, if you guys are channel members, there is a Savage Orc emoji that we just added. The boys are back in town. It is mass Savage Orcs into the sunset, backed up by Orc Air Boys. Double Goblin Big Boss, who they're looking pretty savage as well. And then we do have Wurzag. Wurzag has Foot of Gork and the Gazem Orc. Foot of Gork isn't bad at stomping out like elite Chaos Orc infantry, like Infernal Iron Sworn. And uh, he does have all the good items, like the map white buff. So on the other side here, we do have the forces of Hashit. It is going to be Subutai. Subutai with the Sorcerer Prophet of Death. Spirit Leech Bam on Wurzag is incredibly cost-effective. And honestly, he could probably get in there and kill Wurzag in combat pretty easily. We do also have uh, Chaos Dwarf Warriors into the sunset with a Labor in Force. And uh, Hashit Stark Ravagers and the Immortals. A very elite army here for Subutai. These things are monsters. Granted, I would say Hashit Stark Ravagers would not want to be fighting Savage Orc Biggins if they could avoid it, but even still, they hit super hard, so the Dark Ravagers, definitely, definitely not bad. Now, in the tree line, we have the Immortals. The Immortals are the ROR uh, Infernal Iron Sworn, and these guys definitely have good killing power against the Greenskins. Uh, a lot of infantry, and you, Squigs are the counter to them. Like, if the Greenskin player is going to be bringing Squigs, that would be fine. Although, uh, hopefully he knows that the bounty does allow for Squigs. Because uh, without Squigs, I feel like this is going to be super hard to deal with this armor. Man, I, I do hope he brought some squigs. Otherwise, this could just be very one-sided. Well, Goblin's moving up from the trees. Wurzag popping out. And on the other side, we got the Goblin Big Boss. He's going for the deep gooning attempt. So this guy, if you guys are wondering what Secret Agent Goblin's up to, he's basically just riding around the back of the army. And he's going to wait for a Magma Cannon to pop out. And he's just going to go for it. So he's a valiant explorer of time and space. He will uh, he will find his prize, I'm sure. 
Looks like Ashes Stark Ravager is maybe on the hunt. I'm going to be trying to look for him and make sure he doesn't get too crazy. And uh, the Greenskin Horde just going to be chilling in the trees initially until the objectives open up. Obviously, you don't want to be getting Spirit Leech by that Sorcerer Prophet. Um, you could see an Effigy of the Git followed up by a bunch of... Uh, okay, so he does use Effigy. And then, oh, he's actually in range already. And then the arrows come out and, you know, 70 armor. But even still, the bull character will take a couple hundred damage. Not bad. You know, this guy does have access to some healing, if I'm not mistaken. Did he bring the stone? Looks like he didn't. No, he does have the Vial of Hashet, but he doesn't have the healing item. Okay, so any damage you get on that character certainly isn't bad. So he does kind of keep him back. <laughs> Crump the Chorps. Yeah. I love it, man. Yeah, he's going to need some squigs, though. Or, uh, otherwise, he's going to be in big danger. Granted, he could use Savage Orc Boar Boys, which do a hell of a lot of damage, too. So that certainly is on the table. So what's really cool about this bounty, guys, is that this bounty has probably one of the coolest avatars in all, all of Total Tavern. You get Macho Man Randy Savage as your picture. So um, that would, you just straight up get Macho Man Randy Savage. That's it. Like, you know, I don't know. Maybe with a little bit of an, a green skin embellishment on him, but pretty straightforward. So now we get the OP Magma Cannon coming out, which is just going to obliterate green skin infantry. And uh, Savage Orcs aren't terribly expensive, but even still, you know, those shots are going to be adding up over time. Green skin's moving up on objective number one, looking at the value. It's, uh, you know, not gotten there yet, but look at the Goblin Big Boss. Yeah, you, the Hashed Star Gravagers. Talk about a win, right, for Shaper of Fate. If you have the Hashed Stark Ravagers, like, guarding against one Goblin Big Boss, that's a pretty nice little tech. And look at that. They put the moves on it. Dude, he juked the hell out of those guys. And Supatai does have 1,500 gold in the bank. So he's probably going to summon out another Bull Central Render. Uh, but if Bull Central Renders are not involved in combat and they're chasing down Goblin Big Bosses, that's going to be turbo cost effective. So the Big Boss actually gets in there and gets some work done. The other big boss is going to be trying to juke, but at the end of the day, the big bosses are going to get killed by these bull centaurs. So probably your best bet is simply just to run and try and get away. So moving on up, we have the Savage Orc Hordes. Wurzag is nearby, and uh, there are going to be some Savage Orc Air Boys coming out. So the full Savage Army going to be trying to pop down the Goblin Laborers. I honestly think they should engage, but yeah, the, the Goblin Big Boss Gambit in the back was, was sniffed out pretty quickly here. And it looks like both the big bosses are going to be getting crushed by the bull centaurs and... Uh, at the end, yeah, it's not going to be great for them. Savage Orcs against the uh, Immortals. Talk about a one-sided fight. The Immortals are just going to absolutely obliterate these Savage Orcs. So here they come. Savage Orcs move in. And uh, yeah, that is going to be very, very bad. <laughs> Savage Orcs are certainly going to be subjugated here by the Immortals. As you can see, just a super, super one-sided fight. But the rest of the fights are on. And Wurzag, has he popped the Bonewood Staff yet? We do not see Wurzag emer emerging from the trees. And now he has come out. Squig Herds are coming. That is really what you need. Squig Herds stacked with Savage Orcs isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. And we do see some Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins coming out. So he's going all in on the Savage Man. So here comes the Macho Man Randy Savage build as those Savage Orcs are looking for a fight. Granted, Bull Centaurs will crush them in combat. I mean, the Savage Orcs might be able to return the favor a little bit, but um, it's not going to be a pretty one. So where's Ag with the Foot of Gork? Oh man, that could do some work. Here it comes. Nice Foot of Gork there. It does obliterate the rest of the Savage Orcs, but also brings the Immortals down to... Uh, a far lower amount of health, and Wurzag gets a little bit too close in combat there. He's going to want to pull back as Hashed Stark Ravagers are looking for a fight. Shaper Fate going to be trying to pull back this way, avoiding the Bull Centaurs. They are faster. They have 70 speed. And now we see the big Bull character coming in. The Bulls are on Parade. Vile of Hashed going down, which is going to be lowering the uh, resist. Spirit Leech, Waz active, but Wurzag is probably going to die here. He really overextended. There wasn't too much of a point in sending men, but at the end of the day, you know, it did happen. And it looks like he just barely gets away. So Wurzag might stabilize. That's very, very fortunate. A lot of good archer fire coming in from the Savage Orcs. They are uh, getting some good Dak in. And the Savage Orc boar boy Biggins do get the full surround on Hashed Stark Ravagers with the Squigs. And that's going to be pretty cost effective until the other Bull Centaurs arrive. And here they come. But look at those Savage Boys, man. Certainly doing uh, doing Gork and or Mork proud. So we did survive the Vile of Hashed attempt. Look at this. The Goblin Big Bosses are back, baby. They didn't hear no bell. Being super annoying. And uh, they are able to get some attacks on the Magma Cannons, which are mitigating the effectiveness of those cannons. This fight's looking a little bit dicey, though. Savage Orc Boar Boys do get some good value and put the Hashed Stark Ravagers down a bit of HP, but at the end of the day, they do get uh, they do get routed back. How much value did they get? About 600, so they almost paid for themselves. They're not a terribly expensive unit, but they didn't quite pay for themselves fighting the two big scary bull centaurs, right? Spirit Leech going down to Wurzag. Wurzag going to be fleeing the scene, but the Savage Orcs are doing a little bit of crumping in the middle. You actually see the Chaos Storm Warriors um, kind of losing some of these fights here, which is kind of interesting, as Wurzag is going to be fleeing across the battlefield. Magma Cannon trying to snipe Wurzag? I'm not sure. It looks like it might have been going for some of the archers over there. And uh, now the Savage Orc Air Boys are going to be getting attacked by Bull Centaurs as the Pig Cavalry do come back in and try and get a charge onto the Bull Centaur renders, but uh, it looks like they were juked a little bit. Now, Sorcerer up in the sky getting popped. Savage Orcs do take over on the middle in terms of the objective, but the value is looking much, much better for the Chaos Dwarves. 
obviously. Uh, and a lot of that value, though, is tied into Wurzag. And if Wurzag can survive somehow and still provide assistance and magic to the battlefield, there certainly is a chance that the Chaos Dwarfs could lose this game. But a lot of it's going to come down to Wurzag. If Shaper Fate loses Wurzag, that could just be game blouses. So Magma Cannon trying to kill some of the archers here. Obviously going to be very good against those units as it does some substantial damage over time. This could be a, a bait for the FG of the Git. Let's see if he has it. So Spirit Leech going down. Losing Wurzag is not an option though. If the Greenskins lose Wurzag, Savage Orcs are not a good leadership kind of playstyle. Uh, you're just going to be in terrible shape. So Savage Orcs up on the point and the objective does flip to the Greenskins on the far side. Uh, the archer shooting across and this objective looks firmly in the control of the Chaos Dwarves. Obviously they have Chaos Dwarf Warriors and the Immortals here. A lot of good quality units, but Savage Orc Poor Boy Biggins not trading terribly against some of the uh, Hashed Stark Ravagers, I believe, or Basic Bull Centaurs. Certainly not doing terribly. Um, you know, honestly, the Greenskins are trading pretty well on a lot of fronts. They do manage to flip a couple objectives. So the middle objective is flipped to them. We do see some unsummons coming down from the Chaos Dwarfs as this battle does rage on, and Wurzag is going to be hiding in the trees. So that's honestly what you do at this point. You just hide Wurzag in the trees and just cast spells to buff your army. Uh, with him dying and the leadership penalty you'd be taking, it would be really, really bad. Savage Orc's not doing bad, cutting through the Hobo Goblins. And we do see some Bull Centaurs coming in, but they are, they're are they the Great Weapon variant, so they're not going to be like that good at killing infantry. It's still not going to be terrible. And look at this tech from the Greenskin player. Using the Goblin Big Bosses to just perpetually pressure the Magma Cannons is pretty uh, pretty cool, actually. So Wurzag does get slapped with an Overcasted Spirit Leech. This is uh, where you need to unsummon Wurzag, because if he just straight up dies, he might come back. He's only got 200 HP, but I would imagine that Subutai is going to be very on top of that. We do see the Hashed Stark Ravagers hunting Wurzag which uh, you really are going to want to stabilize him. But yeah, throwing axes coming in. They do hit the trees. Wurzag is fleeing for the edge of the battlefield. That leadership penalty is going to be extremely, extremely punishing here. But Supersize Lord isn't, you know, a spring chicken either. He's taken a little bit of work. We do see Savage Orcs moving up and the Goblin Big Boss going for the Magma Cannon in the back. So there they go. And here comes the Goblin Big Boss, man. He's moving and a grooving. And that Magma Cannon probably going to be going down here as the uh, Big Lord of the Chaos Dwarf, 1700 HP. He's getting a little bit crazy here. Wurzag, does he come back? 1,300 HP? No, 13, no, only 200 HP. I read that wrong for sure. But uh, yeah, he's going to route off the battlefield. The Dark Ravager is probably going to be able to chase him down. Chaos Dwarf Lord is very beat up also. Um, this objective held here by the Greenskins. Savage Orc Biggins. So these are no regular Savage Orcs. These are Savage Orc Biggins who will actually fight very well against the monstrous units. We get more Savage Orcs making their way back to the Magma Cannon. Magma Cannon is fleeing the scene as uh, Savage Orc Biggins continue chasing. And if they can get the fight here, if these Savage Orcs can... Just grind against Bull Central Renders. We could definitely see a Greenskin comeback. Um, this objective here, currently flipping, but there's not much going on there. A couple Savage Orc Bork have here fighting against Bull Centaurs on the flank, and they'll do okay. They have pretty good stats and anti-large well, when their Frenzy's active, but Frenzy's going to be a little bit more precarious now that the objectives are in danger. But the Greenskins do have a double cap right here, and uh, man, this man is fighting tooth and nail to get that Macho Man Randy Savage Avatar. He wants it bad. This objective, though, is in serious danger. They're going to have to reinforce that somehow. Shaper of Fate did just spend his points Savage Orc Biggins moving into the backfield. Big Boss is broken once again, but uh, we do see the anti-large Savage Orc Biggins actually getting some okay damage, but they are fighting dual weapons. So these are Bull Centaur dual weapon boys, which will be very, very excellent at killing these infantry, but they do get a fair amount of damage. The Magma Cannon is back online, shooting into the middle or the archers in the deep back of the formation. A couple Haggard archers have returned as well. Somehow the Palpatine archers have returned and the Immortals, these Chaos Dwarf Infantry, man, they have been an absolute raid boss this entire game. Uh, Immortals up to 1,800 value. Pretty cool to see Elite Infantry pay for themselves. Greenskins are definitely a faction uh, in which you can do that. So Savage Orcs trying to hold here, and this is where Wurzag being off the battlefield is a big problem. The entire army is going to be taking negative 16 leadership, so these Savage Orcs would be actually pretty happy in leadership if Wurzag hadn't been broken off the battlefield. So that's a bit of a problem, but even still, the Savage Orcs are able to uh, break back those Orc laborers and hold on to that point. And the Greenskins are maintaining a double cap. It seems as if the Chaos Dwarfs are kind of struggling to get up on the objectives a little bit, being pushed back, but I don't think they're going to have too many problems now. Um, Magma Cannon has a little bit of ammo left. The Goblin Big Boss, is he going to return? Oh my god, he returned again. Shaper Fate does have his Goblin Big Boss back, and that thing could come in and maybe karate chop the, uh, the Magma Cannon. We'll have to see. Now, as far as the fighting goes in the backfield, we do have some more Squig Herds. Squigs are running over the Immortals, and this is finally going to be a pretty cost-effective fight here. So the Chaos Dwarfs going to be getting swarmed by the angry Mushroom people, and uh, they're doing all their somersaults, and their anti-infantry bonus and armor piercing certainly will pay huge dividends against those guys. This objective is owned by the Chaos Dwarfs, middle by the Greenskins, side by the Greenskins as well, but the Dwarfs are definitely going to flip this one back. we got Orc Laborers and a fairly healthy unit of Bull Centaur Renders coming up. And we do see the Sorcerer Prophet of Death uh, cruising about, going after the Goblin Big Bosses. This Goblin Big Boss tech has been really, really cool. But yeah, losing Wurzag is, is a tough one to come back from. Um, Greenskins are not a faction that can really afford to lose their lord. It's 
it's not the way. That's why you'll see a lot of the sweat masters just unsummon like a goblin and then bring in their actual lord to avoid that penalty, which like to me in spirit that feels like cheating, but it is part of the game. So uh, and it will be something that's going to be getting changed uh, soon. I'm I'm pretty sure it's been something I've been really really poking CA about, and there's been hints. So I do think that'll get changed in due time. But nonetheless, savage orcs on the way. More savage orcs going to be trying to fight up in the point, and uh, the magma cannon should just be running out of ammo here in a second. Look at the goblin big boss trolling, dude. These little goblin big bosses, they only cost like 400 gold or something. And I can't believe this magma cannon isn't broken yet. Yeah, it's setting at 15 leadership here. The Chaos Dwarf Lord also at 1400. We could see a Wurzag come back in. Are we going to see the dreaded Wurzag uh, resummon? We don't. We just see Savage Orcs coming out in droves. Back here, the Hashed Stark Ravager is being forced back by Savage Orc Biggins and uh, Squig Herds as well. Negative three leadership on those guys and Savage Orc Biggins in the trees. And look at that, the big boss flipping the objective back. Using his uh, three or four, I think he has three capture weight, but he's going to be trying to flip that back. Dude, the big bosses have just been such a meme this game. It's great. Savage Orcs here getting surrounded. Uh, Chaos Dwarf Warriors as well as Bull Centaurs. That's going to be pretty ugly. Savage Orcs will obviously dominate Orc Laborers pretty hard. They do have the 41 melee attack, so they're going to be able to kind of butcher through these uh, guys pretty quickly. Obviously, Orc Laborers not the best fighters in the world. More Savage Orcs on their way back in. Maybe should make their way to the objective, but, you know, the Greenskins are still pressing despite being kind of behind. They're scrapping on the objectives pretty well. We see Unsummons coming in on Hashed Stark Ravagers as double Bull Centaurs are out on the battlefield. The Magma Cannon is going to be running out of ammunition pretty damn soon. So this objective does flip. The side objective is in a little bit of danger of flipping, but ultimately the uh, Bull Centaurs are able to cover enough ground to cause problems. We got Squig Herds moving. Savage Orcs going to be moving up on the point, and the, that damn Magma Cannon probably has gotten some good value. I would wager probably sitting around how much? Probably like 2,000. Um, only 1,300. So it just now paid for itself, which, you know, it's been shooting the entire time, but it's still been occupying quite a bit of uh, the opponent's attention, right? This objective doesn't quite get flipped, actually. It looks like the Chaos Dwarf's able to kind of just get in there and salvage it at the last second as some Savage Orcs make their way up, but Bull Centaurs do have, I, th I think, four capture weight. We got a couple laborers moving. Savage Orcs uh, pressing this point, and yeah, just mad pressure all over the battlefield. And here we do see the Bale Taurus going to be dropping a fat Spirit Leech from downtown. Yes. No, but not Spirit Leech. Breath Attack, actually. Magma Shot does miss right there as the Savage Orcs move into the Bull Centaurs. Not quite able to wear through them quick enough. And I do think this is going to be a, uh, a victory for the Chaos Dwarf, right? The Chaos Dwarf build is extremely extremely sweaty and meta and very powerful. And the uh, Greenskin build was going for a bounty. So obviously he's going to be at a big disadvantage. But, you know, with Wurzag living, I can see an avenue through which this game is won by the um, Chaos Dwarf. Or, excuse me, by the Greenskins. Really, the Magma Cannon wasn't that disruptive. Bull Centaurs, of course, being obnoxious as usual, but um, but yeah, man, that was that was quite a match. That was quite a match. I don't think there's any coming back now. We see some Savage Orc Biggins who are grinding, but like he would need to get a, a triple cap at this point. So that's going to be it. GG well played. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all for now. Super is going to be advancing to the Grand Finals, and uh, Shaper of Fate almost getting the Macho Man Randy Savage bounty. It was a very good attempt on it. I really like the tech of like the cheap, annoying SEs. To go back and dive the um, backfield, it feels pretty fun. 924 value on you. And ye old uh, Savage Orcs, yes. They, they they did their best. It was a very Savage Army. I wonder how the, like, these guys did. Like the Savage Orc Cavalry. I, I guess they were summoned maybe once. And yeah, not too crazy. They're not the best units in the world. They're certainly not. That was fun. GG. Immortals were badass too. Those elite Chaos Dwarf infantry were quite good. Bull Center value, we got 1400 on these ones. And uh, let's see what the value looks like. 1500 1800 And yeah, not like crazy value, really. Uh, I'm telling you, a lot of that game just came down to Wurzag dying. Like the leadership on the Greenskin army folded like a piece of paper when he was gone. And there was no magic. Um, yeah, again, if Wurzag doesn't overextend and get gooned there, I think the Greenskins might have won that game. It was it was actually really good. That's going to be a victory for old Subutai. And he will advance on to the Grand Finals. Let's go ahead and see how we're looking on the other side. And uh, where's it going to be? All right, so checking and checking. Okay, so let's see who won on the other side here. Where art thou? Tournament chat. And we'll see who wins between the other two. House God of War and Blood Penguin. Let me know who wins. Subutai will host the lobby. A nice attempt at Macho Man Randy, uh, Randy Savage. It was a nice attempt at it. It really was. So the finals are going to be best of three now. And we will do TBD because we don't know who it's going to be. Reset the scores. Greenskins need a Savage Orc gen a generic general. Ah, I mean, Wurzag is kind of like, he's the go-to for the Savage Orcs for sure. 
I don't think like Greenskins are actually a pretty cool faction. They they've got some tricks. They've got some tricks and schemes. It's a faction that I want to start adding to my competitive repertoire. I feel like they're very fun. Slanesh is another one I want to start playing a lot too. Yeah, all the all the Chaos God factions are just so cool. Even Nurgle's like doing okay nowadays. Nurgle's got some tricks. Yeah, Giants are actually really decent against uh, against Chaos Dwarfs. Like uh, the Bull Centaurs can struggle to drag them down if they have a little bit of support into them. Double Giant has uh, been very effective against Magma Candidate, like anchoring a point, things like that. It really depends on the map, though. It really depends on the map. That map might have not been great for Giants because it's so open and the objectives are kind of like side by side. Well, like uh, like linear like that. Yeah. In the middle. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the Giants can do it. All right. So checking here. We don't have our winner yet and we have a little bit of time. We have a little bit of time before we get started. Yes, yes. Where's that only got one foot of Gork? Yeah. The overextension really hurt. Man, Shaper of Fate played really well aside from that. That was like his one blunder that cost him the game. He was so close to greatness. I mean, dude, having Macho Man Randy Savage as your avatar in Total Tavern, nothing can beat that. That's just like, that's like the, <laughs> that's the work of the gods. Yeah, that's the work of the gods. All right. Aces. Message Shubutai. He's got a lobby. All right, so House Cat of War was able to win. So it is going to be the House Cat of War versus Subutai. These guys are actually clan mates, so they, their forbidden tactics that they both know will be uh, hidden amongst one another. Okay. Check this. Perfect. And I'm going to see if I can find a way to get this to go. Okay, so what are we doing down here? Yeah, we had Kark and we had this. We had the buy round here. I don't know how this double buy round happened there. Like the two to be determines. Because we had a, oh, it's because one of the players dropped. That's right. Okay. So then did we have a drop here? Looks like Kark did drop out in the later round. So he clicked the drop button. And then maybe this one was something weird too. The cream of the crop, I know. Man, what an era that was, right? Like the early WWE, like like late 80s, early 90s, going into like the Attitude Era of wrestling and everything. That, God, what a, what a phenomenon that was. Granted, it's easy to say that because, you know, I lived it and that was kind of my experience. Whereas like, I'm, does anybody here actually like follow modern wrestling? Like, what is it like? You know, I'd be curious. What is, what is the deal with that? What is the deal? Okay, that that looks fine to me. So he's by there. He tried to drop in the previous round. And oh, so that's what did it. Okay. So he has that, he has that, and then he tried to drop there. So let me see if this appears as bide. Sorry guys, I'm doing a little bit of admin kind of detective work here on the website. <laughs> so much, yeah, so much so much drugs for sure. Like is it man, mod yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like what I've seen of modern wrestling, it doesn't seem like it holds up. And <laughs> dial up sound, nice, nice avatars there. It's the good stuff. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have the buy round there, so that looks like it's fine. I'll continue the detective work off the stream, I guess. I don't need to waste your guys' time with that. I'm not from the U.S. and I was obsessed with WWE. Yeah, there's a fair amount of people. Like, do you guys remember old Dogbert from Creative Assembly? He was the uh, so Dogbert was the original like person who interacted with total war YouTubers, like you uh, uh, from CA him and I, um, Dogbert and I basically, he's, he's the reason why like him and I, I met with him at uh, TwitchCon in like 2017. And we, we essentially created the ever chosen together from there. Um, Dogbert was like a huge catalyst for creative assembly being involved in, um, in the multiplayer at all. Like he, he really pushed for it. And was just really, really passionate about it. Like he made all those, all those cool ever chosens where we went to the UK and like had these big. He made all those happen, like really with just tooth and nail effort. But um, speaking of him, he was he was he's a diehard like WWE fan, like wrestler fan. Yeah, he, he was like, but and he you know grew up in the in the UK, so there, there certainly it had a big international appeal. 80s WWF was the age of greatness. Yeah, it was pretty pretty magical. I mean, I was born in 1988, but I certainly saw clips of it. And I, I experienced 90s WWE. Like, I used to sit and watch it on my couch with my brother, and then we would, like, practice the moves. And certainly dangerous stuff. Certainly dangerous stuff. <laughs> Jake the Snake, yeah. All right. So let's see here. Uh, let's see. So player one would be the highest seed, which would be... 
house cat. All right. All right, so just telling the players who's player one so they can do their picks and bans, and uh, we'll get this started. You guys ready for some Mighty Morphin Chorfin Mirror Matches of Doom with all Bull Centaurs and Magma Cannons? It is time. You should make a 90s wrestler icons for different factions as avatars. On Yeah, we could do that. We could totally do that, yeah. Who would Mankind be? The, remember the guy who had the sock on his hand and he would like make people eat the sock? He would like he would like hold he would like mesmerize them and then like the sock would Oh my god, what a ridiculous gimmick that was. Stone Cold was great too, just getting up on the ropes and the that theme song was so good and then like just the beers and oh Yeah, it was still WWF in the nineties. I remember in like the some somewhere in the mid or late nineties it changed to the WWE because of the World Wildlife Federation. <laughs> It was like some like uh, some dispute with them, if I'm not mistaken. God, yeah. The Undertaker was so iconic too. Mick Foley, yeah. Andre the Giant. That was a little bit before my time, I think. I might have. I can't remember. Yeah, I think that was a little bit before my time. You know, I, I watched a lot of it as a kid, but when I became a teenager, I definitely stopped watching it. Um, when I became a teenager, I guess I replaced my passion for WWE with like MMA and freak show MMA fights. I love freak show MMA. Like just these crazy giant fighters versus like smaller fighters or like that. You used to see that all the time in like Pride and like 1990s MMA. Just like, oh my God. That, there was some wild stuff. Like, dude, early MMA was the craziest shit ever. Yeah, it was wild. Uh, let's see, it was a huge right now for modern stuff. I have a group of friends who go to all the matches here in Jacksonville, Florida. It seems to be getting popular again. Yeah, I would imagine so. It's easy to just be like a elder millennial boomer and just like kind of be like, oh, you know, our time was the best time. But yeah, you know, it's like, it's it's easy to just have that perspective. And the truth is certainly somewhere in between. What Kissel V units would you want from a DLC? Yeah, I, I would like, uh, I don't know what they're missing, honestly. I, I would like to see some sort of like swamp magic, like a, like a Baba Yaga type character would be super cool. Like they've, they've teased her in the tooltips, like Lady Ostankia is, I think her name. That would be rad with like some, like some sort of swamp spirit or something or like shaman units. Oh, that'd be so rad. That'd be so rad. Yeah. I mean, the, there's a lot of those old wrestlers who, who, um, you know, beat their bodies up so badly and can just barely function now. It's definitely sad. It's definitely really sad. They just end up being hired as like side characters in Steven Seagal movies and they can just like barely move. It's 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 a pretty bleak fate, you know? It's a pretty bleak fate. Yeah, Princess Bride was great. That was a good movie. Yeah, it was a great movie for sure. Dude, one of the I'm trying to think of like the craziest freak show fight I've ever seen in MMA. I don't know about craziest, but there was there was one with this uh, this Brazilian woman named Gabby Garcia. She's like easily over six foot, um, probably like six two, and just on on all the steroids that you can buy on this earth. And she she actually is like a Brazilian jiu jitsu black belt, like really serious. And she's fighting like this like fifty one year old Japanese grandma, basically. That was that was one of the biggest freak show fights I'd seen. Where I was like, oh my god, there's. Fedor versus Hongman Choi was a good one too. When he like Fedor Emelianenko fought this like seven foot tall Korean uh, Korean dude, that was a crazy fight. There's there's only in that era or like Bob Sapp versus uh, versus awesome sumo wrestler. That was a good one. Man, we could go on all night about this, guys. We could go on all night. Let's go with AOE four. Yeah, I'm gonna be playing it soon. Some, I'm gonna be working with Gunhound to have a stream sometime in the next few days. Well, probably early next week, I would say, would be the would be the game plan for that. Because I still have a couple Age of Wonder streams I want to do, and then, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be Norska versus the Skaven. Norska coming in with a Barbarian Horde of Berserkers and a Shaman Sorcerer leading the army. Got some Marauders, got some uh, Trolls to pay the Troll toll, and Skaven are just going to be doing Skaven things. So we have the Packmaster. Uh, Packmaster, of course, on the Brood Horror is not a bad terror-causing monster with Regeneration. And we do also have a Chieftain to abuse the Power Grab combo. And Avalanche Mortars in the back for Skaven are very, very strong. Uh, Avalanche Mortars are basically essential at steamrolling Norskin Infantry. And this is a fairly open field map, right? So shooting is going to be really, really good here. It is going to be really good indeed. All right, guys. It is time 
Berserkers, don't need to explain why they're good against rats. They are excellent at killing light armor and they can certainly chew through a lot of the Skaven stuff. However, they're very, very vulnerable against the um, Globedeers and Globedeer type units. So we'll see if they can survive that. Shaman Sorcerer of Death, it's gonna be there with Spirit Leech and Buna. Interesting, so what is the Buna gonna be for? The Buna, I understand Spirit Leech for sniping any sort of Skaven characters and things like that, but the Buna more so maybe to go after, um, I don't know, how good is Buna against like Globedeer type units? Huh. Yeah, Surthak is here, man. He is He is here. He's survived my Age of Wonders stream yesterday. We got the old trolls. So we got two Norse controls here. And the Norse controls are regenerating monsters, man. And, you know, they can absorb quite a bit of firepower. And, yeah, they might rout, but then they come back. And they can give you perpetual pressure against the Skaven if you don't manage to chase them off. Now, looking at the Skaven hordes, it's going to be a massive horde of Skaven. Um, what's to say? Clan rats, clan rat spears. We do have clan rat spears and... Avalanche mortars, these are the ones that you guys want to keep your eyes on. These things will just absolutely pound pretty much anything they can hit. So the avalanche mortars will be emerging from the shadows and looking to drop, drop some sweet, sweet leaven here on the forces of Norska. On the far side, more Skaven slaves. That's pretty much it, guys. Let's get this party started. Let's have some fun. I would wager Buna is going to be a tech against the avalanche mortars. Granted, you have to be very close for Buna. Um, so he's going to have to find a way to get that Shaman Sorcerer past the Packmaster without getting caught because the Packmaster has 95 speed and uh, yeah, this rat does not mess around. I love the uh, monsters of, of, of Clan Mol uh, Molder, is it? Yeah, I think it's Clan Molder. They're really fun, man. They're really, really fun. All right, Packmaster is going to be cruising, moving on up. Norska, I would assume, will be advancing up the field as well. Whenever I play this map, it kind of makes me feel like it's like more of a land battle. It's just like one of those like big open maps because you know how like almost every map they use in land battle because of the nature of attacking rules is, is basically going to be somewhat open. Like terrain is very limited in terms of its involvement in land battle. But yeah, this, this kind of gives me the old school vibes. Like this is basically like Oakenhammer. I mean, the map's called Oaken Shield. It's, it's basically directly inspired by Oakenhammer. So. so yes, yes, the Skaven hordes are here. Skaven certainly have been a top tier faction. Their ability to swarm the battlefield and just kind of trade with hordes of units is, is quite good. Subutai is a big fan of the Packmaster. Um, many Skaven players I've seen don't use the Packmaster, but... He is certainly a Packmaster Enjoyer, and that thing is going to be running up and looking to uh, keep his opponent honest. You see this Shaman Sorcerer sitting in the shadows for House Cat of War as the big Norskin Horde. Honestly, the, the size of the armies is pretty damn similar. Um, we do see 15 models for House Cat, 16 now after a summon, and 17 for the Skaven. So, like, the Skaven, yes, they do have a Vermin Tide, but Norska has a, a Man Tide, uh, 100%. That is a lot of dudes. A lot of angry barbarians. Now, Avalanche Mortars, they have about 250 range, so they will be in range very, very soon. And uh, probably going to want to save all of your ammo for the Berserkers and not make sure not to waste any on basic Marauders. Although, honestly, it's not a terrible idea. It's certainly not a terrible idea. So here they are, Avalanche Mortars in the shadows, shooting. Not even in the shadows, actually in the open. But metaphorically speaking, they're uh, kind of hiding behind other Skaven units and skulking, doing rat things. Avalanche mortar shots coming down and doing some big thumping damage, dude. Oh my god, negative 55 leadership. Avalanche mortars, they have been a gem for a long time. Spirit Leech going down on the uh, Chieftain, actually. So that's kind of an interesting tech. Snipe the Skaven Chieftain, that gets rid of the power grab, and suddenly the entire Skaven army is going to be having bad leadership. Although Subutai might have made a mistake. Um, I think he forgot to unsummon his, his fake lord. He did. It's on the back of the battlefield. So he's not getting the leadership up for his army. So Subutai could be... He's basically playing the game as it's intended to be played right now. He, he doesn't have the artificial uh, inflation of the leadership, right? Oh my god, that was so much damage. Well, anyways, we'll see if he forgets. Nope, he gets it. So the power grab does go down. And now he's got the plus eight leadership on his army, which is uh, certainly what's been the kind of crutch that Skaven players have been using. So here comes Marauders and Marauders and Marauders. They should be able to out-trade the clan rats, but when you get ogres involved is when things change up. And uh, here comes more shots from the old avalanche. Going to be setting up and uh, trying to shoot here at ye old berserkers. Berserkers going to be charging in. And where are the shots? Shot through the heart and you're too late. You gave the Skaven a bad name for sure. As the bombards are going to be coming and here they are. So we see 10,000 HP, avalanche mortars. Not quite as direct of a hit as the other one, but even still does some really brutal damage. And the Skaven are just going to fall back and try and accrue a little bit of value, giving up the objectives to the Norskins. This objective is pretty well controlled. Honestly, I would probably recommend leaving a spear over there. I think that would be a good idea. But it looks like House Cat of War is going to go for a full surround. Berserkers on the other side, getting hit by the Avalanche Mortars. Really good control by Subutai. He's methodically switching between those units. But now we see Spirit Leech going down. So he didn't Buna the Avalanche Mortars. Rather, he opted to use the old Spirit Leech to wear them down. And what's going to be happening is a Feral Manticore is going to dive on them. And then we're going to get some Hounds coming around the side as well. 
So we see the Hound flank coming in. They're for sure going to try and jump on those Avalanche Mortars when they can. And now Norsk is in a situation where they're in sustained combat with Skaven, and Skaven are not going to be trading super well into Norsk and Infantry. And the Avalanche Mortars are 100% going to get attacked by the Manticore. And then you're going to see the Hounds coming in, probably. So the Hounds will gather, and uh, they'll do this, this, and then they're just going to move up right like that, and then just basically jump all over that army and get some damage for sure. So here they come. Avalanche Mortars are on the run. Rad Ogres are a pretty good tool at shutting down a Feral Manticore, but... The longer this fighting goes where the Norskins don't have to worry about the Avalanche Mortars being online, the better it's going to be. Because uh, Norska will just outvalue Skaven and Melee all day. I mean, Skaven are a weapons team faction with a little bit of utility, right? So here comes a little bit of a AoE. So we get the Rod of Corruption coming down. Lord Scroll, Kasbin summoned out. So the Big Stinky is a good choice. He has nice AoE damage, good magic. You see a Skaven Plague going down in the distance. That's a very, very powerful spell. Although it looks like it didn't quite hit anything right there. And Avalanche Mortars are pretty much fully compromised. We do see them on the run. It looks like, yeah, just full retreat right here. And House Cat of War is going to be grabbing his trolls and moving in and uh, just perpetually keeping the pressure on them. You cannot let those things get back online. And Norska does have a triple cap right now. And this is basically the ideal situation for Norska, right? Like forcing Skaven into melee trades one-to-one -one without Skaven weapons teams. And it's funny because Skaven players have become so used to this mass clan rat play style. But I can't help but think if the Skaven player just went with like three or four Poison Wind Globideers and uh, on top of the, uh, the, the Avalanche Mortars and just played like more of a regular build that it would be like super, super devastating for sure. So Norsk and Ice Doggos jumping on top of the Avalanche Mortars. They're still on the run. Skaven just sending out waves and waves of Clan Rats to try and peel them off. But it looks like the Avalanche Mortars will be back online. But this is a very, very hard stuff, like very hard. And these objectives are super far away, right? They are, they are not within grasp of the Skaven, that's for sure. Um, and we see Norska like keeping the value pretty even, which is definitely not good considering it's a triple cap. You know, if, if somebody has you triple caps and they're trading even on value, typically it's going to just be bad news bears for you, right? So the Norskan barbarians just cleaving through these rats. And uh, this is this is what these guys are born for. They're like, oh, hell yeah, we get to just take skulls for the hound all day. And the hound being corn. If you guys aren't familiar with that, Norska does worship the chaos gods, but just kind of refers to them in different things. You have the hound, the crow, and all that kind of cool stuff. Yep, Clan Rat's getting folded like a piece of paper here. This objective, it looks like the Packmaster of Subutai is trying to fight, but I think you need Globideers. Uh, the basic Skaven Globideers only cost 500. They have high armor, and they're really good at melting infantry and mass. It just seems like the entire game was put on the back of the Avalanche Mortars to like deal with this elite Norskin army, and uh, you know they were compromised. And when they get compromised, Norsk is just going to be cackling all the way to the bank. And we do see the value being pulled by House Cat of War. House Cat of War recently getting second place in our big event, and the... Um, and the uh, spring championship that Creative Assembly hosted. So yeah, the, he, he got second place and almost beat Houseplant in a best of five series. So clearly is a, is a very, very uh, trained player who knows the meta quite well. Yeah, it's a wide map, which is cool. It encourages different play styles. And what's cool about maps like this is like, this is actually a decent map for Wood Elves because they can use their mobility to play the points very well. You know, having maps be different sizes and different shapes and forms is really good because it like changes the meta. Like a matchup might be bad, generally speaking, but on a map like this, it could change everything. So. Big Stinky's down here, but like, yeah, he's not going to have a good time here. He's getting just beaten down. And look at the, the trolls just disrespecting him, kicking him in the face. Certainly, uh, this rat is probably going to be breaking soon. You know, Skrulk being kicked in the face is, is the final straw for his ego, I'm sure. Marauder Chariots here pinned down a little bit. Looks like some rats and rat ogres were able to get that. But there's basically zero chances of Subutai being able to win this. Um, House Cat of War is up by about 1,100 value. And uh, Subutai is pretty heavily pinned back. I've certainly been in this situation before. We see Norskin Wolves coming from downtown. Basically, uh, yeah, just chasing whatever scraps they can. We see the Packmaster being caught. Packmasters are decent fighters, but they themselves are pretty lightly armored, so they're not going to want to be fighting against any sort of Norskin Ice Wolves and units like that. Big Stanky going to be dropping his AoE again, which will take down a couple Marauder Berserkers, but at the end of the day, it's going to be extremely inefficient against the Trolls. We're going to continue disrespecting this rat. Although it looks like he does get a little bit of support from his big monster. So Subutai does pull in. Maybe going to get a terror out on them. We'll have to see. Their leadership is a little bit fickle and they're kind of in the terror out territory. But trolls are trolls and they'll be back. Yeah, the two troll units are just handling these Skaven characters. And the Skaven backfield's basically in shambles. Um, 853 points. It's just climbing rapidly. The Skaven don't really have any chances here. And that probably will be GG well played. As in the backfield, we see a couple chariots occupying a massive portion of this army, actually. And the Skaven Chieftain's almost dead. If, if uh, an overcast Spirit Leech comes down from the Shaman Sorcerer, it looks like it is. So you can see the Shaman Sorcerer is going to be coming here and trying to drop a Spirit Leech on the uh, on the Chieftain. If he routes, then the entire Skaven army loses eight leadership, which is pretty brutal for sure. Pretty brutal. 
Yeah, Norska is pretty good. Norska is a top tier faction. They're they're just solid. I wouldn't say Norska is overpowered by any stretch. I would just say they, they they handle a lot of the meta factions pretty well. Um, I don't know how they do against Chaos Orbs. I would imagine Chaos Orbs counter them with Magma Cannons, but that's going to be a victory for the old House Cat of War, ladies and gentlemen. In Game One of tonight's finals, and now we go into Game Two. Now this is a best of three finals. So the winner of this match, obviously, if House Cat wins, it will close it out, and if Subutai wins, we will be going to a Game Three. Yes, yes, Norska. Getting the job done, the Northern Barbarians. Showing that they still got it. One of the oldest factions with no DLC, no updates. But you know what? They keep going strong for the Chaos God. Subutai's army was cool, but certainly um, needed, I think it needed some globes. Need, need something to clear off that width, man. I don't know. Yeah, more Rat Ogres, more globes maybe. I, I don't really know. I, play Skab I don't play Skaven with the Unsummoned Cheese. So I'd have to like think about how to approach that. Hmm. All right, guys. GG's. Let's see what the next matchup's going to be. Uh, the map. Take a look at Total Tavern. It is going to be the... Uh, where is that old map? Where is that? So it is going to be Celestial Lake. Certainly a good map for melee factions. Celestial Lake has that like side point where you can hide in the trees and advance up on the objective without getting shot. So that's certainly going to be quite good. We haven't had Black Ark in a tournament in a while. Maybe we got to get the old Black Ark back. Ice wolves are the ice wolves are pretty good. They're kind of like mini flesh hounds of corn. Not bad at all. Yeah, all right, one sec. Just putting the heater on, guys. It's getting a little bit cold. <clears throat> oh, water went down the wrong throat. Oh god, Anakin, I'm too weak. Yeah, Ikid is very good. Like Ikid on a Doom Wheel could be pretty menacing against them, actually. Although Scroll Daddy's a good choice. You know, he's really good at clearing out infantry. He's got the rod of corruption and uh yeah, he's, 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 he's a good fighter, too. He's got the discouraging effects. So Celestial Lake is going to be the map here. And uh, don't worry, the heater will quiet down in a second. Just actually getting cold here, which is weird. It's almost the summer. Yeah, that was a thick Norskan army with the trolls and everything. It's it's pretty strong. Man, Norska getting a rework. They will Norska getting extra stuff is going to just become such a powerhouse of a faction. Because Norska is already top five, I think. Let's take a look. Um, all right, so looking at the... Stats, we can look together. Yeah, Norska is 58%. I mean, that, they're pretty balanced, honestly. Like, Norska does have some hard matchups. They have their good matchups. They have their bad matchups, which is cool. Bretonia doing very well this season, too. Look at that. For the lady, man. 59%. Skaven, Skaven will drop down to probably 55% when they get their, their cheesy nonsense fixed. Um, they, they don't, yeah. And then you just have like Chaos Dwarfs and Ogres. Ogres will definitely be good, but I, I, feel, I don't feel that bad playing against Ogres, honestly. Chaos Dwarfs, on the other hand, definitely need to... Uh, they have some really feel-bad stuff. They have some really feel-bad stuff. Empire sitting it perfectly balanced, as always. Uh, just just above 50%. Yeah, it's honestly... When, when the Chaos Dwarfs get brought, brought back to balance, I think we'll be in a pretty good spot in terms of the meta. Yeah, it'll be fun. I don't know. Where's, where's Thankful and the Vermin Lords and all that? I know. I, I my guess my prediction for this game is is that um so what are we in 2023 I think this game will get like heavily supported up until 2024 the end of 2024 and then I think that like they'll start to taper off support for this game in like 2025 um and we'll have like another like they're gonna probably announce another like they're, they've got to be like something's got to be coming like some sort of a historical title right like in the next, like I, I bet sooner than later, and uh, and then after that, like by the time they taper off support for this game in 2025, I think we'll start to see the next big like fantasy entry or sci-fi. Like that's when we would probably see like a 40k, like maybe like 2020, like fourth quarter 2025, maybe 2026. God, man, I'm gonna be almost 40 when that happens. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Laborers do still get full capture weight, unfortunately. Yeah, it's really lame. It's really lame. My, my lady in Texas, uh, she said it's crazy hot. I'm in New Zealand, 62. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, it's it. Where I live, it's we live in like a mountain. Like it's not like most of California. It's like a mountainous village. So chaos dwarves versus beastmen. Historical Warhammer, yes. Of all the historic, I would love another medieval game. That'd be really fun. I would love to like create a uh, like a multiplayer scene for like a historical game and see how it goes. You know, 
if if we still get the same thing where it's like they the historical game like there's no like you know it's just there's no we have to come up with our own community attacking rules and stuff i probably wouldn't go as hard as i have in the past on that title but um for 40k i would even if they don't add any sort of a good multiplayer for i just 40k is just too much to pass up on it'd be so much fun oh my god imagine imagine how how rough it would be for the historical fans if they just make 40k right away and they're just like sorry guys yeah Yes, the dwarfs are here. The Chaos Dwarfs have arrived versus the Beastmen. So Subutai is going to be on the Beastmen. Uh, I'm curious about this one. Let's see what he's got. Uh, Beastmen, yeah, they can definitely do some stuff. Razor Gores, Centigores with mobility can be pretty pretty strong at playing the points. Yeah, I would say Medieval 3 would probably be the most popular. Uh, did I miss something you said, Dial-Up Sound? I saw you, you put something there, I'm not sure. Yeah, laborers do still give full capture weight. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Unfortunately, they do. Bretonian Norska dwarfs count all the Yeah. The they're what the, they're they're gonna do they're gonna do Kissel and Cathay and Norska. And then from there, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how things are looking at old CA's office. Yeah, vampire counts have only gotten one DLC too, one update, right? I mean, they got an update, so they got the Helm and Gorse DLC, and then they got like a an FLC update where, where they reworked all the bloodlines and gave like Lamian, you know, all that kind of stuff. We still don't have Nagash either, like Nagash, Thankful. There's still quite a bit to be added to the game. Yeah, there's still quite a bit. You guys ready for the? Let's put a let's put it to a poll and see what you guys think is going to happen. All right, Moo, sad or happy? Okay, guys, this is a very important generation-defining question. Is it going to be a sad moo or is it going to be a happy moo? Am I ready for the Monkey King? That'd be cool. Sign me up. Love playing Warhammer 40K. Yeah, Tabletop 40K is great. It's a lot of fun. I'm just waiting for 10th edition myself before I really get back into it. It kind of feels pointless to play the current edition. Like, uh, I think 10th edition will probably come out in the next like three or four months. Maybe, Maybe a little bit more or less, but... Yeah, sad moves. If you guys, if you guys are uh, channel members, make sure to spam your mooing, <laughs> your mooing avatars. You guys think happy moves are coming, really, against chaos dwarves? That's a that's a tall order, man. That's going to be probably more sad moves, I would wager. All right, one sec, guys. Doing this. All right. Perfect. Responding to the players. Okay. Okay, perfect. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, how's Cat of War's name? I'm sorry, it was like sticking off. I was, I was doing a little, little bit disrespect there. You voted with your heart. Okay, so that explains it. So 62% of you guys think it's going to be some happy moves here. Hmm, interesting. I want to move happy, but think... <laughs> I want move happy, but think move will be sad. Yeah, optimistic moves. Uh, yeah, there's the... That's the Torox. That's the Torox one, see? Yeah. There you go. How many of you guys have been playing Age of Wonders, man? I've been have I'm so addicted to that game. It's so much fun. Hadrius and I had a really fun, uh, fun session in Age of Wonders last night. Just five hours, Sirtha Ek doing battle. I might try and stream it tomorrow. I'm gonna try and see what the schedule looks like. But we have the uh, have some people coming by to do some work on the house. Curses. In the Tomb King's Crisis, it literally just says. Uh, <laughs> Nagash has risen. Yeah, someday he'll he'll actually appear in that, I'm sure. I wonder how they'll do him, because he's like a super powerful character, right? That's like, yeah, how are they going to... I guess we already have, like, Lord Mazda money can literally move mountains and shit, right? So it's like, in the lore, or I guess the slan in general are just freakishly strong, and they were incorporated into the game. We don't think they'll win, we just really hope they will, says Drazith. Yeah. Deadly dude playing right now. I would kill the play Age of Wonders if, uh, if I, yeah, it's really fun. It's really fun. Well, maybe I'll do some giveaways on stream of it. I'll see, I'll see if I can get um, Paradox to send me some keys or something, and we could do some giveaways on stream. I'm good. Yeah, tomorrow will probably be an Age of Wonders of some sort. Yeah, at some point, you're addicted to it as well, dude. It's so fun. It's so fun. 
Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. It is the Beastmen. So we have a great Bray Shaman, a, uh, a Gorbel, a couple of Minotaurs with great weapons, and a bunch of Chaff units for the Beastmen army. Going to be facing off against the uh, Double Gun Halberd. So these are the Infernal Guard Fireglaives, which really don't like fighting mass amounts of Chaff. We got double Magma Cannons, because again, they're just dirty against Beastmen, and uh, Bull Centaurs, and a Demon Smith Sorcerer of Fire. Burning Head against Chaff, it's pretty good, right? You annihilate all the chaff with magmas and burning head, and uh, then you kill the big stuff with your fire glaives and with your bull centaurs. It's a, it's a very well-rounded army. It's well, well crafted, and certainly will be pretty good indeed. All right, guys, taking a look at the hordes of the Dowie Czar. Goblin laborers, like I said, fire glaives against the minotaurs and other big threats with the bull centaurs. Magma cannons and the fire caster are there and designed to kill the infantry using the burning head in tandem with the overpowered magma cannon shots. Now, on the other side, we can see ye old bulls on parade. We do have the Ungors backed up by Ungor spears. I like Gorbel here. I think Gorbel's a fun tech. You know, if Gorbel can catch his prize, he can certainly drag down some elite models. And we do have Minotaurs with great weapons, which Minos with great weapons against Bull Centaur renders. I wonder how that fight goes. Um, they, they can do some work. They can do some work, yeah. And, you know, Chaos Storms do have a lot of mass, right? Like, Bull Centaurs will definitely struggle against Ungors and Minotaurs working together. Like, that synergy of the infantry stacked on there. Yeah. Could be fun. Beastmen got... They got some sneaky units, too. What's really cool about the Beastmen army is all these Ungors have, like, stock, so they don't really care about getting blasted on the approach, so they can kind of get up on the objectives or wherever they want to be, and then they're going to be able to kind of li live their best life for sure. So the Beastmen are not advancing yet. They're standing very, very still. We see the Chaos Dwarves making the first move as their army does advance up. Magma Cannon's going to be pushing up a little bit. And uh, the Blazing Beards of Basharic, I did also miss them. So these are the Blasting Charge Chaos Dwarf Infantry. They're pretty cool. These guys are uh, certainly great fighters, basically like Chosen level stats. Not quite the HP of a Chosen unit, but they do have Blasting Charges and they can definitely do quite a bit of damage. So we'll have to see what they can do. Bulls versus their, uh, yeah, their, their Twisted Cousins indeed. The Bray Shaman going to be hiding in the back, and he already stroked his Forbidden Rod, which is interesting. So he's he's playing with his rod in the woods here. But um, even still, the Pit of Shades feels a little bit... Yeah, I guess it's not bad against, like, Blazing Beard-type units. But, like, I don't know, the rod on him, it's going to make him so easy to snipe, for sure, if he gets caught out. Basically, Iron Breakers, but better in every way. Yeah, pretty much. Iron Breakers, yeah. Chaos Dwarfs definitely have, like, they should do some things better than Dwarves, but they shouldn't do, like, everything better than Dwarves. That's, like... That's kind of the problem. Dwarves still do have better like baseline infantry though, for sure, if we're if we're looking. When they fix the capture weight, that'll really show. So Al Gore Bull, good old Air of Carthage, shout out to him. Ungor's moving up, Minotaurs with great weapons and spears. Gonna be heading on over to objective number two here. And the Chaos Dwarves are gonna be trying to get line of sight with Magma Cannons. That's like the one big advantage that the Beastmen do have on this map is the fact that line of sight is very precarious on this one. You see the Magma Cannon shot shooting downtown. Um, and wow, look at that. Direct hit on that Feral Man score. Jeez, those, those Chaos Dwarves shooting that cannon certainly deserve a bit of a raise. But this objective is going to open soon. And it's going to force the very static Chaos Dwarf army to kind of move up. Right? Like, they, their army is like Fire Glaives and Magmas. Like, they don't have an army that's super good at covering a lot of the battlefield. Oh my god, Gorbel getting blasted right in the face. Look at that, the, the Mark of Hashit. I like like the demonic rune that it kind of inscripts on the ground afterwards. That's really, really rad. Bull Centaurs are on the way out. It's going to be Hashit Stark Ravagers for House Cat of War. And then another unit of Bull Centaur renders. So a lot of great open units. And uh, more Magma Cannon shots. It's Magma time. Oh my god, two direct hits on the Gorbel. I mean, it's not a lot of damage. In a way, it probably is okay for the Beast Ben for that to happen. Because it's absorbing the ammo on that instead of on a unit that it's going to be super impactful against. But... Even still, so the Beastmen, a little bit of a Bronzodia blunder. Um, they don't capture the objective right away. You definitely want to get that. So Subutai should run back to that point and grab it if he can. And he is going to be spreading out and grabbing this. Forcing the Chaos Dwarfs to overextend is going to be uh, a big, big play. But in order to get that advantage, you need to capture the objectives. I can't. This is, this like is haunting me here. Okay, there you go, Subutai. He moves on and he's going to start grabbing it with uh, Al Gorbel here. And that is then going to allow him to execute his game plan. We see the Minotaurs moving up, or excuse me, Bull Centaur renders, and uh, they are going to be met by a horde of Haggard units. So Ungors, Destroyers of Drakwald should be pretty cost-effective here. Good combat stats for their price, anti-large poke with poison against the Bull Centaur renders. And here comes ye old, uh, ye old mass. We'll see if they can stop it. What is the, the counterplay going to be? Are we going to be seeing basic Centaurs being called in to try and swarm the Bull Centaurs? Only a 50 armor? That could perhaps be the play. 
Gorbel's going to be heading to the other objective. The Magma Cannon actually shooting against the uh, Feral Manscore, which isn't like terribly cost effective. And so far, the Beastmen look to be in a pretty good position. The Chaos Dwarfs are kind of poking and prodding and trying to figure out where they want to go with the build. And, well, what's going on with the Bray Shaman back here? He's getting crunked, dude. He could definitely die. He's got his Pit of Shades. And there's definitely going to be a big fat pit right here on the Blazing Beard. So, well, the Minotaurs looks like they move in. They eat the Blasting Charges in the face. They're going to be rapidly retreating as the Pit of Shades is going to be getting cast on the Infernal Guard Fire Glaives. Oh no, this guy could get Last Samurai so hard. Well, the Pit of Shades goes down and it does catch them, which is nice. But this Bray Shaman character, man, uh, honestly, Subutai could throw the game if he's not careful with it. Looks like he's going to be dodging Blazing Beards of Bashiric. Don't quite get the grenades on it. And that overcasted Pit of Shades was very good. Uh, it does take a ton of HP off those Infernal Guard. And the Beastmen are going to be going for a flank, which... I do think this flank is a bit of a mistake. Uh, I, I feel as if you want to make the Chaos Dwarfs engage you. Here we see some Ungors ambushing from the tree line. So we do see the Blackhorns Ravagers coming about, but they do meet some Chaos Dwarfs as well as some Bull Centaurs. So they're most certainly going to be losing that fight. So a couple tough engagements for the Beastmen all across the battlefield, but it looks like they're going for like a big cap. Going to be trying to take it on multiple sides, but man, Fireglaive's just last samurai down these uh, Minotaurs back here. Absolutely brutal engagement. And the Bray Shaman character, he's he's playing a very dangerous game. Like, a very, very dangerous game. He's going to be getting attacked by House Cat of War's uh, flying monster here. So the Demon Smith Sorcerer of Fire is on the hunt. And, uh, yeah, Bray Shaman's going to be in big danger. Like, serious, serious danger. Those uh, great Tauruses are pretty good fighters. Even even the, the smaller version. Manscore, the movie spent going to be coming in. So we have a Manscore versus the great Taurus character. And the Manscore will do okay damage. You know, the Demon Smiths only have 60 armor. They're not, like, super tanky. They have the armor of the Great Taurus, so the Feral Man score here actually getting some good value on the character. Now for the rest of the fighting, value is looking like it's uh, pretty much a slaughter. Um, House Guide of War is massively ahead. I think sounding the horn and advancing against the Chaos Dwarfs is always a mistake if they have two Magma Cannons. I think like Subutai's original game plan of sitting back and forcing the Chaos Dwarfs to advance up was definitely preferential, but the only way the Chaos Dwarfs could really lose this is if like the Lord gets thrown here. If House Guide of War lets his character die to some Minotaurs with Great Opens and this Manticore and whatnot, that could be a way back in the game. That was a really, really good pit of shades right there. So, yeah, he just nailed those blazing beards. Negative 50 leadership. Talk about good value. So, Subutai not giving up, despite being in a little bit of a tough situation. This is a big play. If this Demon Smith Sorcerer goes down, Chaos Dwarfs will not only take a leadership hit, but they're also going to be losing their caster. So, Subutai probably just full chub right here, just eyeing this. And, uh, yeah, we do see the charge coming in. Oh, the Magma Cannon shot. Nasty, nasty. But he does get the snipe on the Demon Smith Sorcerer, ladies and gentlemen. So, that is an avenue back in the game. He's still down by about 2,000 value, but, uh, you know, Chaos Dwarfs, yeah, certainly can be compromised in melee. I mean, we have two Infernal Guard units, which are being attacked by the Dreaded Milk Cow. So the Butchers of Kalkin Guard, they are fighting a Halberd unit, but they themselves hit very, very hard. And they have Chaff Support nearby, too, so we can see the Haggard Ungors are chasing the Gun Halberds away. So the Gun Halberd unit is on the run, Infernal Guard Fireglaives are fleeing the scene, and more and more Chaff is on the way in. And did the Beastmen get the cap on the Chaos Dwarfs? They didn't, but they have maintained a double cap for quite some time, although the Chaos Dwarfs did steal this objective. Uh, during the heat of combat. So Subutai needs to make sure that he gets this back. Uh, if he doesn't flip this objective back, he's going to lose the game. 100%. He needs to get that back like ASAP. So another Pit of Shades coming down. The Pit of Shades have been really, really on point this game. That's going to be nailing those Chaos Dwarfs. And we do see the uh, Butchers of Kalkin Guard pulling back to try and recuperate and get their healing. Whereas many of the Bull Central Renders are now going to be tar pitted by the Destroyers of Drakwald and other cheap Spear units. So that's very cost effective for sure. Now the Milk Cows are on their way back in with Spear Support. They'll obviously be very good. Um, that regeneration on them is money. As we see the Bull Center Render start to tank down. Subutai with the 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 not like super, super like, you know, excited move, but like the optimistic, I'm on my way back. Okay, there's there's a glimmer of hope kind of move is what's going to be going down right here. So, Manticore in the backfield trying to snipe the old Magma Cannon. It looks like it's getting some good damage in, but the Bull Center Renders... Probably going to be able to peel that. And Al Gorbel, who got a little bit overextended in the backfield, has come back in. And is going to be chopping down this Magma Cannon here. But at the end of the day, old uh, Gorbel is going to get taken down by Hashid's Dark Ravagers. But the Beastmen have moved up and have gotten a lot of pressure. Now, Subutai should move his army here and steal the point. Because, uh, you know, when you're behind on value, getting the points is very important. So it looks like Subutai did stabilize here. He's got this back objective. He's going to get that one back. The score is very, very close. And the Beastman Hordes might be able to overwhelm. I think House Cat of War might have thrown the game, which he was very ahead in by having his Lord get caught, right? And now the Beastmen are just swarming all over the battlefield. We do see the uh, Gore Herds up in the point. The Milk Cows of Kalkingard are still alive. Ashes Dark Ravagers will be pretty good at clearing off most of these units, but there are Spear units, I think, still mixed in. It's hard to tell. Yeah, and some Minotaur Great Opens, too. So this objective is going to be flipping, and it looks like the Chaos Dwarves did save up to get their Lord back. So... 
the, the Lord was wounded. He has returned to the battlefield. Uh, but that's a big premium, guys. That's that's like, what, 2,000 gold that he had to save up for? Which is one of the reasons why you're seeing the Beastmen take over the battlefield, right? Because he was saving up instead of getting reinforcements, whereas Subutai didn't have to do that. He was able to continue swarming the battlefield and uh, do him some good work there. Subutai is an OG Beastmen player. He's been playing the Beastmen for... I remember seeing him in Warhammer 2, like tournaments playing Beastmen. So he, he certainly knows how to move. Now here, this objective taken by the Bray Herd. Uh-oh, big blunder though. Big blunder by Subutai. His Lord got caught by the Blazing Beards of Asherik, and it looks like they had some Blasting Charges left, and they just nuked him in the face. So that could cost the Beastmen the game. Because now their leadership is going to be negative 16, which is just so brutal on such a low leadership faction. Now Subutai does pull the points lead. Back objective being taken by some Goblin Laborers. So it's labor in time as they do grab that on the back point. And uh, the Chaos Dwarfs look like they're able to stabilize this point. So now this could be a big paradigm shift. Subutai looks like he might have had a chance to get back in the game by just swarming, but having negative 16 leadership on your entire army from that Bray Shaman dying in the bushes to the Blazing Beards of Basharic probably will be too much. And there still is a good critical mass of Bull Centaurs out. Uh, this objective was actually never taken by the Beastmen, which is really not good. And Centaurs on their way in. Centaurs will do okay against Bull Centaurs. They definitely can poke through that relatively light armor, but yeah, he got Blasting Charge in the face. So the subjective being held onto by the Bray Herd, but not for long. You can see a bit of a mass leadership issue as a lot of the Beastmen are now on the run. Goblin Laborers up on the point, but easily going to be crushed here by ye old uh, Minotaurs with great weapons. And uh, now we look over here on this back point and this objective looking like it's going to go to the Chaos Dwarves. As the Magma Cannons are both still online too. What kind of value have we seen? 800 value on this Magma Cannon and this one's gotten about 1400. So not that crazy on the value department. So... Supertime might resummon his lord to try and stabilize his leadership. It certainly is in the realm of possibility. Here we see the Blazing Beards of Asherik getting worn down by hordes and hordes of Beastmen Chaff units. Supertime does have the double cap and the points lead. If he can somehow scrap a little bit longer and maybe, just maybe, win on points, it's not going to be easy, though, by any stretch of the imagination. But yeah, he should be able to stabilize this objective. A lot of Beastmen coming in. Supertime resummoning his lord. The problem with resummoning the Pit of Shades lord is that he's just gonna he's just gonna be useless against all these bull centaurs. I think if you're the beastman, you have to summon things that can fight off the bull centaurs. So like Ungor spears, Minotaurs with great weapons, like all those type of units, right? Blazing beards getting worn down. It looks like they're pretty much down to the last as we do see a really, really nice burning head coming in from the House God of War. House God of War showing his certainly caliber of play as he is able to kind of scrap back from a pretty disastrous situation earlier. Both players here playing a very, very nice game from behind, essentially. So we have Steam and Sorcerer. He's doing his little happy cow dances in this objective. Most likely will flip for the Chaos Dowie. Unless the Beastman can get some like fast units here quickly. I don't know if they're going to be able to. Um, the capture weight here. It looks like there is a small unit of Blazing Beards. And some Chaos Dwarf Warriors who will provide enough capture weight. Now back here on this point. We see the Bull Centaurs versus the Minotaurs with Grey Opens. Minos with Grey Opens actually performing very well. Um, even in a 2v1 fight. They're anti-large. They hit. They actually hit harder than Bull Centaurs and do have like pretty much similar stat lines. And I believe they're cheaper by like 200 or I don't know. like they're, they're definitely cheaper than Bull Centaur renders. But yeah, Minotaurs with Great Opens, man, cleaving through. And it looks like Subutai is able to stabilize his back objective. Now, if he could have found a way to maybe save this objective, maybe, just maybe. We see a lot of Chaos Dwarf infantry here on the point of breaking, but Bull Centaurs will be arriving. And uh, they're going to be able to cleave off these units. Is there any sort of weird flanking? We do see Unsummons going down on the Hash and Stark Ravagers as the dreaded uh, flyer does come in and is going to be trying to save these units. Could we see the Bull Centaurs, or the Minotaurs with Grey Opens carry this game into the sunset? Nice Burning Head once again. These Burning Heads have been very on point, um, and it does do a lot of HP damage against those Ungors, man. Beautiful stuff. Minotaurs here are getting worn down. A very attrition-heavy fight as both the Bull Centaurs and Minos do get put in the trash can a little bit. And it looks like the Bray Shaman Caster is back. Yeah, so he, he is back in business, and he does get a nice pit. On the Infernal Guard, granted they're super low, so it's not like it's going to be super cost effective, but even still, you got to get rid of those guns. They they cause a lot of havoc. Oh my god, Confucius! Jesus, for the 42069. I love it. Oh my god, holy cow indeed. Your G, the sense of community foster and good vibes. Thank you, man. I've been wanting to donate for a while and finally can. I wish you the best. Dude, thank you so much on behalf of my wife and I. Thank you, thank you. That is super generous. Well, let's see if your mighty 42069 donation is going to be enough to empower Subutai to take on the mighty uh, Chaos Dwarfs here. Thank you, Confucius. Thank you. Sh shoot me a message in Discord if you could, man. The wife and I, we got we to send you some sort of a cool cool piece of art for that, man. Yeah, thank you. Please shoot me a message in Discord. That is, that is just far too generous. All right, guys. The battle rages on once again. Thank you so much. 
Will your energy feed the Bray herd? They're down 5,000 value right now, and you're really starting to feel it. On this side, the Bray Shaman caster is doing some work. Blackhorn Ravagers are on their way up. Destroyers of Drakwald also very cost effective here. They're going to be able to do it. Dude, that is a fat Moo donation, 100%. That is a big one indeed. Blackhorn Dravagers. We'll do some decent DPS against light armor, but we'll struggle against any sort of armor. Subutai is still up on points, but pretty much all three of his points are in serious danger of being uh, taken by the Chaos Dwarfs here. And the Ungor Spearman Herd, you know, not going to hold up against a big terror-causing monster, especially with the Bull Centaurs fighting it, for, for sure. <laughs> Tankest donation I've ever seen in your life. Yeah. Confucius, man, I really hope you're, like, super financially stable. I feel really bad when people donate that much. So I really hope you just have, like, some sweet job and that's, like, nothing. Because, yeah, that's, that's huge, man. Thank you. Thank you. The objective gonna flip most likely, guys. We we went through a roller coaster of emotions. You know, we had sad moves, we had some happy moves, uh, and you know, maybe maybe it can come back. Maybe it come can come back. These men, I honestly feel, are a really underrated faction. I feel like uh, I feel like they have good matchups into a lot of really top tier factions, but I don't really know how to play them too well. In land battle, I knew how to play Beastmen pretty well, but in Dom, I haven't really kind of grasped how to do it. There they go. The Blackhorns Ravagers getting in there, going after the old Goblin Laborers. And now we get some Orc Laborers moving in. They got their big beat sticks. Blackhorns Ravagers should be able to clear them pretty quickly. But even still, it's going to be hard to flip that objective back with Foghorn Leghorn here. Astrogoth Iron Hand being super overpowered. And you, you can tell it, he's just OP when people literally just bring him as a combat character. They're just like, yeah, you know, I don't even need him as a caster. Let's just bring him because he's so stupid in combat. And uh, even though he's a caster. And this objective probably will stay in the hands of the Chaos Dwarves. Over here, we still have this huge character too, right? We have the uh, Great Taurus, who's just an absolute menace. And Subutai is about to be passed in points. He would have to get this back pretty quickly here. I don't see any Centigors coming out. It's mainly like Gore Herds and things like that. The Chariot character is going to be trying to run into the Infernal Guard Iron Glaives over there. So we'll see what they can do. And here they come. Great Ray Shaman getting Last Samurai. Dude, Fire Glaives are probably my favorite unit on the Chaos Dwarf roster. Like, aesthetically, they're just so badass. Um... I really hope Chaos Dwarfs... I hope they re-release all the Chaos Dwarf models for Old World, because I would totally make a Chaos Dwarf army with um, Drazhoth, the Ashen, and... Because uh, he would probably still be alive in the timeline, right? Like, he's super old. And uh, I think all the Chaos Dwarfs are pretty ancient, if I'm not mistaken. So over here on this side, we do see this objective in the hands of the Dowie Czar as they fend off the Haggard Bray Herd. Gore Herds and Astrogoth going to be too much. And honestly, I think that's going to be GG. That was a very, very good attempt. Confucius says, happy to do it. I'm glad you enjoyed all the data. Of course I did. Dude, you know what's up. I'll take a look at the Discord stuff, but I've mostly been a lurker. No worries, man. It, basically, yeah, if you shoot, if you don't want to shoot a message, you don't want to do Discord, no worries, man. But if you do, um, you know, my wife makes some really cool Warhammer Fantasy inspired art and things like that. So we, we would love to send you something based on your favorite faction. That, that gen that's just too generous. Too generous, man. So the Moo is able to get the objective back, but they've been passed in points. And over here, I don't know if the Moo is going to be able to get this one back. Now, with Astrogoth and Laborers here, it's just too much. And I think there's a Bull Centaur here. Yeah, Hatchet Stark Ravagers. We're pretty much full health, so Subutai is going to rapidly, rapidly be forced into a uh, a triple cap situation. So that's going to be very tough. So here we do see Ye Olde Gore Herd swarming across, and uh, Chaos Storf Warriors, man, they are hustling. But they are going to lose the point, and the Beastman would need to get a triple cap now. Cause, so House Cat can basically just Helm's Deep, right? He just moves up, he gets this point, and uh, yeah, he just defends it. And there's basically going to be nothing that the Beastman can do here. Astrogoth is pretty old, yeah. Astrogoth is the oldest of the Chaos Dwarves. I, I don't know how old. We'd, we would need, like, some lore master to let us know what, like, the ages of some of the other characters. But <laughs> 42069, yeah. It's my favorite, dude. It's my favorite. Growing up in California... Like in the 90s, the, you know, the, the, the 420, 69, those were both very prevalent memes, like growing up in California, for sure. Yeah, so pretty good times. Ungor Spearman Herd still poking through. Chaos Dwarfs got a firm hold on the objective. Stupatai didn't hear no bell, man. And he still, you know, fights back pretty well, despite being down on like 5,000 value. Um, so yeah, that's it. GG, well played. And that's going to be a victory for House Cat of War, ladies and gentlemen. He gets the W over Subutai. Astrogoth is literally like 10,000 years old. Really? No way he's that old. Because the dwarf lifespan is like, what, 500 to like 300 to like 500 years or something for dwarves? Uh, maybe Hashit's magic has kept him alive. But it's a millennium at minimum. Yeah, okay. 
So maybe like Draz Hoeth and the other characters are like in the ballpark. Not that old, but like, you know, at least four or 500 years old. So Draz Hoeth would probably still be a, a character in the timeline. I'll Google his age. Hey, thank you. Thank you guys so much, man. All right. A victory for the Chaos Dwarves. GG, well played. Uh, you know, I think for the next one of these, like there's so much stuff that you see with Chaos Dwarves. Like the bugs, the bugged capture weight is like the straw that breaks the back. Like there were several points where the Beastmen could have taken objectives back. And same in my Empire game. I couldn't recapture objectives because of the bugged capture weight. Um, I might even just consider restricting Chaos Dwarves in these tournaments. I don't know, man. It's, it's just like... The bug capture weight and just the bug hitboxes. There's just so much stuff that feels bad. But it was a good game by both players. House Cat of War certainly still earned that. You know, he played through the entire entire tournament like a champion. But but yeah, let's go ahead and give him the W. The tournament has been finalized. And House Cat of War, let us find him on the leaderboard. GG, well played. So ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for tonight. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Please do drop a like on the way out. It was certainly a good time. And... We'll be back tomorrow with another stream. I don't know what we're going to be doing. House Cat of War getting the W. He's a very, very strong player for sure. Yeah, so there he goes. So let's update his tournament. Is that his first tournament win this season? Really? Damn. It's his first one. It says he has been the most powerful Chaos Dwarf for a thousand years. Okay. So I see him with a tournament win here. So that would be updated to two. So he's quite old. Yeah, Age of Empires is going to be early next week. It is going to be early next week. All right, so let's see if that updated properly. And go here. And where are we at? Good night, guys. Take care of yourselves. Okay, so that updated it too much. So we need to fix that and put it back down to two. And update that tournament win. And there we go. All righty. So House Cat of War should be taking a spot on the leaderboard. Let's see what the leaderboard looks like real quick now. So... As of this season, um, the number one ranked player is Hadris. Number two is Kark. Number three is Alric Rall. Number four is now House Cat of War with his second tournament win. Number five is Platypus. Number six is Subutai. Number seven is Outer Region. Number eight is myself. Tim the Wilder is number nine. Ghoul, Serkia, F-Pod, Winterwind, Maverick Sloth coming in with, uh, with the old corn avatar, Catholic Alcoholic, and the True Bretonian as well. So that's the tale of the tape for this season, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you all on the other side. More tournament action coming soon. You guys take care of yourselves. Uh, Age of Wonders tomorrow. It's going to be a, a really fun stream. It's going to be a really fun one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. See you on the other side. Sigmar bless this ravaged body. And we'll get our vengeance next time. We played pretty sloppy tonight, but you know, everyone has their off nights. GG, well played. That's it, folks. Take care.